Intro. I will? All right, yeah. good. I'm wondering. I need that intro. Oh, I know. You'll hear it. Just... Yeah, I'm trying to get the shot. Good shot. Just waiting for it to hit real quick and then we'll go. Why is him so cool? There we go. There's a good thing right there. Boom. Skill shot. All right. Here we go. Welcome to another edition of the Adam Dunn Show. I am your host, Adam Dunn. And we're live, really live, for the first time ever on the, on the floor. And we're here at Noco Hemp Expo, 10th anniversary. I hope they can hear us. I hope they can hear us. Can you guys hear us or are we dead? No, yeah, I don't know. Oh, good. Well, that's the only one I need to hear. Adam Dunn's Mike works. Dave Charts, yeah. like, he's going home. He's crying. He's we already gone into his car. We're driving home go. now as we speak. Uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Wah. So we're here live on the floor at 8,000 Kicks. It's like a real podcast now with me walking around with little tiny mics, hanging out with my friends. So well, here he is. He's back. Introduce yourself. So uh, I'm Yao from 8,000 Kicks. Yow. Happy to be back in uh, Colorado. I can say Yao. Uh, I say Yao. It sounds more exciting. Sounds good. Your name sounds is good. Yao? Yeah. J-A-O. It's pretty uh, much it. Uh, what sounds better to you? If you feel right, then it is right. Dave says, ow. Ow? <laughs> yeah. Your name is ow? It feels ow, right ow. now, but it's J-O. Wow. 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 I might be too close. I get, get away control. from me. Get away oh, from me. So this is a very Portuguese name, but because we are from Portugal. But very happy to be back in Colorado. And you guys have a whole new line of stuff. It's all freshed up. I can see some new, all, a whole bunch of new guys. I see nice shoes sitting over there waiting, but they're not even the nines. You have a... You sold out pretty quickly. You sold out a, a lot of stuff really fast. Yeah. Basically, pretty much sold out of the sizes that most, most people wear. It's like a 10, 10 and a half, 9 and a half. Those 10, were, 11, uh, and especially no here. Uh, I, I, Whatever I you a, want, he doesn't I have, have it. I have a most like your dog vests. You only come in extra, extra small. I know. I was going to bring them, and then I thought, nah, I don't want to hear people complain about it. But yeah. but uh, I think you are, I mean, there's, there's a few, definitely a few more uh, companies here this year, but you can see it's like, I think it was a better show this uh, this year, personally. Uh, I think I think it's definitely more crowded. Definitely, there's definitely oh, look more at that. people. More you know you want to do the top part, actually. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we have a shoe no. in the aquarium so that it can, uh, so that we can prove the shoes are really water. Yeah, no, it's really cool. Septic, it's no very, very cool. And uh, you got new running shoes. We got new running shoes. In this Dave, running shoes. You know, um, that, you know that? Yeah, means? I need a pair of 11. You don't have them? Darn. Can't run. Uh, but running shows are coming in July, and all of those sizes uh, that you want. Running shows, why is this important? Because uh, we run for, for the cause, and uh, pretty much people want to wear comfortable shoes, want to run around wearing, nowadays, ASICs, Ocas. Uh, why not using hemp? So we pretty much developed a hemp shoe uh, that is as good as any other running shoe. Uh, we're not competing for uh, marathon winners, but uh, in terms of comfort, durability, and style, something you definitely have to check out. Just, you forgot the most key word, which is sustainability, bro. Sustainable. No, it's really good. It's good to see everything like, around hemp, right? Yeah, I mean, we're just lucky because it's naturally the best material and naturally the you know the best to work with, and you got a good item because it's durable. You know, um, last time you were on the show, you were in Germany. Now Germany has gone legal. 
how do you feel now? You guys really felt like you guys did it at the right time, obviously. We feel like mission accomplished. <laughs> right? Basically. Yeah, you guys were like, on the, on, people weren't even thinking about it, right? Until like you know, all of a sudden it's like now it's now it's everywhere. Yeah, so basically what happened in Germany was people were starting not to believe that the legalization was going to happen. It was being postponed for two, three, four years. Uh, now it's on, and we actually launched a, a, a custom shoe, a special limited edition with a German artist uh, to celebrate this occasion. So if you check out our website, you'll see really cool custom sneaker made out of hemp, nice. sustainable and to celebrate the legalization of cannabis in Germany. Next, well, see, Portugal did it so, they kind of did it sneaky, just like, yeah, we're all legal, we don't give a shit. And it didn't really, no, hardly anybody talked about it. Like, they did a little bit, but it was like very much like, and much broader too, right? Much what happened in Portugal was uh, a bit different. So it was the decriminalization uh, and it had a huge impact on uh, solving drug problem because this is not just about cannabis, it's about all of the drugs, this decriminalization. Now, uh, we're getting behind nowadays because uh, there's still too much bureaucracy around growing even industrial hemp. Uh, and uh, hopefully now that Germany has legalized all the other European countries. Will go yeah, go. Germany's definitely always been like, it's like the California of Europe, you know what I mean? They do and everybody else follows. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. that's cool. And then... Um, so you're going to do more sh more shows in America, or you just kind of came for this special? And so we will be again in America in San Diego in uh, July, yeah. and the plan uh, in August. Other than that, I cannot promise anything for now. <laughs> no promises. But, but uh, you're at the no co. Uh, it's definitely worth it. And if you have a chance to come up here, if you are in the area, definitely uh, run by some private section of the show. Mm -hmm. Honestly, better than the fashion shows, this community is amazing. People are tight. People support each other. Uh, it's also a great place to, to get some knowledge of what's going on. Well, Colorado's kind of like, you know, it, it is, oh, you can't go back in time, right? In Colorado, as far as like hemp goes, we've definitely embraced it hard, had the right environment, sort of, not 100% perfect, but it was enough to get it going. And I'm pretty proud of what Morris has done there. It looks good, so... So to see you again, it's always fun to have to get back. You too. Uh, and uh, take you back to the farm soon. Come back to the farms. I love the farm. Farm life. I love the farm. Bring more Thank you so much. much. Yeah, bring more lemons. Come to the farm. He's got more that got held up, so you never know. It's Hopefully tomorrow fine. we'll have more. Oh, so, okay. there you but, go. I'll, uh, I'll pick them up for you. Let's uh, light tape. Let's, uh, thank you so much. Nice to see you guys. Hey, I find you. What's your website? Wait, thousand kicks dot com. Uh, uh, if you write it, thousand kicks anywhere online. There's not many other eight thousand kicks out there. There's good, no good, other. good, unique name. So, so, or if you just go for hemp shoes at Google, yeah, we are the first, the first five. The first and the best, yeah. the bestest good and the most. Yo, bestest there's and the most. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, man. We're gonna go cruise around and go take a look at everything. Go, go ahead, man. The, the go. Google. Hemp out, man. Hemp out. Thanks, bro. Thanks you got tons of shots. I'm sure you're a B-roll king over here. We got the B-roll king. All right, I'm following you. I am following you. How's it going, Vinny? No, he's in the car right there. He's in the car, but I think he oh. cut out. He just, oh. yeah, because I think he was having some. Uh, Tim's left. He's a I don't know. Someone's here, but they're all this. they're all frozen here at the bottom. Oh no, that's Dave. That's Dave's no, that's Vinny. Oh no, that's Dave. You're all uh, froze. Frozen yeah. again. Froze, Dave. You're not even on, are you? It's Why all right. You Just stay there. It's Why are you on? Better for me. Uh, we're, we're over by Tim's. Tim's in outer space. Turn, turn my video off. Turn my video off. That's what they always say. Man, you guys just don't believe in... Uh... Technology, you can't hear us, Mark? Yeah. No, you, no, you, us. you know, you just don't believe in like turning your phone sideways today, or what? Is that just... Oh, I know. Is that like no the phone thing? phone sideways. Oh, wow. Yeah, phone sideways. Phone sideways. Hey, how's it? Oh, Tim's not here, but we Wait, can help you. All right. CBD uh -huh. For sure. Might as well. Let's do it. Sure. What's your name? My name gonna... is Rose. Rose, well, obviously, right? <laughs> Very nice. Where, which part of Japan are you coming from? Uh, Tokyo. In Tokyo, nice. Uh, how's the CBD market going there? It's gradually going up. And right now, CBD business market is like expanding. I same as a THC business market in like twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was I was in Japan in two thousand seven, I believe it was, and they had a 
they had a couple they had some really interesting hemp stuff going on there they had a hemp restaurant that was pretty famous oh yeah you know what i'm talking about uh, one of our friends uh he has um the kids okay. hemp cafe tokyo yeah. it's a vegan and uh he is uh hemp. and he had also a shop that was upstairs that was nearby like another shop nearby there's there's one one place oh, i yeah. went to and it was in a really like small street, but he lived above, and you would go upstairs, and it was a hemp store. Is it a hemp store? Or? Yeah, it was a hemp store. It was a fur because I sold hemp clothing. Right so now, I was like there. there are maybe probably like three, four different CBD okay. in, um This was a hemp seed restaurant, is what it was. It was a hemp seed restaurant. restaurant. It was the first right. one, and they were really co focusing on the seeds, and they were really yeah, and it was not. I don't know. Yeah, it was a because I moved back to Tokyo, um, two thousand twenty-one. Uh, okay, so new, new new market. Well, now, so when I was there, it was very scary for cannabis. Like everybody was, yeah. like, you know, like. You know, I know but, that's how I felt. Too. And I had a friend of mine, DJ Aki. He plays at the Womb. You know the Womb. Yes, I have. Okay. Actually, a pop up. Uh huh. DJ pop up shop. Yeah. No. Nice. Our private brand nice. at the Womb. Okay, so my so my friend Aki, he he's the, he's been a resident there for many many years. He does yeah. the drum and bass. He's the drum and bass like god of of uh, of, of Japan. And, and so uh, when I was there, so when when I got there, I I, I had no weed, of course, because I did, did, you know, you know, do not bring weed to Japan. You'll be in so much trouble. So I got there, and I was there for a week. And uh, after a week, he came and gave me some weed. I got so high because I was so scared because everywhere I went, I thought everybody can know I'm high now. You know what I mean? And, but 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 it was very much like uh, there's a lot of culture there. Uh, yes. The, the islands in the north, hai, haiku haiku. Is it called Hokkaido? Hokkaido. That's yes. Where I'm from. Oh, that's where the wild weed is yes. grown. Ah. <laughs> so I had seeds from there. Okay. Those None of them grow. Eh. They were very dark, like black, almost black. Ooh. And I was really excited, like oh, it's gonna. Tried to I tried many grow. many. I tried many times, <laughs> and I was like, really, nothing grew. So I don't know. It was, but my friend Rob Clark, he wrote marijuana botany, and he went up there and uh, he told me, he said it's very dangerous because they they have people watching for especially harvest time. They were like the police are watching all the time uh -huh. for people. But uh, but there was very interesting genetics there because it's a mixture between hemp and cannabis and it's every every spectrum, the whole spectrum. So like if you go there, if you live there and you go there, you should collect seeds uh -huh. because there's got to be something special there you know what i mean yeah. because it was a lot of trading and then that was an island that got a lot of uh seeds from that so there must be very old it's not new seeds no, there's no runs yeah. Yeah. so that would be a mission if i were there and you're from there so that's even easier yeah to wreck to wreck the gene pool just like arian good job good job dave because they have special they have their own genes so like if he was you were talking about seeds. We have so I have seeds here also for sale too. So I have uh, I own TH seeds from Amsterdam. So we started in '93, and so we've been doing it for you know so you twenty plus years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grow all stuff in, here now. Here. Yeah. So originally Amsterdam, uh, originally in New York, but then Amsterdam yeah. for twenty years, and then back here ten years, and so. And you know there, you know this magazine Hot Dog. I have old magazine called Hot Dog J Japanese. It's like a very weird magazine, like some manga, some some crazy stuff, Amsterdam style. Amsterdam style magazine. Yeah, and they had like a uh, very, so they had an article many years ago. They took pictures of us, the wrong names. Everything was wrong names, you know, <laughs> like Fred and Bob. I was like, who is this Fred and Bob? And they had pictures of our garden. And it was interesting because the Japanese crew that came over to Amsterdam, they were very excited. They were like, Oh, this is the best. And so uh, that year, this is 2005, and they came, and I did a thing called the leaf blower, where I put a lot of weed inside of a leaf blower, and I like like you see it now online, people doing it. Um, but I did that, and all the Japanese guys were right up in the front, like, getting all the smoke. And so so much that I at one point I had to like, pull it out. But I think you guys had enough. They were like, no more, more. It was fun. It was fun. But the Japanese uh, that that. The, the history is with hemp is very long. Yes. Uh, very because long. Shinto traditional. And like a yeah, right. traditional. religious way and a uh, cultivational way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cultural way. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's have, rich. It's we, rich. We're going to have uh, Tokyo 420 on 420. I hope so. We are, we are, we are, <laughs> no other day you can do it. You can, yeah, it but you know, you know what 710 is? You know 710? Oil day. Yes, okay, good. His so, birthday. Really? Oh, his birthday is 710. <laughs> 
good good birth. That's a good day too, because July is nice. Yeah. yeah, no, it's perfect. That's awesome. Uh, I was born in 1969 in Woodstock, Ooh. so it's the same kind of like everybody. Oh, Woodstock, 1969. That was like the best time. So yeah. can't be any other time. So seven ten is a good year, good uh, day for sure. <laughs> so so you're leaving. Obviously, you have to go back soon. She has. Oh, you're going for the show. I'm you, here. You live here now. Yeah. Okay, cool. You live in uh, Boulder oh. or West Coast. Oh, I live in West Coast, LA. LA or like I've kind of been in <laughs> Oregon. Uh oh. Like, we got another homeless LA person. I didn't even know it's sometimes LA, sometimes you know Venice. No, yeah. no. I was in Oregon. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Uh, Oregon's got great weed too. Big weed culture. Cali has a weed culture too. Obviously, it's almost like it's too much sometimes. Why do you reside in Colorado? Um, because I lived in Amsterdam so long, and it's okay. below the sea. You know, oh, and then I came oh, here, and I was up so high. I was like, ah, oh, this is much nicer. Nice. And also, it's very gray. Like Amsterdam is gray, 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 okay. and here is sun, sun, sun. Okay. So when I got here, I said, yeah. And I knew I, I moved here 2010, and uh, 2012 it became legal. So I already knew I, in my mind. I knew this is the spot. So first spot in America, and then I had a baby the same day, same year. So like just like you. So my baby is 2012, which is the year they legalized weed, and I was in Colorado. So when he gets older, he can say, oh, I was born in Colorado 2012, and everybody goes. Isn't that the year they made weed legal? Yep, you know what I mean? So, full circle, yes. <laughs> That's always the best, you know? So, oh, thank you very much. So, what, do you have a website, you have a website or anything you, you promote or any kind oh, of... Yes, um, yeah. our CBD brand name in Tokyo is Tokyo Moon with three O's. Okay. So if you get CBD Tokyo Moon, probably you'll see us. We are on Instagram, YouTube, uh, website... <laughs> Our company name is Offing. My name is Rose. His name is Yoda. He's one of the founders. Nice. Yoda. Thank you so much. Yoda and Rose. And All right. Rose. That's awesome. Adam Dunn Show. Adam Dunn Show. So uh, you can look us up on uh, on YouTube and on uh, Instagram. He'll send you some. He'll send you some data. Uh oh. Oh Jesus. Stoner stuff. <laughs> Do you know the brand Stoner from Japan also? Do you know? Stoner? Yeah. What? Stoner? Can I see the QR ones for it? It's a Japanese clothing brand called Stoner. Do you know? No. Stoner. Like, yeah, it's from Japan. They've been a long time, maybe 1999, old, old brand. But they were like the original smoke smoking guys from Japan who didn't, before anybody was. Thank you. you know, is that a brand of cannabis? No, it's a brand of clothing. Yeah, Stoner. Stoner brand. Yeah, it's an old one. Cool, so there you go. He's the co-host. He's not the real host. Oh, right. <laughs> He's my Ed McMahon. You know who Ed McMahon is? Ah, ah, there ah, you go. That's Ed McMahon right there. He's good. You see Tim? You talk to Tim? All right, so now we have a place to stay when we come to Japan, right? Yes, anytime. <laughs> oh, you can sleep under the desk. It'll work. It'll work. Yeah. Oh, now you got him. Now, now he's excited. Now he's excited. Just watch the show. <laughs> Excellent. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah, and then tomorrow I'll be at this booth behind here with my seeds. If you guys want to get some seeds okay. to bring back, back. might be important. All right. Thank you. Oh yeah, no, we have lots, and I we have a whole. Um, uh, NF Seeds, which is basically NFT uh, blockchain related seed company, so no 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 credit cards. So you just go straight to your to your wallet. So you have your wallet, your crypto wallet. You order the seeds. We send the seeds to you. No no, there's no credit card company. No money goes to anybody. Saves you that. that. Plus we have your NF. The NFT is your receipt. So you now you're in the club. Next time you buy seeds from us, we know you bought seeds last time. We give you more seeds. And then you make more and more and more and you build it up. So maybe we can talk about yeah. bringing your thing under it. Yeah. There you go. We got more work. See you tomorrow, Rose. <laughs> What's going on, sir? Good. We're, we're live. We're live. Oh, yeah. We're live. You're live, bro. We found him. We Triangulation has occurred. One, two. Make sure I don't start trip walls. Oh, yeah. One. All of a sudden. Yeah. Anyway, how's the show going? Would you put five seconds? This one. This is a microphone. Oh, I thought it was amazing. Stuck on it. Suck it. <laughs> Stop sucking on my mic. 
that's a good idea though. I should put it to the face. So then it's the Nigma, right? Yes. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Nigma, looking. Uh, Dumb Max. These are the guys that won the uh, kind of those aren't mushrooms. Those are those are you can give them away, right? THCA mushrooms. THCA mushrooms. Take take donation. There's a lot of donating going on around here. Dave can't even open it. No, these are the best chocolate bars I buy. I know. They're magic, man. They're magic, right? We're cruising around. We just want to say hi. Sure. Yeah. Fungifarms.com. Um, tomorrow I'll be on a little backside here. I'm taking over. I'm doing the old takeover technique. You know, you know how we roll. Sure. Today was more to do the show. Tomorrow we'll do that. But I'll be here all day. I'll be here until next week. Till next Thursday. More can party. What's that? It's like a party later. Yeah, I'll give you a heads up. Yeah, I'll see you. All right. All right. Sounds good. Oh, Dave's in the candy. Dave's in the candy. What do you got, Dave? Whoa. Give me some gelatin. No, I don't. I don't. All right, who else are we going to go see? Come on. Oh. I can turn my... Uh... How do I turn just the fucking thing off? I don't need my... I don't need this. That's what I'm yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You don't need my video. What do we got? What do we got? It was oh, kind of cool to have your your video though. Homegrown. I know, but I can't operate it. Okay. How you doing? Great. Dave, nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm the mic guy. I'm the mic boom. So what's oh, okay. going on? What do we, what oh, do we so, got going uh, on here? I, uh, oh, so uh, I'm a hemp farmer out in Washington. Nice. In a little town called Home. Uh -huh. My business is called Homegrown. Gotcha. Uh, so we produce seed. Uh, we also produce CBD and salve, so topical, and goat soap. Uh, as you can see, some pet pounds of hemp back over here. Yeah, pounding, pounds, pounds of hemp. I got, you got to have that. They don't have no go hemp expo, you, you know, you got to have them. And you have your own bees. And then my brother does the beekeeping out of Texas. That's awesome. So he works with beekeepers. We do the, yes, sir. Yeah, yep. Off uh, of Texas. Uh, we do CBD honey, and then as well as the THC honey that saves the bees. So not only get good honey, but you also save and rescue honeybees. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, be, definitely honey is the way to go in, in general. Just yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the trick is you just snap it on the back. Yeah. 10 milligrams. Right. And, and, and then drip it in your mouth and like, we'll get yeah. the shot. Come on. Yeah, it's straight. Shot. Shot. Cool. It in, yeah, yeah double donor. Yes, sir. Double donor. Yeah, well. Easy ass. Yeah. He's our Which one is your brother? Yeah. Uh, my brother here. Got it. He just told us we can make a couple of jobs. Yeah, he oh, said you can have as many as you want. Uh, yeah. As many as you want. That's right. Yeah. You've got the budget. So, yeah. like, he's the funny man. So, who's going to soak you? <laughs> so, I had a, so, we have a guy out of Ohio who's a soap maker. We call him Soap Man. And he would come to Amsterdam every year and uh, come to the Cannabis Cup, you know? And so, it was always like, we always had him soap. Yeah. And he's still doing it to this day, but it was awesome because... Uh, you know, he would look at, he'd work with, I'm, I'm a breeder, so he'd be like, I made sage, so you make me sage soap, you can come into town, and then he would, we did a thing one year, though, where he came like this, and they were all rough, and I said, hey, man, can you make it like, can you make it look like ash? And he goes, sure. And so we had it like, we did, we called it a soap, right? Like, so it was like, uh, and then, or soap, like, like, dope, S-O-P, and it was like, uh, we had the Afghan, we had uh, temple balls, you know, so like round one, temple balls, round one. And then we did the flat hash, which was like the Dutch hash because we were in Holland at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was pretty funny. But, we want to do like a, a round mold with the bee and yeah. some uh, honeycombs on it. Yeah. And then donate some of our proceeds to the beehives. That's awesome. Yeah. Funny, I have the same packaging. I got it from Amazon for oh, nice. giveaway for giveaways for my, because I, I do breeding also. So yep, I was yep. like, Plenty Plenty seed. and yep. I was like, oh, these are perfect because they have, That's these, awesome. they have yeah. the other ones too that have the bees on them. So uh -huh. I yep. got those too. Got those too. Yes, sir. Where, Where were you guys? So you're you're Keith, Texas, your and you're here. Or? Uh, I'm I'm a hemp farmer in Washington. Oh, Washington. Really in Texas. Got you. Got you. Which part of Washington? Are you in? Uh, home. Or excuse me. Yeah, yeah. home. Yeah, 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 home. Yeah, where, home where is that? At, like, uh, so if you go towards uh, Tacoma, get like Carver, okay. yep. Key Peninsula is where we're at. We're Sweet. looking at yeah. And how, I mean, did the whole hemp thing collapse there too a bit, or as far as no, the farming no, goes? No, we're still or, driving. I mean, I was I was in Oregon like I don't know four or five years ago, and it was just like. It's crazy. Right. Farms just left. People just like, well, fuck it. It ain't worth it. You know what I mean? And I was just like, this is nuts, dude. I was, I was driving to a farm, and on the way to the farm, I saw at least five or six farms that were just like left. Like they were like, no, nah, these guys aren't even going to harvest. And I was like, that is, 
disgusting. And I mean, knowing all the work that goes into it. Then there was another issue up in Washington that was interesting that we, we heard about, which was because uh, well, we, all the guys that are processing for, for CBD and THC, and stuff, they were like a whole valley that was all contaminated with some sort of shit. You know, oh, yeah, I think it, yeah, yeah. yeah, where was that? What was it? What was that was it? Washington State. Yeah. North, uh, closer to Everett. Everett, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cause that was, I mean, that was like, because my guy was in, working in one of the biggest labs, and they were like, they're kind of like just letting us do it now. You know what I mean? And I'm like, they're letting you do it. He's like, yeah, they're just like, okay, I guess it's sat long enough. And I'm like, that shit can sit like a hundred years and it ain't going to be any less. I mean, you know, it was weird. Yeah. So it's, it's some, that's where we got our inspiration. Oh yeah. It's going on the side of the road. And I'm like, Good old Methford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, you got oh yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. I mean, good old Methford. Seeing the entire state, right? Yeah, no one gave a fuck. Yeah, there are so many involuntary. What are we calling them? Volunteers. Yeah, that just come back year after year. That fuck. I can't even get a crop without seeing some boulder out. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's. It is like the the unspoken part of the whole thing, where if you're like the success of hemp means. That, I mean, it's like one of those things. If they were smart, they would have like let hemp be legal. 50 years ago when they were fighting it and be like, you know, if they let them do, no one can grow good weed because there's just too much falling around. And you'd be like, I got all seedy bullshit weed all the time. And they would have been, you know, after 20, 30 generations, we would be like all ass out right now. Yeah, we'd be fucked. We'd be like, have to have like five HEPA filters per room, you know what I mean? Just to make it work and wear suits and shit because it's like, I, you know, there's there's actually in Morocco where they grow lots of uh, cannabis there, there's like a cloud, that a pollen that moves its way up to plants and goes all the way up, you know, just hundreds of miles. And people are like, hey, yeah, I'm like doing it hundreds of miles and if there's enough of a concentration, you know what I mean? Because now it's moving like a locomotive up the coast, you know, and places like here, same thing. So, yeah, yeah. hemp farming ain't easy, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm glad to like see, you know, growing our community once again in time. Right. And then this is just a salve, like That's a, helpful, yeah. yeah, nice. Um, yeah. And you, you're a one man show or you got a team? Uh, well, we're a family family farm. Yeah. Do you have brothers do it? I mean, he has to fly in, so I tell him different. Well, <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Gotcha. His, uh, base of operation for his honey, though. Ah, it's a long flight time. for those bees, man. You're like, you better get home by dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's nice to meet you guys. Hey, nice meet you as well, Adam Dunn Show. You can check us out. You'll be there. You're you're live right now. We're, we're, we're there. You, you already you were already on the show. I'll stop by later. What's your what you Uh be the, delightful. Be delightful. Be delightful. Yeah. Yeah. How many B fucking puns can you come up with, right? It's like it's, it is literally the most. I am here to sweeten your day. It is the most punnable sort of <laughs> industry out there. You know what I mean? Like, they don't like honey. I just say, okay, well, you must be sweet up all day. Uh, Dave's not. <laughs> yeah, that's Dave's line. That's his line. All right, let's cruise it. Thanks. So it's funny, this is a story I was telling earlier about my swatches. These are the guys that I got the swatches from way back in the day. This isn't the original owners. Original is this your seed no. that started you? Um, kind of. Well, they came to Amsterdam and they had the, they had the hemp fabric. There was only like two or three sources of hemp fabric back in the day. And they were one of them. Oops. Oh, All right. Go to a group that has candy. Oh my gosh. Water. I could go for water. I don't know about the candy and food so much. Candy. They call him Candy. So is this sound is decent or what part? Yeah, it sounds all right. It's, it's, it's a little glitchy here and there. It's a little glitchy here and there, but it's all right. Yeah, I'm just wondering how far away I get from his thing. I'd be closing. Already? No, six o'clock. What? Closing the door. Vinny, oh, for the back. Vinny still has about 40 minutes to get here still. I know. With the video. Right, we'll, figure something out. we'll figure it out. We've done worse. We'll never We've make it. We've done worse. We'll never make it. No? No. We might should we give Mike isn't working. Should we give up? Why is oh, it not working? Not give up. Why is it not working? I don't know. I am close enough to that one. Hmm. Strange. It's wrong. Oh, he sees girls. Dave's girls. loud enough, we can hear him. It's fine. Oh uh, look at him, he's found the candy. He's, he's got a nose like that. Look at him. Oh, that's he doesn't want to drive home with any of that. Snickers. That's not the only one I'll go for. I could do the Snickers. Really? Yeah. Like microscopic Snickers? Yes, why not? Microscopic Snickers. Why the hell not? Uh oh. 
So yeah, MSR, uh, ASMR now. So yeah, we're a little bit late to the party here. Vending machines. My guys are going to probably get one of those. What do you think, Dave? Nom, nom, nom. Dave. You forgot our life. I own worth the stock in that Madbox company. Yeah. About 12 years ago. But anybody, you want to know what people found? Is whatever I invest in. So I invested in Redbox, failed. I got sweat equity in Dixie. It's trading at point zero zero for four, and they all can trade again. Okay, so they really are closing us out. They're closing. Wow. I can't believe they're closing us out. We're going to have to go out of the park a lot. Oh, so we're going to do dabs. We'll go do dabs in the car. Perfect. Dave's going to grab as many samples as he can. I'm going to go get my stuff. <laughs> and then we're going to go smoke dabs in the car for an hour or 40 minutes. All right. Uh, yeah, your Bluetooth, is, your mic's cutting out. You're getting too far from your person, I think. Oh. Hold on. Can't go too far away now. It sounds okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we go do dabs in the car. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Dave's car making him stinky so he gets scared and paranoid. Oh no! What? I don't Stinky know. paranoid? Yeah, totally. Up, oh, you got thirty-seven oh. minutes to burn, y'all. <laughs> That's perfect. That's enough. We need it. I need to do dabs. Yeah, I know. That's the easy thirty-seven minutes of dab time. There he is. I've been looking for this kid for the whole time. I thought I lost him. I thought I lost you. You at the panel? Did you get on it? Why not? Should have been up there. You should have been saying, like, I've been doing this since I was a firm. What are you talking about? Yeah, why are you why are you holding a mic like you're about to start? Because you're on the show. We're live. We're interviewing the fastest sperm in his balls. Yeah, that, was you. that was you. You were the winner of the race. Okay. All right, we need to pack you up though, because we're time to go um <laughs> do some things. Okay, so I am packing up some things. Um uh, to leave that. Where's the NFC? Uh, so it's here, but we're going to do it tomorrow because these guys didn't know it. No, we're not going to set it up and then have them. Uh, how are we going to do two things at once, Dave? You're not here to help us out. Yeah, Dave. You, guys, mad at you, you didn't come here to know anything. Now you're going to come and tell us how to do stuff? Is that, what's wow. that what Is that what I'm hearing? What? The watching. You're right. <laughs> there you go. Go. Oh, my God. He's so happy. So, all right. Let's see. I got this, this. So, all right, keep it going, Dave. Here, right. Watch up. the show get more views than any other. Hi, Dave. How's it going, dude? Oh, I can't hear you for some reason. Oh. What, you broke it? Oh, I can hear Adam really good. So maybe whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't hear Dave at all. No, it has nothing to do with the headphones. You're not the yes, best. it does. This was never on. You were holding this the whole time, and it no. wasn't working? Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. Mine wasn't working. Yours wasn't working. It was your headphones. I muted it. I was muted. It's not. I, no. I can hear you right now right. through right. my headphones. I, I think so my headphones are the best thing ever. I think Dave's they work. Work. Right. Okay, so that means my the headphones are the only thing that ever works. Right here. Yeah. Oh, now she's making fun of my tiny mic. You want some, you want some uh, strong locals? Local? Yeah. Uh, this. Hand them out. What do you got? You want your own company back? Or, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There. Suck it. All right. So, uh, I guess I'm just packing up, packing in. Let me begin. Yeah. Yeah. Bliss. Of course you can. Oh my goodness! Can you hear me, Mark? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. Wonderful. Party Bliss. time! Excellent. Are you live, sir? We, we are. Yeah, we're a professional organization. Right? This is our cameraman. Yeah. Want to tell us, Roxanne, about your earthy uh, company? Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know if you guys know, but the Carolinas. 
Carolina is one of the um, most lenient states. Oh, God damn it. Is, that, is this what we're using? No. Really? Hey, guys. Welcome to NoCo. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Really? Yeah. How? I am telling Are you, you dude, you're a Zoom is a different company. company. Different company. We're not, I'm not saying what happened is, is this we're your not on phone my phone or his phone? No, it's his phone. So there's no way it has nothing to do with mine. I'm on my thing here listening. Uh, yes. It. And that's your mic working. How? I'm not connected. So check out your phone. Got some stickers. No. It was Earthy like, it's now. green. <laughs> What are you doing? Earthynow.com. There we go. Yeah. E A T H R Y N O W dot com. Maybe it's this mic. Dave, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can hear all you guys now. Yeah. I wish I okay. I, we, I didn't do anything. Oh, can you sign? That for us? Oh, okay. Right now. That would be, just oh, yeah, no, it wouldn't, because then no one would be where audio shows mostly. Yeah. So that would suck. Well, how's your day going? My day was, you know, a normal day in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. Boring. I know. I drove here thinking we were going to be doing something, but we're not. We drove our. Oh, and, and he's describing your company, so look, I'll let him give the pitch, and then we'll hear it. Oh, I've been doing Earthy now for a couple of years. Uh, so, yeah, we mix smokes with hemp flour from the Seneca tribe. All of our gummies have organic sugar. Uh, all of our extracts are organic corn and all of those. So everything is good for And then we farm everything uh, organic as well. No sprays, no pesticides. Um you know, we 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 haven't gone we haven't gone down that route. California and Oregon are so um, distant. Um, you know, we were going to go for the Omni listing as well. So that's been an option. Yeah, we uh, export to Switzerland uh, or you know, other countries. But uh, we grow up we make it uh, sustainably. And, uh, yeah, I've been working on it for a long time. The chain of agriculture is kind of a buzzword. We're going to make compost, land anchor, and Do you have any peaches? Oh, uh, yeah, our peaches are the best. They're way better than Georgia peaches. Of course they yeah. are. Yeah. Is that a minor root yet? Uh-huh. Uh, not yet. They're minor root yet. They're just starting to bloom, though. I want to do what you can. I mean, uh, June, July, they'll be ready for me. Right. You heard that here. June, July. Peaches are ready. Peaches Apples in the fall. Bring it. Bring it. And we actually have some of the best wine too in the country. Do you have a business there? I don't. Not a wine business. Um, I have a mushroom business. Oh. But, uh, Tell them about your mushroom business. <laughs> I'm not ready to go live. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. You are live. You You've are been live for the past 10 minutes. You're live. Soma medicinal. We're out of Canada, Colorado. What is the name of it? Soma medicinal. Soma medicinals. Oh, good old Soma. Oh, not the Soma. We know. Soma. We know the Soma. Yeah. Some of medicine. Um, they're functional psychedelic mushrooms. How many grams of psychedelic in that? 2.22 grams. We're working with... 2.2 uh, or 0.2? 2.22 2. grams. Well, that's so that's, nice a, that's, a, that's a nice, that's healthy a nice dose. dose. Yeah, um, our mixed bars are <laughs> in sections, so you don't have to put the whole bar at once. Um, you can eat them as a microdose if you would prefer that way. You can lick it. 
and we're cultivating the mushroom uh, all organically, all really right. intentionally. I wrote this post with Mo. Can you put that on? No, I need okay. to use uh, uh, the fire, the fire so I can run through the fire. You want to do it? You can have it all the time. Really hoping to work in the you could have plastic space. melting on your dryer. Right. Right. So okay. His mic is catching now. Now all they hear is that. No, I do want to hear. I'm not going to say that. I guess so. Yep. Adam, yeah, Adam you know, like, give me your one of the things. Yeah, that he's he's lives in Portland. He's one of my best friends. I'd love to try I one. I met him. I think it's a small world. Here, everybody. It's a mushroom transaction going live. No, I'm not. I I cannot pay money for mushrooms. Cannot. No. I I am all for it. Yours is the camera. Yours is the mic. I'm telling you, this is the straightest thing. Are you sure? Yeah. Are we taking this to the parking lot? Yes. Take it to the parking lot. All right, we're going to the parking lot. Smells like weed. Sweet. Huh? Where are you going? All right. Well, I gotta be. You know where the car is. Meet me in the car. There you go. My feral child. My feral child. Come on, let's go. Smoke some weed. You go tomorrow, Dave. Um, Seen a little bit. Not here. <laughs> We're on camera, live. Wow, I can I can feel the chintziness of this lighter just by the it's like one oh, yeah. one one light. And I'm already done. A rose. It's, it's just fun. one less. It's it's like one chance the springs are going to fly up. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It See, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Just gotta go smoke some weed now. <laughs> Make it better. Take care. Here, take these. I'll be right out. I don't want to pull a Leslie Nielsen. I yeah. <laughs> should have. I should have. Big long piss in there with the microphones on. That's a good idea. <laughs> that is a that is a deal. The chat is asking if that is a hemp backpack, Adam. This one in my bag, on my bag, no. Yes. My kid, no. No. No, it's an old, it's an old, okay. old auto bag I've had forever. But it's got this little secret pocket on the bottom, which is dope, so. Yeah. I can just, yeah, it's like, it's not even like secret, but just the way it's placed, it's not logical. So you're like, what, what is this? And it holds like a whole jar. Show you, show you in a second. It holds a whole jar. Of jars. If you stand them up, you can stand up three big jars underneath your backpack. It's crazy. It's crazy. Hell yeah, dude. Well, beautiful. Now we only have to do about 20 more minutes, and then Vinny's going to get there. And as a bonus, Vinny has so much coverage because we've interviewed a bunch of cool people that we have enough to do the show and the Patreon. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, we're just going to use that footage for Patreon then? For the most part, yeah. Oh, well. Right there. How long for the show? The show will go on until 8 30 or 9. Then we have no Patreon. So it's either that or I'd say cut it off after the first I, the first interview. And then we got two more interviews. And we didn't know. Okay, cool. That works uh, out. Right on. Uh, no, we're going to film right now. Stay it on. Keep it on. Keep it rolling, man. You got to keep it rolling. Oh, yeah. It'll be really bad if you cut off. Oh, that's even better because I'll just go. Yeah, no, we don't cut up. Yeah, yeah, that would be terrible, right? Yeah, terrible. Not, not good. Yeah, no, you have a better truck for us. Cause... No elk herd. Huh? No elk herd. Hold the horses. Oh, I got my keys in my bag. Get to watch this. We have Dave my truck. No, we're not going anywhere yet. Let's just, let's just make it happen here, guys. Where are we going? Where are we? What are you guys? We're gone. Go, go film, film, film him while I'm doing this. There you go. He's coming up. 
There you go, classic. I'm looking through my bag. Oh, look, it's Vinny. I made it. Oh, nice, dude. Lunch, dude. I'm on Sheridan. Oh, sweet, dude. <laughs> Ticking away here. Awesome, dude. Go smoke. Go smoke. Okay, we haven't yeah. even seen a dab yet. We could just do dabs and watch the show with you. Uh, the chat is telling <laughs> the chat is telling Dave to find a policeman and tell him that you're lost. <laughs> <laughs> Walk straight out the door and walk straight. How the hell are you getting lost? Me? I'm not lost. Look at him. He's lost. He's looking down on his phone like a puppy. Look at him. Look at him. Wow. Dave? Yeah. Dave got lost in the park. <sighs> We're at the Enormo Dome. Oh, yeah. Just go. Oh, yeah, to just go straight out the door. I know. Somehow you didn't, didn't make it. Yes. All right, so. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh. Was this a mix of everything? Yeah. This was done. I can tell you. Okay. Yeah. Oh. A little bit. Made a little bit of everything. <laughs> All right, well, I hit the drive go by a little quicker. And he's there, man. Uh, oh, I made it to. I made it Party to the 76. Time. Woo! 21, it says. My dad chip is not charged. There's no way his dad has to charge. My heart is charged. I got three. I got three. I got three. I got three. No, no, we will never smoke that. Even an uncharged, I'll smoke it of an uncharged dad back to the torch before it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take that out. Take the charger. And then I put that right into it. There we go. Live. Yes, of course we're live. You're not, but we are. I don't know. You are. No, I think you lost signal. We heard you. Oh. Dave, why do you think too much about things and everything you think is wrong? I don't know what I'm watching, but it's good. You don't know what you're watching? I just know. I just. Yeah. I'm watching the road. That's what I'm watching. The road? I, I thought you were there. Oh, you're Sorry. back online. I was torching up. I didn't want to make a bunch of noise. You're. Oh, man. I thought you were there, like in the house. No. no. I'm on the way. He's almost How far there. Are you? Uh, huh? The 76 in Sheridan. 76 in Sheridan. How'd you know? I heard him say that 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Whoa. This guy's getting violent. <laughs> Damn, dude. Uh, What'd you guys do to yeah. Dave out there? I know. He needs more mushrooms. I cannot believe What did we do? <laughs> I don't know. I talked to people. Money. I went and saw some people. I saw Dawes. I saw the shook hands with the you governor. Did? You did. I gave him a week. Oh, yeah. Know, you we almost had the governor on the show, right? 100 bucks an hour. We yeah. almost had the governor. We got close. No, this is a great announcement, though. We have secured. What? We have pretty much secured a show with with Polis for 4th of July week, whatever that is. Because uh, we're going to do a reunion show because they lost their fucking flag. They've lost it. What? The flag, our flag we made him. It's been lost. We'll have to have another one made. Oh, look at that. That's, that could be, I don't know, man. That took a little Don't's bit. Car. Go get it. Let's know. That'd don't be a roll of joint. No. Oh, that'll take forever, dude. We, we got we to gotta do the show within the day, dude. You gotta get, you know. We have to do the show when? Dude, you, you don't July even know. 4th. We've already time traveled today. <laughs> yeah, we're still footage. traveling. Vinny's traveling with our time I heard capsule. <laughs> Make it there, and then everyone's gonna experience two hours ago. You missed. You missed. Hey, Jimmy. He's not impressed. Ready? <laughs> Get in the back, Jack. I have a grinder and some papers. Oh, just push it. Push it. 
Don't, don't tell Dave how to open doors. What? Yeah. Stop telling us about your apps, Dave. I don't have. So I just want to ask you. Just going to ask you. Here. From our friends. Oh, oh, oh. I'm almost to Sloan's Lake. Sloan's Lake. Vinny, I'm not coming in hot. Okay, so we are here hanging out. This is us doing a sesh. Cameraman is killing it today. Look at him. He's, he's on it. One hand. He's got great session. Here's flying out. Yeah. You have yellow tips? Somewhere in my bag. I don't travel without them. Yo tips. Your number one dip of the yo with the yoiest of yo tips. Come on, Dave. Give it to him. Tell him. Just the tip. Whoa. Tip. All right, we made it past the seventy. We're looking at lakesides. On your Bible? I'm rolling on a Bible. No, on the Dutch lighting stuff from yesterday. Oh yes. Yeah. I think I'm going. I'm passing. No, that's good. I'm done looking at this Land Rover. Whee. All right, lakeside. Uh, lakeside. Oh, Come on down. Out. Right, the cyclone. If you dare, if you, know, if, if, load it. if you don't believe things are haunted, come down the lakeside. Where shit's haunted. Oh, look, summer jobs apply online. You could work at lakeside. Fuck <laughs> yeah, dude. The wild chipmunk. <laughs> Give yourself a concussion every night. <laughs> conk, 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 conk. Dude, Everybody. that thing is so wild. It's crazy. Yeah. Here. They got the burlap slide. You can get a rug burn slide. Uh, if the chat has any questions for Adam, uh, hit me up. I'll send it to him. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chat. Come on. Give me some questions. Chat, I questions yeah, chat. For MCI. Chat. Questions chat. for me? I don't know questions for me. Got the got the legit old RB we'll side. questions Ooh. for you, Mark. No. Oh, oh man, hold on. Mark is not singer. Bobby Wayne is listening. You had to go there, Dave. Wow. That's great. Everyone gets to see you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. Dave, your role technique is being exposed to the world. Yeah, dude. Now they know. <laughs> it's been like 20 minutes already. Like, I'm almost dude, there. Yeah, over, Vinny, Vinny's going to get here before you're done rolling that joint. Vinny turned around. Vinny turned, turned around and came back. Then he came around, picked funny. up stuff, and came back again. I guarantee you. Like, we're getting close. Yeah. Oh, bummer. Shit. Shit, no, bummer, shit. shit. Yeah, already, What's going on? I already passed. What? Oh, that um, Proud Souls, where I got the barbecue from, is right here. I need to get some probes one day. Okay. Oh, Vinny's yeah. getting probed. <laughs> probed. Or the only kind. Okay. Well, that's well, great. And, dude, and, I'm and saying, on that note, dude, I'm saying if you want to drive up to Estes Park, get in a Tesla. That guy was cooking up the hills. Some running on top of the beach. You can only imagine what that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Like Question from the chat gang. Yes, sir. Adam, when you hired Dave for the podcast, did you expect to get all of that talent? <laughs> Uh, more. I mean, I was more. expecting more, actually, to be quite honest. Oh, so. okay. Right, yeah, more. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot more to be... I was expecting it to go deeper, but we we, we, we <laughs> with what we got. Yep. Right, Dave? Right. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Did you send me that message? Did you send that question, Dave? <laughs> send a question. Oh, are you first. walking away? Is he leaving us now? It's all sad. I'm telling you, he's only got a few moments. I'm going to get there before that jump. This will be awesome. Now he's going to go to your oh, tip. The dedication this man has. This man and the dedication to your tip. Look, we're oh, filming him really? in non wide, non. Yeah. What's all that about? about? What are you looking at? See lights ahead. What? Oh, like siren lights way ahead. 
Oh, shit. I wonder if Dave saw his um, doppelganger here with the jacket. With the dress. It had the top oh. and the dress, a skirt, a skirt to go with it. it was, there was three different people. There was one guy that was wearing like a farmer thing. We see him, like a farmer suit. And he had like a yeah. red red version of the same thing and the green version. Oh, boy. Yeah. The wheelie, wheelie pattern thing. I don't know, man. So it was... So it was the husband and wife were both wearing like Dave's suit top. She had the skirt bottom, and then the kid was wearing clover leaves. <laughs> Whoa. No. He's up and coming. Uh oh. Yo Tip Master. Oh, Yo Tip Master. I'll never See? run out of Yo Tips now. I should follow Metro. He's right on his ass. I thought you were there, Vinny. I can't believe it's taking me so long. Yeah, Vinny. I can't the believe hell? Vinny, I'm shocked. <laughs> Cause I then, know, I tried. Because then we I still really even have to, to cover while we upload the video, dude. Whoa. Yes. yes. Well, yeah, it's sort of a transferring. Okay, we'll do a kind of a transferring. Yes, we'll do a transferring. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ooh. Look at that. They don't even know how to spell Buffalo. 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 So bad. So bad. They didn't spell Buffalo right Hi, Kelly. Oh, you missed Dave rolling a joint for like 30 minutes. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was only 11 minutes off. <laughs> <laughs> it still says red, though. I hate it when it says red. Yeah, red's not a good color for when you want to get uh, home. Get somewhere? Yeah, it's been red <laughs> yeah. the whole fucking time. <laughs> That's for certain. Hey, look. If you look way in the distance, you can see Pike's Peak. So where is the – it's a, where it's at some kind of convention center this year or something, you're saying? Where is it at? It was at, it was at the Estes Park Event Center. Oh. But this is crazy. You can, like all the way down Sharon Strait, you can see – I've never seen uh, Pike's Peak from here like that. Crazy. I wish I, I wish I could zoom for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we're good. I'm good. We're good. Yeah, Sloan's Lake. I've been up that way. Sloan's Lake. All right, we got TP's fish and chips here on the right. Oh, he's going by the fish and chips uh, place. I like that place. I love that place. Really? Yeah, good. I've never been. That's, I've never been to that yeah. place in particular. It's pretty good. Oh, okay. Pretty good. It's a good one. Well, there's a couple oh, the of them. Oh, the right? right? uh, you guys better hurry up. We got the basketball game in 30 minutes. Can I get so. some cup from Blake? <laughs> I'm trying. I had 10 minutes. I'm, 10 fucking, minutes. I'm fucking with you guys. But they fly in fish. You grab the Hey, um, did you see a package for Adam <laughs> underneath the counter? Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, no I would wasn't looking for one. Do you want me to go look currently? No, I'll be there in nine minutes. There's a package, suppose. I did. We don't know. It'd be really nice if the landlady would call in. Wow. (laughs) We see her in the chat. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that. Fits right there. That's awesome. I can take a hit. Take a what? Hmm? Smoke it in the car now. Oh, I didn't fill those up. That's that. Did I? Oh, I didn't even fill it up. Just right. So. <laughs> there you go. You got even you lined it up. Bro, what the fuck kind of shit was that, bro? Why is the lemon too bad? That's the question. It, it's, it's just a number of that you see from that. Like I need two more than the three. But that's what a pheno hunt is. Up in your face. Whoa. I mean, remember. I like that, but it's background. I enjoy going. To this one is funny. If I showed it to Jack, hey Jack, you'll hate this. No, no, I don't. I love Jack. But if Jack and you want to marry him, well, I did so. This is a very small jar. No, but that's not. Listen, it's not. It's not. It's a two gram. 
Yeah, it should be more. Should we do some It'd be ads? more. <laughs> It'd be more. Wow. Oh, that made it fast. Like baller, jars. Yeah. This is like from James Bond. Okay. Oh. Well, shout it out to So High Cafe. www.sohighcafe.com. Oh, Come on down, 4300 West Alameda. Uh yeah, we're just yes, kicking it here. So There's always hey, we're I, gonna shut us. Come to your podcast. Oh, Mark's ending the show already. Is that it? We're done. Come to your wow. I was just doing something while you guys are like sitting there, man. That's all. That's all I was doing. That's all I do. You're just being proactive. You're being proactive. Yeah. Come on down. Get some barbecue. So high cafe. Don't Hit up Vinny down. before you come down. He'll let you know what's going down. Uh, if you're a DJ, come play some vinyl here. If you have a podcast, you can record it here. Uh, there's green screen. You can put whatever you want behind you. It looks uh, mildly professional, kind of yeah. like our show. Look at this. Look at that. Like that. It looks kind of like that sometimes. And uh, SoHighCafe.com. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, yeah. Got, we got, oh, no, got, that five star, got, the, got that five-star right. review across the board. Oh, nice, dude. Uh, because the burnt ends are the shit. That's why. But yeah, okay. uh, also, the, uh, and he's dialed in just about everything, though. As soon as I walk in, I'll heat up some burnt ends. Dude. Nice, dude. We're having burnt ends as soon as I walk in. Well, Hell yeah! It's probably a, it's probably a red bear pizza. Hell yeah! <clears throat> oh come on, people! Come on, people! Then, he, then he's gonna get there right at seven ten. No, I'm almost there. Okay. Cool. There he is. Oh, look, I can see it live. Nice. All right. Uh, look at that. Twenty-five percent. Look at that. I'm gonna make it through this light. Ding, ding, ding. Hey, Dave. Oh, no charging. What? Do you want to do ozocoffee.com? Ozocoffee.com. The greatest coffee that you ever coffee that you ever coffee that you was ever roasted. Oh, damn! I should have picked. You know what? Up. Justin got us high the whole show last week. All the flour we smoked was his. That sticky lemons was good. Surprising that, that he grows amazing. That's what we're smoking. Oh. Nice. And so, you want to go to ozocoffee.com, you enter done deal 24. I have a pretty good idea that next year it's going to be done deal 25. And so on. Yeah. Good amazing, company. amazing. Coffee. Lemon peach. <laughs> Ozocoffee.com. As you notice, uh, put that yo tip on there. You you put, put, oh my God! One yo hand. tip, as you in can't put the tip on one handed. Yo tip yeah, yeah. com. Oh, oh, oh my com. goodness! This is ugly, dude. I've never <laughs> seen it this ugly. You can go to yo tip dot com and you can uh, purchase wait, wait, on Amazon wait, wait. or just purchase straight from there. Uh, get your Yo Tip starter pack. It's a uh, best way to keep uh, your germs to yourself uh, when you're smoking oh, here comes with your friends. And uh, even if you here are a lone smoker like I am, I'm generally smoking joints by myself. I like to just roll it right up in there. So, YoTip.com, check it out. <laughs> yeah, check out that murdered out Honda. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Can't patch. Can't patch him in. No. Check out that murdered out Honda. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's techno, it's dude. It's extended. very techno. Very techno. So the, too much. So the Viper, was, the, was the Viper techno? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know if it was dark enough. There any food in this I could be part? wrong. I could yeah, be wrong. Yes, there's, 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 there's a lot of bison. But I also don't remember. I just, gave, I just gave Ricky the I just gave Ricky the link so he might might join us. You never know. Uh oh. Uh oh. I know that, that when you call me during the show, you get get put on the show. Whoa! Yeah. All right. Kyle said he couldn't watch. I it. know that Ooh. Adam loves his build a soil. Horrible to yeah. watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is true. <laughs> Too painful. Wow. Build a soil. It's gonna, it's gonna get really organized in a second, though. Pick up some Vinny. nudes from Build a Soil. They've got stuff for miles, from weed to taste good. Check it out. Yeah, if you're into growing yeah. mushrooms, you can check out the his ferments and add it to your misting water. And he said that he's seeing 
good results from that. So that's yeah, something that I might check out, BillOfSoil.com. And when I do check it out, you're going to hit them up and get a done deal. You have to call them and get the done deal because we broke the code system earlier uh, a while back. So BillOfSoil.com, get the done deal. Boom. Because everyone got 20% off. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oops. <clears throat> Oops. Look at that thing like Terpicana extracts. Terpicana? What? Terpicana. Look at you. Oh, look oh at you. nice, dude. Kaiser, Kaiser uh, Sosa extracts. Kaiser Sosa? Yeah. People aren't going to get that record. Kaiser, hey, look. I do. <laughs> That's all you have to we do. Made yeah, yeah. yeah. The key one. So I Three was, minutes. I got out of jail by the key master who blew vape pen to me. To <laughs> my... Blue vape pen, do you? Who did this? What's a blue? What was that? What happened? Oh, what happened? oh you just set it on fire. He just knocked it out. Uh, straight um, right into this. Center console? Yep. Good job. It's, yeah. it's a rental. Uh, oh, sure. That's even better. <laughs> you just pay the 250 right? When you got there, you say, my rental is $45 a day. Do, $250 like for the store. smoking violation right now. There's no, no blunts. I can. Vinny, we need you to save us. Please start the Patreon. Uh -huh. Two minutes away, man. Two minutes away. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but he's got his stuff uploaded. Yeah, and then we still have to, like, no, 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 get no, no, no. it to me. You'll be fine. That's just Jeez. another couple minutes. We're fine. Wow. Let's give this. It gives us Five another minutes. couple minutes to go to greenfarmsmed.com. If you have a med card here in Colorado, you want to go down to Colorado Springs and hit up Green Farms Med Dispensary. Uh, I promise you they have more weed than is in that joint currently. Um, they have tons of uh, SKUs. Any of the quality products that you like in Colorado, they're going to have on the shelf. I guarantee it. Everything. 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 I know. There's a thousand. Oh. Tomorrow it'll be twelve hundred SKUs. Green oh, well, farms like million SKUs. Greenfarmsmed dot com. Oh, where is your thing? He's gone. Last one in the maybe that was what Andrew was calling about. Like, I got your child. <laughs> you know. <laughs> huh. You know. Huh. Oh, have your child with me, see? That's what it says. We're running around town. See, you've got my child. I told you. Right. I have your child. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, I, you didn't know that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to tell you that. <laughs> Vinny, how far away are you? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. One minute. I forgot to tell you that your child is off in a, you know, in a black, blacked out SUV. Making a blacked out SUV. Tarzan story. <laughs> with some dude with a man bun. He left his parents and he had to fend for himself and. This is what it produced in yeah. 20 years. And he's like president. Well, Nick was excited because today as we were driving up, he realized that he can put his feet on the ground. And not only that, his <laughs> knees are coming up a little bit. He's like, dude, my knees are coming up now. Not only can I touch, look at my knees. They're up. He's like, oh, <laughs> shit. I was like, you're going to be driving soon. Maybe on the ride home. <laughs> like, it's time to get yeah, behind the wheel, uh, kid. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no registration. My power steering's fucked. Power steering's out. Come on, kid. You can just look at it right Let's now. Do it. That's, you, that's it's the like, only way to yeah. teach them. You, you're, yeah, 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 don't teach them when it's easy. Fuck yeah. oh, yeah. 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 Four different yeah. tires. Oh, right. now. Three. <laughs> Three different tires. There's two that match. That's not supposed to do that. I know. It's really bad. I know. I know. If anyone ever looks to Brian, I go fast enough. If I go fast enough, it goes beyond the shape. You gotta like go past the shake, shake zone. Hey, You're like oh, we're going, yeah, up to sixty five is cool. Then shake zone, up to about ninety, and then ninety, go shake. I well, also like a micro shake. Ninety micro shake. Yeah. Hey, Adam Dunn, or I mean, uh, I Dave. lost the wheel last year. What Adam Dunn? Dave. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, Adam. I mean, Dave, I, <clears throat> can you get the oh. done deal on Yo Tips? What the deal? Yeah, of course we can. What oh, the deal? Someone's asking if they should. They saw them on Amazon unless they can get the done deal. They're wondering. It's got to be a done deal beyond Amazon. I, I don't know if the done deal works in Amazon. No, beyond Amazon. No, not at Amazon. No, it but works do, on their website. Uh, I don't okay. want to use Amazon for filming. Go to the yotip.com and order from them there. That's how it works. You don't go to Amazon. 
And Don't then, go to Amazon first. Yeah. Go then, to yotip.com. Yep. Oh, I see someone pulling in. Hoo-hoo, look at that shit. Look Saved that. us. <laughs> Saved us. Sort of. Hey, well, do you want to do the rest of these real quick? He can triple. He's young. Those young guys with the big hair. He can triple down. How much I fucking hate that buzz. That oh, crack a doodle do. Fucking that device. Quack a doodle do. Wow. You loved the quack back in the day. You were the day. You were the quackiest of all. You do. Louder. Yes. No girls complained about it. Dave was the quacker. Us. Yeah. You hit it at three in the morning. It wakes them up. Oh, well, can you turn it up? No. There's no <laughs> stud muffin right here. The hair. Yeah. He's like, at three yeah. in the morning, the girls He's like, I wake the girls up yeah, naked. The girl They're all up. naked and wake, oh, naked and awake. Should we tell the story of what just happened when you, when, uh, what just happened? We shouldn't say that right now. No. No. Of course, no, of course not. You should no. not say that. No. no. Jesus yeah, Christ. definitely don't want to say Why that. Why are you doing that? that? Luckily, Kyle left us. Nobody knows who our cameraman is. They do. Who does? Everybody. You've already you said hair, and he you said no hair. He's bald. That's why I've been making fun of him the whole night. Is it like, Mike no. Denver? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Mike Denver. What? I it's knew Mike it. Denver. It is Mike Denver. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. No. Just it's fine. We're good. We're good. We're good. Dave. I've actually been calling Mike Denver totality. It's like Mike. Kaiser Sosa of the of the story yeah. type. Like that story was oh, with him. Oh, the whole other and section. they can't hear you because you're on the other side of the they, camera. So they can't see me. Cup of glass. We can kind of hear him. <laughs> they totally hear him. They know exactly who he is. They've already triangulated his voice. So voice. don't talk about his, uh, yes, how it wakes women up. The car, yes, that's the downfall of the car thing. You don't want to be a stud like this dude over yeah, here. Yeah, you can't you have can't a car. A stud. Nobody who owns a car to has to wake up your no. women, yeah. your bedfellows. Yeah. I do wish they could turn the, the lights off on this, though. We should, we should complain to Dan. Yeah. Well, Figure maybe they stand on the next one. Figure it out. You just hit on it until it works. Maybe the card has six or whatever. No, no. Forget about that. Stab X is still in version one. They're coming out with version two in, a, in about six, eight months. Yeah, but, version two is going to be ridiculous. I think ridiculous. I need a DABX sponsorship. I've taken 8,000 DABs in the last. Uh, that's a good reason. Eight months. You know what? This is how it is. He, he works one show with us, yeah. and he's stealing our stuff. <laughs> I should be sponsored. You want the list of the people we interviewed? You start your product test <laughs> next week? Uh, that be product test. You're starting a podcast? You're that's product test. Oh, when's your podcast going to be? Product on? test. <laughs> product test. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Speaking no, that's of what we're doing. sponsors. Oh, that's what we're I've been doing that for three and a half years. But not to But we never do anything because we have a thing yeah. called... ADHD. Instead of It's Adam, Excellent. Dave. You run out when it gets to 10,000? Adam, Dave, Adam, <laughs> dementia. Hey. <laughs> there you go. Hey. Why don't you uh, put that ADHD to use and tell us about Green Bros. Green Bros. Green Bros with a Z dot com. Call them. Tell them you want some of their post-harvest equipment. You'll get five percent off your order. We're talking. We're talking big equipment. Yeah, big equipment. Yeah. However, if you're going to get like the rep- to replace Mark, if he's the Ooh. guy coming over your house, Mark's not going, going anywhere. Trim, Mark hasn't gone to anybody's you house can, in years. You can get the harvest yeah. bucket, and you'll get ten percent off. You went to done deal at checkout. That's what it is. Green Bros. What it is? Made in what it is? Nice. Good job, Dave. You did really good on that. Thanks, one. buddy. Hell yeah! I did it all by memory. Is my pre- is my uh, big uh, thing there? My package. Let's know if he's big. Thing is there. <laughs> a big you, package. You have this big package. My package is it over there? But hey, or, I want to tell you guys what I'm excited about next week. You know, at a, Vinny's had his bag. At Apothecary oh, yeah. Farms, Denver and Oklahoma's concentrate focus dispensary, they are having their 420 sale all week long. It starts 415, goes all the way through the 420 weekend, I believe. And uh, it's like a uh, hundred and twenty yeah, bucks for like eight grams and of all their single source live uh, resin. Apothecaryfarms dot com. Yeah, there. Okay. Speaking of uh, next week, guess what that is? Next week's four twenty. Finally happening, guys. We're gonna get to do that. My dream, your dream. Everyone's dream, except for Dave. Dave's going to poop out. I know. Four Dave's hours going to be there bitch. for like two hours. You think he's just doing two shows in a row? He's like, we'll do one show this day. We'll do one show the next day. And you guys can do the other 16 hours on your own. Fuck you. <laughs> oh my gosh, there are like 90 people listening to this 
<laughs> well, well then, then no, okay, you guys, we don't thank you enough. Whoever's listening to us live, it, it, you guys rock. I appreciate it. I don't. I won't even comment on the fact that what the hell are you doing? Home on Those a people live want to hear about how did, DabX, dude. How, how DabX. dot com. Dave, tell us about how you can get the done deal at DabX. Oh yeah, you could be at like a club, you know, you know podcast or anywhere. Oh, right. They could be on top of a fucking. People are bringing their rigs out in Miami now to music. Oh, cool. Not taking them at the door? So people are bringing out? their dab X to the... I don't know what it is. Miami? Like a dab X. I don't know what it is. It's like a sex toy. You're like, I'm bringing a sex toy. I'm going to stick it in my butt. Uh, is that cool? They're like, yeah, sure. Yeah. They ask what it is. It's really loud. It works at the airport, too. No, I, I got the look already. With, I got the look by the lady where they were like, looked at it, and they were like, at me and I'll go, what? What do you think that is? Like, what? They didn't even ask. They didn't Aromatherapy. Yeah. I think the coffee <laughs> angle is the way to go. Coffee grinder? No, just put, like, tell them it's a fucking portable that's, espresso maker. That's exactly it. Coffee in there. <laughs> that's what TSA there, thought it was. Like that. It goes bubble, 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 and it comes out. I drink it. You're yep. Like, oh. And they just put a bunch of coffee pods on the top, and they'll be like, okay, so the coffee looks like coffee. Yes, That's what someone thought it was. That's what TSA thought it was. Honestly, yeah, look, it time. looks just like a perfect amount right, of coffee. We need we need somebody in packaging to make us a fake piece that that says Tab Coffee. Yeah. X. Ozo. Ozo X Coffee. The other thing yeah. you can get away is with make a fake website. One of those aromatherapy wax burner things. <laughs> wax burner thing. You know, yeah, it's like an aromatherapy. No, it's that's what I say. It is it's aromatherapy. Yeah, you can say it's your CPAP uh, adapter, your turbo adapter. Yes. Turbo adapter for my CPAP. Yep. I cook this thing. <laughs> I don't to talk about that. Why? Because of fire? Because we're not talking about it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that? Because of that? Oh, yeah, we're under... Uh, you're under uh, Let's just say I'm not talking about it, and I'm entertaining conversations with counsel. Wow. Wow. I, can you imagine what would have happened? To, I, I, I'm i seriously... I, I don't... I speak very well i get eight and a half hours of sleep i i do very well i don't remember my dreams on occasion i'll wake up you know and i do La- maybe have a- last four nights no you always do last four <laughs> nights Dave. i'm waking up in the middle of the night yeah fucking like doing the jump thing because i'm thinking i'm turning that fucking battery on while i'm on the 10 hour flight from denver to frankfurt and i fucking start a fire on the plane because of that fucking battery you know, so fuck them. You know, yeah, we'll see. Whoa. You heard it here live. Coming. So their 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 lawyer is now listening to the show, and he's saying, "All right, we got him now, kids. He's planning a he's planning to make up some bullshit. No, about no bullshit needs to be made up. Some dream, some dream catcher boy. You're gonna send your dream catcher in the mail. I'll be like, here you go, kid. Yeah. Oh no, nobody's paying me for bad you know, dreams. Of course, head. Of course, head in the bed. No, you're gonna make me talk about it. I want to talk about it. They're already yeah. making changes. What? Oh, yeah. We'll talk about it after. Yeah, well, they're going to call it. What's that going on? Is that, is that Tim over there with the guy? With the, oh, my God. I've been watching over. Tim and Fun. Yeah, no, the, it is. I think it is. It is. Hold on. Not in the green thing. No, no that's the, the other guy. That, that's our whole crew right there. Yeah, that's right the there. guy from Mary Jane. No, no, you want to get the flag? I bet if we can just drive on. Huh? No, we don't want to be anywhere near. No, <laughs> no. no. We have Vinny. We have uh, Vinny. Hey, he's loading up. Hey, what, yeah, see, look, like it's Tim. It is him. Tim, Connoisseur, and uh, Mary Jane. <laughs> it's the mighty three They're ready for party, dude. Oh, yeah, they do. That's what they said. They called it a party. Yeah, the party. Yeah. Free. Everything's free. Can't sell any of them. They Which give one? the mushrooms away. Oh, that's fine. I don't know. Look at that. Chick was selling mushrooms. She did it on camera. Oh. No. We're working on the transfer right now, guys. Just hang Uh-oh. in Don't there. Don't do it. Hang in there. Uh, we're going upside down. Do you guys do you guys want to no, continue? Gonna shout out. You're gonna get busted. Go do you want to hey, do you guys want to continue with the shout outs? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Because then that what way we, we can run the thing and we don't have to think about like. Dabx.com. Go ahead and get the da, 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 oh, da, 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 da
Uh, actually, but it's 420, so they're probably going to have a better deal than the Dunder. Oh, yeah. So the deal right now is you buy it 35%, back, 35% off, and you get a free cleaning kit. Killer deal. Since okay. The cleaning kit is fifty bucks. Well, if there's like a little about, place to put a note, say uh, uh, we love Adam Dunn. Forty four percent. Yeah. There you go. 40, 42.8%. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So like rain man when it comes to that shit. Okay. Like we need to drive that's, a Charlie Babbitt. That's what we call uh, weed time. All right. Weed, weed, weed math. Weed math. Yeah. Oh, 35 percent off side wide at the okay. buy a Dabex go get a free cleaning kit. Yeah, just like you said, you're not a liar. Wait a. Way, way to go, Dave. Dabx.com. 14 or Boulder. Garden Select. Small batch hand selected. Heard they're dropping that one strain. Oh, the, yeah. that one that like doesn't really do too well. That's super Actually, They have grams for like $17 and they have something. What? Bring some next. Oh, sweet. Well, at 14 or they choose uh, Terps over THC and uh, it shows in the product. But All the rosin is delicious and hits the right price point. Oh, uh, it's called flush. No, oh, great. Whoa. Yeah. Um, it's juicy. It's like it's you can it's get the done deal there, flush. right, Dave? Can't hear what you can you get the done deal there, right? You get the done deal there if you place a pre order. Yeah, on the pre order. Get a pre order, get the done deal. 14 or Boulder, do it. 14 or Boulder.com. Do it. Do it. TakingTopsCannabis.com. Check them out. Uh, they got all you kinds there? of things going on. He's not here, no, but uh, check check them out. TakingTopsCannabis.com. Duncan Dabbers on Facebook. Uh, good talk shit. About, talk about crossover um, uh, sponsor shit. Can't yeah. believe One Uber how much he looks like this Cuban's guy. I have- yeah, huh? Yeah. That's he? crazy. Yeah, he does. Driving that, driving that cyber truck, like exactly and it's, what he was, and it's actually you know, weird funny. because sure. that's the next uh, shout out is uh, Stunenglass dot ah. com, and uh, Stunenglass and, and taking shots. I mean, it's the marriage thing. Right? Right, guy exactly. is so good. Cool. He looks just, just like him. <laughs> yeah, man. Crazy. It's like it's beyond crazy because he's like got the same vibe and everything, and you know he'd wear one of those. Oh yeah, the like heartbeat. in a heartbeat, he'd be like, I can wear a. Bones. What? Well, yes. I think that guy made his bones with Stunden glass by making that thing first. Mm. Like he had it, like just like you did the leaf blower. Oh, gotcha. And he did that. Yeah. Let's do this. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Totally. Literally. I got you. You can literally run with it. What? It, it, it's definitely not gonna really be a cool thing when you really do do it, but. But it's good when you make somebody do it like Dave, like you make Dave wear them. <laughs> like, yeah, next show, Dave. Dave just left your bedroom right there. She's, uh, like, oh, she's like, I'm out, I'm out of here. You're going to keep sitting on that thing. Yeah, he's going to keep sucking up the car. Yeah, he's going to be off, yeah. You know, you know, That's it. You fucked up. Oh, he's going to Don't say hair. Now they know he really has hair. He said he was bald. Are you still talking about student glass? No, we love, but we do love it, though. Oh, uh, okay. Studentglass.com. No, we, we got one minute. Yeah. Hey, Dave, <laughs> whoredetectdirect.com. Whoredetectdirect.com. You'll get 5% off your big ticket. What's going on? Oh, you can't hear him. Oh, what? Whatever. Ooh. Call him. Ooh. Call him. Make a deal. You'll get uh, Hordetec. Brushes, hordetechdirect.com. <laughs> Terpwipes.com slash done deal. Get the subscription. You need them, especially if you get a dab X. It's the only thing you're going to need to clean that thing out. Yeah. Bio365.com. Get a forklift because these guys will send you a, fall- a pallet. Uh, they have bio cocoa, bio light, bio blend, bio all. They will Sending you like a mix you up. Pallet. What is that? Giant penis? Is that? Sending you a giant penis? Sending a They'll penis. send you a whole pallet, dude. I'm telling phallic, you. Phallic? Wow. Okay. You said phallet. You, you said, said phallet. We Anyways. We all heard it. Hit up Tim at bio365.com and let him know you heard it on the Adam Dunn Show. They're going to hook you up and make sure that you and like yep. their soil. Do it. We should put a camera on these guys. They're going to stand at the corner. Numnutsco.com. <laughs> <laughs> 
THC and CBD it's infused nut butters. You can get the CBD shipped straight to your door. Yeah. Num nut CBD infused cinnamon almond butter, the infused peanut butter, and the pet CBD infused peanut butter. Click on Find Our Nuts in the corner, and you can find the THC thousand milligram tubs here in Colorado. Numnutsco.com. You're a tub. No, you're a tub. Breckenridge Organic Therapy at breckorganotherapy.com. You can get the done deal there. While you're there, shout it out. Let everyone know uh, uh, while you're out there. Uh, I don't know. Ski is still skiing is not going on right now. Probably nah. Whatever. Anyways, so <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I want skiing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't even charge me. Don't so Anyways, breckorganotherapy.com. Sunscape oh, LED.com. Oh. All right, Vinny, start it up. Uh oh. We're getting ready. Hey, you got two more re- new two more. Sunscape LED. Do it. Sunscape oh. LED, he's down in Florida with our boy Lopez. Woo! Look he's opening up his phone. He's opening his phone. He's got mushrooms and he's like, ah, I got these. I got these. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're we're, we're doing <laughs> It's like a private investigation. <laughs> We're watching from afar. All right, shoot the moon. No, but Sunscape. We had we, we had uh, all the people to basketball. We had we had Mateo. Half we had the, the our our local sales. Mm-hmm. You'll see him in the past. You're going to see. He, we, we had him in the past, and you're going to see him in the future. On that field. Yeah, like we're like time traveling on the show. Time traveling. So everything you see from uh, this point on already happened. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Hold recording. on. Go hold, on. What? hold on. Hold uh, on. JeromeBaker.com. Oh, those guys. Yeah. We love Jerome Baker. Everyone loves Jerome Baker. Jerome Baker. Actually, did you see that the whole shakedown speech that's going on? No. Yeah, I sent you the link. Oh. You got fucking miracle tickets from Kip, and you're gonna go there. I got what? Yeah, she's got tickets for it and everything. I told you, get the fuck out of here. GTFO. Oh, that miracle ticket. And we're doing shakedowns. When are we doing it? I don't know. It's going on for like weeks and a half. There we go. So anyway, <clears throat> Jerome Baker will be there too. Sweet. Live glass blowing in the shakedown street. So it's going to be out of control. Whoa. Oh, you get a limp noodle now. Uh, noodle went limp. He went off. Uh-oh. Oh, Chicken. boy. Limp noodle. Oh, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> not only did his cart to buzz, he went off straight noodle. Is it not on anymore? Or what's going on? Quack, oh, quack. Now you're on camera. None of my chicks like me. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, it's going downhill. It's going red. The gimbal gave out. Hey, I need uh, a Patreon. Uh, hold on. JeromeBaker.com. April at SeedsHereNow.com is a cornucopia of cannabis cultivation starring cookies, flavors, and compound genetic strains, both 20% off. We're launching the April Fool's Bang. No jokes, just awesome deals and a special gift with every order. Roll up your sleeves for National Guardian Week. Gardening week with a exclusive offer that offer that's too p- good to pass up. Our 420 extravaganza brings the highest quality at the lowest prices on Earth Day. We're giving back Oops. with discounts and free shipping on all orders. April's pack, <laughs> April's packed with deals, tips, and community ready to share their cultivation stories. Whether you're greening your thumb or an expert grower, <laughs> seeds here now is your destination for a flourishing garden this spring. Seedsherenow.com. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Right, there you go. You're kind of there. You're kind of there. Will you, will will you please we're off. start? What happened? And then uh, AdamDunshow.com. Go to show merch and uh, check out the show merch there. We got all kinds of designs. And uh, you're going to love it. And uh, I guess we're going to start this uh, show. So we're just going to show the first interview, and then we're going to move on to Patreon. Uh, www.patreon.com uh, slash Adam Dunshow. Well, we're just going to leave it on the whole time? Let's go free Patreon for because we're not going to okay. do that. Yeah, no, don't go to Patreon. Yeah. Well, dude, free you guys free you guys Patreon. change every 20 fucking minutes. All right. All right. So, no Patreon. <laughs> well, you know, I was trying to be on this Patreon. No Patreon. Okay. Free Patreon. This is uh, this is going to be like a two, two and almost three hour treat here. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Here we go. It's a three hour treat. Thank you, Vinny, for making it back on time. Look at that. This is very professional. All right. Well, you guys can hang around as long as you want. I'm going to start the video. Go ahead and say your shout-outs and all that if you want. Oh, since, Love you, since everybody. You know, come, come here tomorrow. 
since we know that you're going to be stuck at so high for the next three and a half hours. Yeah, someone come dab me out. You guys should go buy some barbecue. Yeah. Mark is going to be pissed <laughs> off and bored. Yeah. Why'd you guys record three hours of shit? Jesus. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm just Good messing stuff. with you guys. This is going to be awesome. It got All better right. and better. It, it got better and better. Oh, I bet. I'm ex- I'm excited. All right, here we go. All right, let's yeah, do it. Right, right, right. We are live. Look at you not hanging around, everybody. Uh, I've got Tate Dooley coming through. I've got Summer Star lined up. We've got Yao from 8,000 Kids. Apparently, it has been very good here. I've just talked to a few people, and they said they did a lot of sales right out of the gate when, oh, yeah. when it opened up here. So, amazingly, it doesn't look like it's super busy, but it is a little bit spread out. Like, last year was much smaller. I'm glad to see that it's actually jumping up a little bit. I just I just saw Doss in the back. I saw him too. Did you see him? Did yeah. you, go, you go listen? I gave it away. Yeah, you gave it to him. Oh, good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. we got all the hemsters yeah. are rolling yeah. around. I screamed. He screamed right away. Like, as he came out, he started screaming. He was like, yeah. He was like, <laughs> I was ice like, oh, shit. He's, ice cream, red rocks. He got, he got the ice cream mode going quickly. I see the bit rate looks really bad on the TV. Is that just because... Like, it could other, be me. Huh? <laughs> could be the computer. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's recording. It's kind of cool. It's like I'm watching myself in, in delay. In time. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's great. It's very <laughs> hella confusing. Makes me feel like, oh, yeah, you look like you're all over the place, kid. Oh, there's Elliot that I can't remember his last name. No, no. There. You know who I'm talking about. I think so. Jared Polis is right hand man right there. He's, okay. he's the guy that got that guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the guy that brought it together. Yeah. He's, he's looking at some nice bikes now. So is your kid. I know. <laughs> he's all over those electric bikes. Well, this one thing about these shows is there's always something interesting because it's never as you know at the weed things. It's like it's all about the weed. All about weed. You know, here I'm like walking around going, "Where's all the weed?" No weed. Come on, man. I think I got all the weed. I think you do. I do. There's a girl up there. She's got gummies, though. Oh, shit. CBD gummies. I CBD. Have. No, she said THC. What? Yeah. THC is in the Jeez. building. Anyway, so we uh, are looking at the 10th year. This is the 10th year. And no I think way. When this started, it started in a bar, didn't it? In, in Boulder or something like that? Yeah, that's how it, that very first one. Actually, we have to, that's the other guy we need to get is we need to get Morris in the house. Yeah. So we will get Morris Beagle and... Uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're start, and I'm sure a few more will pop out. I'm going to have to send Nick on a mission besides the electric motorcycles because that seems to be uh, obsessing him right now. Yeah, he's done. It's also weird because I don't know what to fucking do. I can't do dabs now. Like Normally it's just like, and do a dab. <laughs> no, and do a dab. And do a dab. But uh, in general, it's, uh, it's not too bad. So, I go, oh, guess who's here too? I haven't gone. <laughs> Who? Tim. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you see him right there. He's right there. Fungi Farms is in the oh, house. Oh, no, no. Yes, I did. Oh, no, no. Yes, you yes, did. I did see yes, I yes. did. Total avoidance. <laughs> total eclipse of the heart. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know all about that. That's right. Um, Dave's on his way. So we can, uh, can do a little, we could do a little pre, we could do a little pre-show, pre-show, and then uh, we could even do the intro. Could we? And then that way we can, we can get we can come check in after the fact, and you know, huh? That's an impossibility too, right? We can get well, a lot done. We can get a, we can get at least an hour. Can get at least an hour. I don't know. I'll I know. get it to Mark. We somehow. can get most of the show. We can get most of the show done. I can just I'm call it. Then I can. Yeah, of course. Cheating. <laughs> I hope so. Someone's got to do it. I got my cheat stick here, right here. Yeah. Cheat stick. Cheat, cheat stick. Cheat stick, right here in the house. Got to have. I it. think because we're doing a podcast, we can get away with it. It's like Snoop Dogg. So yeah. you got to do, do this, you got to do that. Oh, um, the hidden? <laughs> and just let like, clouds roll out of your head like it's happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> it looks like my head's on fire from the back here. <laughs> what the heck? Way up, we're cheating over here. We're cheating. Live on the air. <laughs> Breaking the rules. Oh. Nice e bikes. Got the security <laughs> checking us out. He's like doing a podcast. So I was like, yeah, he yeah. goes, do what you need to do. Like, that's, nice. that's well, you know what we need. Do, do you know the Adam Dunn show? And be like, no. Be like, no. Well, this is what we need. We need good internet, which you have. Amazingly, we could go. You have amazingly good internet. It is crazy. Um, <laughs> I know, right? The one time where we're like, hey, you know what? Free internet. And we're kind of over here, and no one's really bothering us, and I think we can no. get away with it. Just can't put the dab rig on the table. That's all. You couldn't put the dab X up. I think that would that would draw if, too much attention. If it wasn't too windy, we could go out there. 
Yeah, no, it's too it's windy. Too windy. It's too windy. Yeah. It's too windy, and on top of that, I just I don't think that changes the matter. I don't think. No. <laughs> I don't think it's like. No. <laughs> and now you can have seven dab axes on the table, and everybody just <laughs> come on out. down. Come to on the Adam down Dunn to show. Weed Town. Yeah, we got the food cart and the weed cart. And one thing I did do is I brought fucking fire, dude. I was going through my. Oh my god. It's like I got some that motor breath this t- this you round. You want to do a contest for 420? How's this? I don't know. Have br- everybody bring in their wares and have a little standoff. Uh, if they for want 420. to. Anytime you guys want to bring. Anybody is in Denver area and you got good weed and you want to bring it to the studio and put it up against whatever we got. And Garrett, Solo wants to have a 420 do, contest. Do it. Well, here's the thing. 420 is the when we're finishing our 24 hour show, so yeah. we have to be realistic about where, <laughs> where and what we're going to plan on doing. Like I already scratched the idea of doing any kind of market after because right. what we can do is have a couple people set up if they want to. That's yeah. no problem. Yeah, no problem. But we're not we're not no. advocating like a large bar trip. We should do a bar trip town the, the week after though. I think we that's should. when um, Jane wants to do her show. So that would work. That's perfect. That's perfect. There you go. Yeah. Dairy propane Jane. Is she coming through today? Uh uh-uh. uh. No propanes. Well, you would think she's up here. You know, no, and she's in the spread. I thought she's in the Oh, south. yeah, she's south. She is south. That's the old no co. That's the old no co. That, that was the thing <laughs> about last year, which was funny because no co was in SoCo. <laughs> so yeah, it didn't make so any sense, you know what I mean? Know. And now we're back in no co, and it makes a lot more sense. You're like, okay. And I think that's why people did a lot of sales already early, too, because it's, I think you're closer to Boulder. People have a little bit more expendable income, and you're also surrounded by farms here. So the combination of oh, yeah. like people with money and people with oh. farms who appreciate giving back to the whole thing, to the to the That's, cause. There's a lot of that going on. You know. Um, so let's see if we can get Mr. Tate. You know what you want for these hills coming up here? Oh, you know. So we have a, <laughs> a Tesla. That? Huh? This Tesla just flew those hills all the way here. Just <laughs> what Tesla? This guy in a Tesla passed us all coming up the hill. Just oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Security. Security, 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 security. security. Hide, hide the rig. Hide the rig. Hide the rig. He's like the total stoner, too. That's the best part. Like the security. Yeah, he ain't he, doing he, That shit. guy. But the problem is when they're when they're like that, though, they can, like, they're like us. Like, yeah. you can't be sneaking around behind our backs. We'll be like, no. we know everything. <laughs> <laughs> we know every little every little secret, oh, every weasel way to get into shows. Yeah, I just walked in. We have a free booth here, actually, too. This is, once again, Adam Dunn Show, free booth. Free booth Fridays. Free booth Friday. <laughs> so if, you, uh, if, you are come, if you're in Colorado and you want to come check out the Hemp Expo, we have, uh, we have seeds. We have a whole bunch of cool seeds. We've got Requiem seeds. We've got... Duke Diamond Seeds, we've got Homegrown Natural Wonder Seeds, we've got Prometheus Seeds, obviously My Seeds. Ooh, now we're talking. So, you know, we haven't even cracked them out, but we'll, we will be the only seed distributors here, I think. I can see that happening. I can, yeah, I can see that. So so the plan is... To no, there's some beans down there. Is there? There's some, yeah. Okay. Or is it there? There? Beans? One of their, yeah. Beans, beans. Yeah, hemp beans. Okay. Feminized. It's fine. Ours are hemp. Everything's hemp until it's grown. That's the one thing that's like, you know, it's, it's, thank you, Farm Bill. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Farm Bill. Yeah. 2018. We got, we got beans. So beans are now 100% kosher. Um, so we got, uh, let's see, let me find Tate and see what we got going on here. Marky Mark. I'm trying to keep it as a one shotter for you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yeah, we got this. I'm trying not to make this into like a bunch of dead air. <laughs> done. I can always hit stop and hit record again. No, We're I know. Good. I know. I know. I know. But I think, uh, I think so. Katie's coming up. I Almost believe. went live. We got Katie. We got uh, confuse everybody. I'll go live. Go live and confuse oh, everybody. <laughs> that could be. No, I'm telling you. We could do it. Yeah, it, it would go, and it would be an episode, and then it would stop, and then we would start again. There would just be like no sort of intro. It would just be like, oh, here we are. Yeah. Well, we might have to do. I don't know. It's a tough call. It's tough. one button. It's one button away. Okay. We're only one button away. <laughs> so if you. Oh, uh, I'd, I would have to switch up some stuff. Yeah. It would take us. I would have to stop. Oh, okay. This would go to uh, KTI's Mixcloud. Oh, We'd good old KTI. <laughs> or MTI's. Oh, I was Excuse gonna say. Me. I was gonna say. Wow, KTI still got a cloud. I'm looking at the sticker. That's the problem. <laughs> You're thinking, you're looking, you're doing a Kaiser Soza. Uh, yeah, you're, you're I got pulling, the KTI sticker. <laughs> you're, pulling, you're pulling a Kaiser Soza <laughs> on yourself. And I'm thinking the MTI. That's right. Well, you know, the one thing that is uh, funny is. There's so many unknowns, and last night I uh, was like, oh, 
<laughs> got to prepare. Preparing for the unknown is actually really hard. It's like it's it's much easier when you, when when there's a lot of knowns. But there was a one known, which was we knew we had a free booth, which we never do. Normally we just kind of peruse the area looking yeah. for. Uh, a free booth. This time, not only did we have a free booth, but Vinny decided that he, we didn't want to be in that booth, that we'd be over here, which makes a lot more sense because it would have been too loud. And we're people this, walking by. Oh, yeah. No, it would have been too much. This is way cooler. Way cooler. Plus, it's like made for us. It is. <laughs> I saw the power. I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. That's it. Once and again, a backdrop. I was like, "Oh, we got." And, and, and we found some push pins. I mean, come on, guys. Come this on. is this is the uh, scrappiest, scrappiest <laughs> podcast you've ever. You know, if you want to, if you need <laughs> guys who can just roll in with like a fork and a, and, a, and, and some wires, and some wires, like total MacGyver, the MacGyver show. Yeah, total once again, once again, MacGyver. So um, let me reach out. Got my chair desk. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what's going on. Got a monitor. Come. Nobody's even phased by it either. No, they don't care about us. No, no one cares <laughs> not, about us. Not at all. <laughs> no one cares about us. What are those guys doing? Oh, let's go outside. No one cares. So yeah, okay. So we have to get back on to oh. what? If we were live and the Zoom call was going, we could wander around. But you can do that later. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, I could yeah, just yeah. go on to the Zoom and yeah, cruise yeah, around because now yeah. we know the internet's good. Oh yeah, you got. And I have and I have uh, my thingy majigger with me. Okay. And I have also my extra ex- external mics. So. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so I think we can do that. Yeah, I think we can go live. Not that there's a lot. I mean, this is way more comfortable just sitting around, not <laughs> not walking around, not trying to do anything we, crazy. That's way easier. We could have gone easier. and saw dogs. You can come. You want to come on the show? You want to come live? Come on, sit over here. Get over here. We need put some, some headphones on. I, can you put headphones on? I don't even know if the headphones are going to make it. I don't even, they're going to get buried in. Like, I thought I had a fro. I didn't even learn But that. this, it like, doesn't like, even look. Like, when my hair gets a little bit longer, like I go. Like, on a green screen, that wouldn't even look real. Yeah. He's got, like, that That ain't real. Yeah. Is that a Russian hat? Like, what is going on here? And the funny part, though, is I sent you that photo of me from back in the day, right? You see, I have the same potential in there somewhere if I let it do it at the right time because it does get curly. But, damn. Welcome to the show, Blake. Blake. Thanks. Blake Angle, how you doing? Good. 100% real hair. I've been getting asked all the time. Are you? Do people tug on it? Well, I went to a Highlands closing party in Aspen, and everyone was in costumes, so I wore no costume. Oh, that's pretty I just cool. walked around with my hair. Yeah. That's 25 it. people Did you try to touch my hair. Did you have a suit on? I just or wore a normal ski outfit, like no oh. costume at all, and everybody else was in costumes. Right. So they thought, and they the hair thought was you were the ETF guy. So you came as a skier, as a weird skier, yeah. as a, I am a, I am a Bulgarian skier. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. So uh, Blake's here to help, not only to help, but uh, let's let's talk about your let's talk about your technology because it's one of those like it's not just it's not just cannabis related. It's all it's 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 uh, I guess it would be health. Is it what, what do you classify it under health? Uh, it's an ecological balancing system. There we go. Ecological balancing system using water. Well, it's using probiotics to spend it in water. Gotcha. So okay. It's so called t- Better Air. Okay, Better Air. And it's, um, so where is this based out of? The technology was developed in Israel, and it's currently manufactured in Israel. Um, the fluid that goes in it is uh, called Bacillus SPP. It's a blend of envirobiotics that are suspended in a water solution. So it's totally organic. Mm-hmm. They live off of oxygen. They're aerobic. So if you breathe them in, it's just like breathing in a little bit of soil or dirt. That's what they're made from. Well, yeah, and that's uh, probably good for you in the long run. I'm sure it's one of those things where it's like you know, that is what's missing right now is that enough kids, you know, there's not enough kids getting into dirt. They're like, I have no problem getting into dirt. I've just I've literally, like, the other day I took a shower after transplanting, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? It was like, it was like mud coming down yeah. on me because it was just brown. Oh, I was dusted out bad. Good it was brown. just like I was, like, I was doing massive transplanting, and uh, it was also like <laughs> I was taking out the roots, so I was shaking them out. So anyway, the, uh, but the unit that I saw from you was like, is it, that's like the smallest one, I guess, I'm assuming, the, the sort of portable one that you showed? I, I brought a uh, portable one in August yeah, to the to show, the, right. and that unit is actually our larger size. It hooks up directly to the HVAC system, oh, really? which that, is the best way to disperse this. I'm selling this to homes and offices in Florida because there's mold everywhere, and that's how you get into cannabis. There's mold and mildew and a lot of indoor grows. 
So, so that little, so that small unit is actually a big unit, considering like, like there's not, it's not like an, there's not an industrial sized one or something. Or? There's one that's just a little bit larger. We can either service um, up to twelve thousand square feet on an air handler, or even up to uh, eighteen thousand to twenty five thousand square feet. Currently, I just installed one on a twenty four ton. Okay, uh, well, unit out yeah. in Oklahoma. So if you have the right system already in place, then it's pretty easy. It's just it's just a matter. That, so obviously quite potent. It sounds like. Yes. So the amount of probiotics that are dispersed is like a 500 milliliter bottle can last one to six months. So they're just they're dispersing microscopic amounts every 20 to 70 minutes, and then it lives on the air currents, floats for three to four hours, and then lands on every surface and object. And they eat mold spores. Uh, they eat the food that dust mites feed off of, like human skin cells or pet dander. Mm, yummy. So all that good stuff. Um, but we've seen improvements on powdery mildew, uh, mold botrytis specifically, um, butt rot, that type of stuff. They've done studies, you know. And so um, are they using them in dry rooms too at all? or? Um, yes, I've had it used in a, in a dry and curing room out in Michigan. Um, I know Kyle's tested it a Is bunch that, of times. Because that, that seems like that'd be the, the ultimate vector right there you know the spot you'd want to cut it off at because in the growing phases obviously too it's it's important but if it does slip through you know things do make it through and, and that's the thing is like with with any kind of mold or it's like when you see it it's really bad like that's when it's really bad you know what i mean when you because there's a whole bunch it's too of, late there's many phases before that like if you got down there with a the microscope started looking you'd be like, oh shit look at here's some this is about to go you know what i mean and then that's when it might be the most effective right i'd imagine we actually want it in the entire process so even in veg mm -hmm. um, oh yeah no for sure in veg i mean I, that's where i that's where uh, i've been told the highest risk is is almost early on once you have a really healthy plant it's yeah. harder to mess it up it's like very similar to just all animals and <laughs> humans and anything it's like the first is the heart like if you get past a certain phase then you're good you know what i mean but there is that like zone where it just takes the smallest amount of to 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 affect it you know so um yeah no veg is uh, your mother plants and your clones are literally the most important part of your program that like doesn't i mean it does matter obviously everywhere down the line but you shouldn't have a problem if you enter into it with good healthy plants you know that's that's the key and the, our, our idea is that if you can spray better air through your whole environment it keeps it healthy so then there's no need to come in with products like xerotol that are fungicides and cancer causing when you smoke them and stuff like that so it's really just trying to make an organic or as organic as possible product yeah for sure well that's that is going to be the the separation between you know qualities is like if especially aftermarket like it's like when they use uh, glyphosate right it's crazy because like they use it in grow when they're growing the plants and it's obviously carcinogenic and cancer causing already but then the, the worst part about it is that they spray the it's like part of the system to spray after harvest right so it's like when you have like you like there's no way for that to break down you know what i mean so it's like that is crazy and all that product so for instance nowadays if you're eating any wheat and it's not organic you are definitely eating glyphosate like 100 percent. like that's just and vital wheat gluten and that type of stuff is in there it's like your body can't break it down essentially i mean, I mean gluten i think isn't the problem it's it's the it's the glyphosate that's the thing that, so the the, the it's the sugar it's like there's, there's sugars in the in there that well are if like you go to your natural like what, what's it really interesting is americans will go to europe like especially like spanibus right and they'll eat like they'll be over here and they'll eat like one piece of bread and their whole Crohn's will flare up and they'll be like oh doubled over dying right and then they'll go to Europe they eat like all the bread and they're like hey this is I have I don't have any problems with it it's like yeah because they're not spraying glyphosate it's like literally that is the that is the thing that's the problem it's you know because we got to imagine we've been eating wheat for thousands of years and so it's not like you know it's, it's like autism right now it's like the classic connection where you're like okay so we have a 50 fold increase so there's something's happening you know what i mean and when it was with the glyphosate it's so obvious because what what, it, what that stuff does which is also really crazy is like so the 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 point of attack on in the insects is that there is in their gut right so glyphosate goes into their gut and creates little tiny pinholes in their gut which then leaks their intestines basically leaks their insides out right 
leaky gut syndrome is a number, it's like one of the most common things in humans, right? Like in the population right now in America, right? Because everybody's got, like if you see somebody like really, not just, not just putting on weight, but it's like that, it's, a, it's around the waist and it's in, that, it's in the gut, right? And so that's because it's creating these pinholes in our guts, doing the exact same thing that it's supposed to do to the bugs. And this is the even crazier part is, so glyphosate got such a bad rap that they were like, hey, we gotta like rebrand this stuff. So they branded it. God, I can't remember the name of it now. There's a new branding, it's like America, something with America in it to make it even more like ridiculous. Like, um, but they basically uh, rebranded it. And they created, it's not exactly glyphosate, but what it does is it activates the door, it activates the, the gene that's been put in there to, cre- to create its own glyphosate. So you became, so you have a glyphosate factory in your belly that's now producing it on its own. That's the crazy. That sounds terrible. So, so you just have people like Dave's twin. I know. I saw that. <laughs> I, uh, I saw that. We might have to get him on the show just, 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 just for the suit. For the suit, exactly. Uh, but it, yeah, so it's pretty scary if you think about it. Like you know, it's like we haven't we've released all sorts of crazy shit into the system here that like we don't think about the downstream implications. It's like okay, so if you make something that's designed to do a specific thing to a bug, but then you don't ever take into consideration that it might actually be doing it to you, to the people, and then when you do figure it out, it's so far down the road. Because when I moved to Amsterdam, it was in 1989, right? And 1991 in America is when they release the beast they were like oh gmos no problem let's do this you know what i mean and then they and then i watched my friends just age rapidly and you know what i mean and mish, everybody like lost their hair and got fat and it was like oh it's, just, it's the diet you know what i mean and i come back home and they'd be like oh you look the same and i'm like yeah because again europe doesn't have all this fucking gmo bullshit you know so. and, and i wonder that when people say they have bad experiences with cannabis um a lot of that could in my mind could be attributed to smoking this low quality cannabis that's sprayed with things like zero tall that are meant for lettuce and they're not washed off properly out off the plant and you're smoking cancer causing uh things and you get a headache even so that's what i've noticed from low quality um grass you actually get a headache and you get a bad effect he said grass it ruins the entire effect hey grass over here ask grass and cash nobody rides free around here um no, it's totally no, hundred percent. That's that's usually the case. It's like um, it's it's not. It's you know we we've uh, depleted a lot of our nutrients in the soil here. We've done all this like we've done everything we can do to fucking make it like so we have non-nutritious food to begin with. So it's you really have to pay attention to all that stuff. So anything to help the process is uh, is welcome, you know. So so how long has that company been around? The company's been around for over a decade. Um, a lot of time was spent on development of the probiotic fluid, which is a really important part. And then the last few years, we've been um, dialing in the dispersion systems. The through. key is to get it dispersed at one micron in size, which is 100 times thinner than, it one, than a single strand of human hair, so that these probiotics float on air currents. Sure. Um, and that's why it's different. It's a constant attack to balance the environment. It's not really an attack, it's a balancer. So we're trying to create an 80-20 blend of good bacteria to bad bacteria, similar to what's found outside. Because the light and dark cycle, uh, cool, warm, wet, dry, that regulates the uh, probiotics in nature. So we're bringing in those probiotics to the indoor environment. No, that's killer. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of times you want to f- basically... Uh, take up the real estate that the other bacteria or any other pathogens want to to you know use and so that's that's how a lot of a lot of the best systems work is just like hey you know what if we just bring in all these beneficials and they take up all the area then there's no room for these guys to come in and that's you know whereas like sometimes people over like they'll sterilize so hard it's just the same as people right like you see people who are the most sick people are the people who spray their house constantly with bleach to fucking keep it sterile because they're they, they have no resistance at that point you know what i mean they haven't whereas if you yeah, let it get a little grimy you know what i mean you're probably building up your tolerance and your your, your resistance every time you know what i mean it's just like exposure to bacteria is a good thing usually it's not a bad thing it's actually how your yes, system it can help sleep as well well this is how your system learns right like you have a internal 
system which basically is constantly learning and adjusting and knocking out old shit and building new stuff and if you live in a completely sterile atmosphere you are going to end up like when when something does come you have zero resistance to it because your body's like whoa what the fuck's going on whereas if you're constantly being bombarded with different uh you know with different kind of uh uh, bacteria like it's like when you travel you travel a lot you you might get sick but now your body's smarter because of that you know what i mean like it almost happens almost there's there certain places you go and of course you're going to get sick because you want to get a little sick though like it's like 20 yeah. percent sick 80 <laughs> percent healthy yeah, yeah you don't want to go the ideal for yeah. the body you don't want to be 99 yeah, yeah. percent. it's like taking yeah. antibiotics every day well, and yeah, when you're sick like you have no antibiotic. resistance e exactly exactly no you definitely don't want to deal want to have a massive dose of anything but a good slight dose works and that's what you know more that give, brings us full circle back to the the dirt you know playing in the dirt touching the dirt is always good for you rather you know it's like uh it, it's it's how we feel you know, again it's how we it's because your feet you are know. actually the biggest pores in your body they absorb natural probiotics so that's why for your body you need yogurt or a probiotic supplement so that your gut biome is regulated so it's really the same idea for the environment it's way healthier to live outside and walk around barefoot but this is yeah. a thousand years ago before we sprayed ddt and all this crap in the soil no my wife my wife uh so cc and nick they do barefoot walk every single day actually i'm gonna have to get on nick's case because i think since it's, oh no she he actually does they pretty much in the snow it doesn't matter every day every day for the, like so the last I think almost a year now. Yeah, maybe it's about 10 months, 11 months, but that's their thing is every day a barefoot walk around the property. But you have a healthy property. You exactly. You can do no. that around like, no, no, the middle sure. of New York City. You'd get, you know, yeah. you'd be stepping you have at least, at least Hep C. Like, I mean, you start with at least a minimum of Hep C, work your way up. You might get a throw a little, throw a little HIV in there once in a while. Who knows? That'd yeah, be horrible. Um, <laughs> not to mention, well, well, the funny thing is, is like New York's actually, even though New York's always been grimy, these other cities have gotten so much more grimy yeah. that New York doesn't feel so grimy anymore. It's like, yeah, New York's just kind of like stayed where it is. It's not like it's gotten worse, I don't think. Because I don't, what's the homeless situation like there? Because well, it's like. There's a migrant situation where now there's these like migrant camps oh, yeah, on like true. Randall's Island where I used to play soccer. It's a massive encampment. Uh -huh. And there's a whole business of people selling hot chocolates and coffees and pre rolled joints through the fence. <laughs> wow. There you go. There's a, there's a system. I mean, New York's fucked, right? I mean, New York is. Is like it's always been uh, a little bit of a, you know, it has the the weakness of of being, you know, maybe like three days. Like, what well, depends where you're talking about? Like, New York is as a whole, but like Manhattan is is, you know, when when the shit goes down there, you're fucked. You got three days. You know what I mean? To like, now what do we do? Start cannibalizing each other or what? Cause There's a two day water supply, I think, in yeah. the reservoir, and right? that's it. No, it's that. Yeah, it's in these days you don't really want to be in those high volume places as much you know it's definitely uh, it's nice to be that that is the one nice part about being out in when in a place that you can go out and barefoot walk every day because and there's good water and air here yeah i think water is the next most important thing so w when i go into a home i try to sell them a better air and then i sell them a water system even though i'm not in the water business because if you're in a place like florida yeah you can't that's recycled sewage water it's crazy drinking, it's crazy showering in it yeah it's i mean here obviously it's one of those things as i drive into town I always look at the mountains and think like, okay, at least we got that. You know what I mean? Like, and there's a year, like right now it's not bad, right? The pack looked pretty good. What do you think, Vinny? Snowpack to this year? Vin, not listening. There's still a 60 inch base up in Aspen. Right. So I think yeah. it, it, that's, it's, it's, it's interesting to be here in Colorado because you know you're at the sort of source and you can kind of figure out what's happening. Like if we have a bad year, we'll know everyone else is having a bad year, even worse because... They're all 50 downstream. million people are downstream on the water supply. Yes. Yeah. 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 It is. It is definitely um, a bonus here. When I first came, I was in, um, I was up in Golden and it was weird because they pumped the water from like pretty far away. Like it was like 90 miles away or something like that. And you were like, kind of like, really? Like did seem, and it was the most expensive water I've ever had. Like it was crazy. I was like paying through the nose. And it wasn't even that. It was okay, but I was expecting a lot more because I just moved to Colorado. So I was like, oh, Colorado water, it's going to be the best. It's like, oh, this is kind of, eh. But now where I live uh, is amazing because that's the one reason that we moved in was we, we, we got there and we the, the owner of the property, or a long story, the guy who called himself the owner of the property, wasn't really the owner, uh, was like saying, he goes, hey, 
you guys been up to the spring yet? And I'm like, what? What spring, you know? And he goes and he shows me up where it's at. And so on this, so on the property that I have at the very top, like literally at the top, I mean, there's maybe about 10 feet above it, but pretty much the top of the property, height wise, like altitude wise, is a bubbling spring that comes from the ground, right? And it's like been encased um, by the US military that came through in 1949 with the Army Corps engineers and basically went down this entire, like, if you look at a map or if you're looking, you know, look, looking from above, you kind of see that I'm in this, like, is the Black Forest in Southern Colorado. And I'm like right on the edge of that. And so there's like this, you can see the, you can kind of just, oh, that must be water underneath it. So it's like we have the, that spring p- bubbling up and it feeds uh, like our well, like we have an artisanal well that's fed through sandstone. So it's all sandstone around us. So you can imagine the water comes up through the sandstone which is like perfect filter. And it gets negative ions and stuff like that, I would imagine. And it, well, it's, it's like it comes out of the tap like 60 ppm, but it's all pretty much like minerals, you know what I mean? It's, it's not a bad, like, like... 60 is similar to like Poland Spring, I think it's 45 yeah. parts per million, and like Evian's 300. Right, so it's, I mean, 60 is totally acceptable yeah. compared to like out of the fucking tap. And it's like 7.8 pH. I'm like, dude couldn't get better almost it's like it's right on point i think know? that affects the plants i mean having tasted stuff all over the country yeah. i think stuff from southern colorado especially san luis valley where you have uh, limestone filtered aquifers and stuff like the sandstone where where you are makes a difference in how the plants taste and how the plants are i mean and it's hard it's hard to measure for sure like an x factor it, it's such a big thing though it's like especially when i when i when people are come back in a minute we'll come back in a minute we'll do a little chat i want to see your recovery i need to talk <laughs> we need to talk over here no but Brilliant. it's like it is the it is the dividing factor like there's nothing else you can because if you're using ro water right so the thing is like i was all about it dude when i first moved when i first moved to holland i was like the hydro kid right i was like synthetic everything give me give me everything synthetic you got like i didn't give it i, I was like uh, totally on the camp of like plants don't know the difference they just fucking get ding 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 they're getting the right in oh they get the good inputs they're gonna and it, it visually yeah but not sustainable wise and then i was like our water because holland's water is like it's pretty bad but it's not it's it, i don't know i would say it's like a six out of ten. Maybe. You're at sea level. It can't be very good with well, all the dikes. Well, we're and under levees. sea. We're under Got sea it. level. Yeah. We're under sea level. But they're such a water country. You know what I mean? That they understand. They understand water better than almost anybody, right? So they did a pretty good job of like delivering to the customer a decent product, right? But you still had to clean it, right? So I would go. It was terrible for plants. It was great for you. Like it was okay for you. Terrible for plants, right? And uh, well, this is the biggest problem is that they put later on, not in the beginning when I first got there, they weren't all about it, but later on they had such big blooms growing at their facilities where they were cleaning. So they were like, just in the summertime, they'd be like just shit growing everywhere. So they put anti-flowering agents into the water to basically like kill, like thwart any blooms, which if you're a grower, you're like, hey, I wonder where my yields are going down. It's like, oh, because they put anti-flowering, like they put stuff in there that literally stops things from growing and flowering you know into the water so it was like yeah it was pretty shitty so then i was like oh all about ro but then i realized what you have to do with ro is put back about 20 percent regular to add salts and minerals back in yeah and then everything out yeah you're like dude now what your plants are starving like distilled yeah yeah and then the bonus well the bonus is you can put more newts in right like so theoretically you've created more real estate right so now you can put more in there but it's also now it's that's just costing you more money so you're like, well, that's not good. You know what I mean? Like the plants now, and, and you have to speed everything up, right? Not only the food, because once you give them more food, now you have to give them either, you know, better light, more light, spread them out more, bigger container. Fat, everything's going to go faster, right? Feed them more often. And it almost, it's like, it's counterproductive almost in a sense, because what is always good is to find the pace that the plants are doing it on their own, right? You don't need, there's no reason for you. You're, you're not going to do anything better you know what i mean like oh i need to 
because it was always like, how can I add more oxygen at the root level? Okay, there's only so much you can do. You put an aeroponic system in there. You put a like an Ein Gedi. You ever seen the Ein Gedi? No. Another Israeli invention. So <laughs> of course, right? So Ein Gedi, named after the desert, right? Which is a spinning disc. It's like it looks really cool. It was like a, it's like a, a vortex that it comes down like a tube, and at the top it has a disc which is spinning around. It sucks the water up the tube, it hits the disc, and it spins it off into this into this container. Yeah. So you have this like water being thrown around in a sort of perfect pattern where it, it gets. It's not just like a spray. It's actually kind of a vortex action going on which just adds to the to the sort of perfect balance of everything right like and you can fucking see the plants grow it's like crazy how productive the system is but that's the problem is it's also like very easy to crash on the first fucking corner you know what i mean because you're like oh my god look at the roots and then they're like they have no they don't have enough you have to make sure they're supported properly which is one thing but also that you don't miss a cycle like you don't fucking miss a beat because everything is just like do 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 i like if you're like oh dude i let it run out of fucking food and i was at some festy or you know no <laughs> you know it's, it's not made for festy kids it's not made for people who will think they're going to like look at the plants once a week it's like actually more labor intensive in the long run because there's so many mo- literally moving parts right you've got things spinning and <laughs> and then what happens is the but anyway that, that those systems as a, like again as efficient as they are you'll you, there's a day you'll you'll fuck it all up and you'll be like god damn it that cost me a lot of money and it, the, the worst part of anything like that is cleaning it because that's where the pathogens grow right it's like if you have a you like an RO, even with an RO filter right RO filter is a membrane water on each side like you know it creates carbon pressure. capture it's creating right. pressure which then pushes it through it has to have constant pressure to push it through the membrane right and then it catches so much on the back end and whatever clean comes through but the problem is is that if you if you're not just 24 7 making you have to just never stop like the minute you stop you kind of create a, a vacuum area like you create an area for bacteria that can possibly grow like you give it too much time like say you don't, your pump's not running for eight hours for some, you know, because oh, I just I maxed out. Because the thing with RO is it takes, and it also takes three gallons to one gallon, or four gallons to one gallon, depending on the efficiency. But you're just throwing away like three to one, you know. So you get one gallon in your tank, and three gallons go down the drain with all of the shit sucked out of it. So it's more concentrated going down the drain, which doesn't help. I'm sure down the road, downstream, it's not helping. You know what I mean? So you're wasting a shitload of water that's stupid you know what i mean again and then you're adding water back and you're doing all this it, it just it creates a, a a lot of ways to fuck things up so a good source of like like well, i'm just lucky because i have a great source i used to run it through a big boy filter you know i don't even do that anymore it's just not really like i don't even think it's i think the plants once they adjust to it i feel like they're happy they look happy and there's probably some good minerals in there and at least I know that whatever that's in there, no one else has. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's coming I, out of my I house. I think the least you do to the plants, almost the better. And I mean, I've seen some outdoor crops that turn out better than the indoor crops oh, yeah. with one-fifth the amount of money and stuff put on the plants or done to the environment. For sure. And, and like, testament to that is I'll go away for, like, two weeks like I did when I was in Europe. And in those two weeks, my, my mom, she doesn't like to, she doesn't cut the plants back. She's really like, she just likes to, she's on point with the watering. She always has her watering on point. Like she lo- she always lifts everything up and she gets mad at me because I, I have such big containers a lot of times. So she's like, God, you know, so now she has to lift up a 30 gallon, you know what I mean? But, but pretty much if, if you can lift it up, you know, you, you got to water it, obviously. That's the whole key to those things are already too big. But she's really good at that but she doesn't ever touch them and when i come home it's like a fucking unwrapping a present because i'll come home and i'll be like and like one time maybe two times she fucked up you know where she like oh i I didn't even go into that room i'm like what you didn't go into the room for two oh my god then i'll go in and it'll be disaster but that's only happened a couple times 99 percent of the time i come home and i swear it's like every fucking time i'm like you see it's because 
Well, A, it's because I've been gone, so I've, I see the difference. But it's also like, I know she's not in there as much as I am. And sometimes when you're in there all the time, it's like you're disturbing their fucking peace and quiet. And their peace and quiet is when they do all their action. Like, that's like when you're in there, they're not, not budding out. If they're not, you know, buds aren't getting bigger because you're standing in the room. You're feeding them and maintaining them or whatever. It's like you close the door and it's like baking a cake. You know what I mean? Like, you close the door and then that's when the shit's happening, right? It's not happening. It's very, you know, when you're there, you're just, you're the maintenance kid. You're the, <laughs> you're coming in to clean up there, you know, hey, let's check your sheets and double check your things. Like, you know, they're your, your patients. Only. I just think about how the guys are doing it in like Afghanistan and Morocco where they're growing entire mountainsides and they're probably doing it for pennies on the dollar of what anybody can do yeah. it in America and that seems to be I mean they, they have li- a system that they, works they, they live in they live in like a beautiful band though of like like I mean Afghanistan and Pakistan and that whole region is is it's if, if you took away the, 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 the people and the fucking craziness that's going on there it'd be the best place one of the best places ever just because that is like the cradle of cannabis right like it really can't like that's where the best weed is all coming out of that region. You know, well, like, maybe there's a few places in the U.S. that are somewhat similar, like Northern California, oh, I mean, maybe even, Southern Colorado. Even, even the San Luis yeah. Valley, like you said, yeah. that's that's literally Afghanistan. That is like you got mountains on three sides, right? And there's a lot of sun because you have a wide valley. Yeah, 300 days of sun, mile, you know, not too, but there's occasional wind, wind gusts, and it can get a little crazy. But for the most part, it's pretty fucking on point like it's very close to Afghanistan like you can really see the vibe like. and that's where I think we should be in the future making hash. making the most yes the, you shouldn't <laughs> be growing weed in places that are like like Florida it really doesn't I mean it doesn't make sense you're spending a fortune on air I mean, conditioning it's, it's alone. so labor like I've always thought that I've, like every time I've gone to my friends grows in Florida I just be like fuck dude you guys are just like they're they're all if they're if they're fucking air conditioner breaks are done it's like you're toast you're like that is literally like the heart of the entire system and like i'd be like up in the north or in amsterdam in amsterdam nobody had air conditioners hardly ever like even the biggest grows would just like just put bigger vents dude just like vent more because a they didn't like it's holland's not the hottest place it's not like florida you know we don't have the same pressures there but it is humid so in the long run, when, when, when we built closed systems there, I mean, because I, I put air conditioner in my rooms, but everybody around me was like, you're crazy. I was like, dude, you, have, like, you, you, you can't create, in a closed system is much safer in Holland because every, every people there are, are uh, like living really on top and the side. Like I, I would never do what I did back then now just because I'm too fucking like, over it you know what I mean but back then it was like I just grow anywhere I could you know well now I mean? they're doing that I mean and that's that's good for me because when people are growing places they shouldn't they need systems like better air because I mean I, I've had I've had Kyle test this where he turned off his system for 12 hours um, and there's still no mold issues you could also raise your humidity up to 70 80 percent and still keep mold down so yes in Florida if you go down for you know, so even 30 minutes, <laughs> your whole room can uh, oh, what's that go smoke? to hell. What's that? Is that smoke? I don't see no smoke. No. See, it's like we're on the real show now. We got the real show vibe. It's got some smoke action. That's fake. We should have brought a smoke machine is what we should do. That's what we need to do in the future. Is yeah. set that up and just be like, it's, it's part of our brand, you know, like we're pretending we're smoking. And then we can all just be like, everyone is standing there with a tube. Or put a little tube in our mouth that kind of comes around the side. We're going to smoke a machine and some lasers. Yeah, lasers. Of course. Um, well, that's, no, that's awesome. Interesting. I was like, where the fuck's my phone? Right, oh, I know all about that. We have to find Tate now. Because you need to, we need to get like a couple more people. We need Summer Star and Tate. She's here, rolling around. She's, I told her she's gonna come on, so she's probably back there. And the hempies, maybe that. Maybe do a quick, quick run around, Vinny. Go find. Oh, look at that guy. There's another jacket competition. We got jacket competition over here. We got some jackets in the house. Do we know him? Do we? No, we don't. Oh yeah, the other guy. Yeah, they're together. Oh, perfect, perfect. Okay, let me switch Should him bring out. Him in? Yeah, yeah. He's like, I got a jacket on. I can come in too. Come over here. You can get, you can sit on the end. Come here. I need to talk to you. I need to find out how everything went down. Take it to that. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Jump on. Have a seat. Jump on. 
connoisseur in the house. What's going on, my friend? How you doing? Okay, headphones there if you want. Now, this is not a normal Adam Dunn show because we're not blazing up as hard as we... There you go. Sorry for the... We got some roadie action going on here. Yeah, man, you gotta see the jacket, bro. Yeah, get the, dude. I was already like, dude, we have a jacket. We got a jacket. <laughs> we got a jacket sighting over there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we know we know this guy. What's your name? What's your name? Doctor Mary Jane. Oh, it was, it's the doctors in the house. There we go. The Art of Mary Jane magazine. Oh, Mary Jane. Okay, for sure. Oh, thanks, Adam, for the referral for the Mary Jane cup. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. And everything. Like, we oh. had this one lady hit us up. Oh. She's like, Adam Dunn referred me. I was See, like, wow. Uh, you know, it happens. It, it has been known to happen. Well, welcome, <laughs> welcome guys. Uh, how, is, how are you doing? So I should be asking you first. I'm doing good. Yeah? Any, any uh, post-accident uh, sort of issues that come <laughs> up? Or, what was it? Okay, let me, here's, here's my question. Because I already knew, like, when I was there, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be a tough one. What was the final verdict from their side as far as, like, did the insurance get all weird on you? Or did you guys have any kind of, like, craziness from that? Because that was a... Oh, we're still working with them. <laughs> still working with them. Yeah. Uh, so people who don't know, if you go back to the Peter Papadopoulos episode uh, of the... Uh, ter- like, when we were in, in Spain, you guys were involved in a, in a crazy car accident that was... Uh, yeah, I, like I said... I got the photo. I got the photos. You still got the wristband or what? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, get closer. Get close. Get on it. Uh, but yeah, that was crazy. Uh, cra- like, I mean, one thing, well, before I even knew it was you, I was like, who the fuck rents a car in, who fucking rents a car in Barcelona if they don't know where the fuck's going on? And then I say, I was like, oh, it was him. All right. Now, now it all makes sense. <laughs> but uh, no, so that, that's some crazy shit. How's Pete doing? He's doing good. I seen him in Boston. I see. Oh, good. How how was that? Was that, how was that show? Was it was it for the freedom thing or no? Which one was it? Oh, I was out there doing the Stoner Cinema. Oh yeah, I was doing, I, exactly. I, I saw that. That looked really good actually. Yeah, that looked it was good. good. I was like, I was quite impressed. I was all, well, that's good. That looked like it fucking made it of kill. I mean, as far as you gotta you gotta have the right people that appreciate that and it's sort of like it's kind of lost in Colorado everybody's all jaded and kind of hard to get the, the energy going again you know what I mean but you can mm. East Coast is still fresh and where are you from originally? California oh well that place is fucking jaded too <laughs> talk about jaded <laughs> oh yeah man well it used to be paradise and stuff and you know, I started one of the first medical marijuana delivery services in California nice. in the world back in 2001 sure. and two dispensaries what were the names of those? Uh, Holistic Health Center. Okay. And then uh, I launched the Art of Mary Jane magazine, 10 plus countries, right next to High Times. That's a rough That's a rough game these days, too. It's like one of those, like, oh, imagine having a magazine now. Fuck. You know, well, <laughs> you know, what's really cool is, uh, you know, we stopped doing the print in 2019. We did Corrupted the Dog Pound on mm-hmm. the cover, and we did all five members, Bone Thugs, and Harmony. Nice. So that was like our last, you Weren't know, they, print. They're playing on the... They're playing at some gig in the East Coast. The roll up New coming York. up. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. I saw that the other day. Nice. Yeah. Um, I know it's like it's it's funny because we were you know I mean to, yeah so 2001 definitely way back. It's it's like we're at the 20 plus year mark and it's funny because I moved to Amer- back to America 10 years ago. It was sort of similar because I was in Amsterdam, but but Amsterdam's a different animal because right. it's like you know we were we were like. It, it was very already, original. It, it already had its sort of history before yes. I'd ever got there, but there was a moment in time where it was sort of like bubbling in in, in the states, and then around uh, '95, because I had my had opened up in '93, and in '95, I didn't really know what was going on, but I was seeing the results because they were all coming, like people were coming, like gangbusters, like buying seeds and just going nuts. Ah, you could see, and I didn't really, and I knew what was happening, but I didn't. There wasn't like. It wasn't the same as now. Like, the information didn't flow as fast, right? So you were kind of like, you know, you heard about things. It didn't, and as an American, I was always like, all right, we'll see how this goes down. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like waiting for the fucking, the, 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 the bitch slap at the end or whatever. But somehow, I think Cali's lucky because it has the production in the North at the time. Yeah. You know, and it had the distribution in the South. And it had the people, you know, enough people down here to keep, you, keep you the know, thing flowing. You know, it really sucks, though, but in then, California... 
you have dispensaries that are making a million plus profit in a year and can't even stay open. Right. Right. So that's the problem is we need to see the states that have failed Here. and learn from that and then implement into it, these other states. Don't you find it crazy, though, that like we cause, because we all learn every all of our I'm sure all of us, all our business skills come from selling wheat from when we were kids. Like we were just like when we were like young in school, flipping fucking joints. Like, you know, it all literally like our brains just like woke up. Like, dude, you could take a this and turn it into that and then sell those and then keep that. And you're like, oh my God, this is a genius. Like, you know, we all, we all went through that school and then it's like Holland wasn't really legal. So it was still very much like, here's the cash, here's the weed and we count it and everybody's good and we leave. So it never really evolved past that, right? And then yeah. America, of course, as it always fucking does, let's turn this into like a real thing. And then mm. not thinking, not understanding that the reality is that we were all, like unless we were gouging, like occasionally everyone got a fucking break because somebody came through and it was like, oh, was, ah, we, we killed it. But for the most part, if it was like real business, like we're talking like we want to do business on a regular business, you have to keep the margins in some realistic place. There wasn't much room for error, right? Like if you fucked up, you fucked up hard. Like there was a little like, you didn't have like, unless you were out there being an asshole and ripping people off. And of course you, you could do that with anything. If you're selling a rig, you know, you can buy it for a dollar a bag and you're charging 20 bucks each yeah great but you're that's not a sustainable thing you're gonna get killed you know what i mean so but when you try to do weed stuff people just thought it was making tons of money because people were importing mexican weed and making tons of money but those guys right. didn't buy like the real good weed was always a couple pounds you know what i mean like it wasn't ever and now we're trying to do everything on scale and it's just like no one really did it like no one did the fucking math it's like we're just kind of doing the I got 10 lights downstairs, so if I put a thousand lights in this warehouse, it should cost this, right? It's like, hell no, dude. There's like so many things that come into effect when you get big. And, right. and we've taken it all too professional, too quick you in, know, in a lot of ways, I think. I, you know, I really love the activism of Cannabis Connoisseur and mm -hmm. what he's done in Colorado for the community. And I really, you know, value and respect uh, Cannabis Connoisseur as one of the voices in Colorado. And anybody that wants to come up against Cannabis Connoisseur, they're a shitbag. It's plain and simple. You're yeah. a shitbag. Because, you know, when we have people that are in the industry, like Cannabis Connoisseur, and he's a, a real big, shiny light, and he has, you know, sometimes, like, all this infighting with the cannabis industry uh, which, really needs to stop. It's, and, it's, it's kind of hard, though, because... I think everybody goes through their things and it's like you can't like you can't become more popular it, 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 the problem is social media now that's the biggest problem like, back in the day it was like you had to like hang out with each other to figure out if you like somebody or not and if you didn't it was all hearsay and you, right. who gives a fuck yes. but now everybody's got an opinion got and everybody's got a platform and everybody's like eh. and, and the thing is like it's hard because people look at him as uh I think they're looking like a lot of times they're not looking at the, the the real cause. The real cause is that he's fucking going through a lot of shit. Right. So he's using this as his fucking like sort of like focus point to like keep moving ahead, right? Which is like pretty obvious, like to me at least. Well, I don't see any. But then other people are like, oh, this guy is moving. because of course, like it's like me. People think I'm an asshole because I try to like promote my shit sometimes and if you try to promote your shit you're an asshole like ah you're fucking you're egotistic I had this one guy recently he's like I, I could never I could never hang out with this guy I, gr I grow all this stuff and I respect his weed but I couldn't hang out with him and I'm like that's the weirdest comment I ever saw and I hit him up I was like dude I totally would hang out with you and he's like yeah we're about the same age but I don't agree on so many things and like I don't know it's just weird it's just like one of those things I was like wow that's weird because I usually have the opposite effect where if somebody actually hangs out with me they're like oh yeah you're pretty cool it's like dude you know like back in Amsterdam I was arrogant because I was trying to like I, I just had so many bullshitters coming to me every day like oh dude I grow the best I was like whatever you got you, you got any they like, no <laughs> alright well then you don't have the best weed in the world that was just my attitude to people because you can't talk about it you have to prove proof it's in the pudding it always is yeah. like if you have good weed it sells itself you, know, you don't have to hype people and tell them and that's the problem is it turned into mylar bags with purple weed mm -hmm. it's I don't like purple weed, you know what I mean? Mm. Everything I smoke is green. Like spread terps. It's like not, not even interesting to me. You know, it's very interesting how the cannabis industry is evolving. 
and I, I really believe that we have a long way to go as far as building camaraderie, mm -hmm. honor, and integrity in this industry. And accountability is very important. You yeah, know? It's, it's, there's a lot of people who are like, <clears throat> you know, like the, the thing is that weed people are not business people and business people are not weed people a lot of the times. And there's occasionally mm -hmm. some crossover and, and we've tried to create this whole like, like dichotomy, like, like, like I said, our business is like, I give you this, you give me that and I get to from free weed. That's pretty much where we were at. Then everybody, if you thought bigger, like I want to be a billionaire, it's like, okay, cool, whatever. That's, up, <laughs> that's all you. I'm going to sit over here until I figure something out. And with weed people, the cool part is, is that we're all very innovative. Like, oh, I'm going to make glass. Like, look, all the glass blowers I know are the most antisocial people that they're like the antisocial weed people. Like, if you didn't give them something to play with and fucking sit there and just, they would be like so depressed about life. You know what I mean? Because a lot of those guys are just kind of like that. But there's, I mean, there's all types, of course, but there's a certain type that I know that resonates with me. It's like the tortured artist mentality or yes. something. And that's, that comes out in the work, right? You're like, oh, look at this fucking amazing work. Cause it's like, you have to break 10 to get one. You know what I mean? And that's like, it's not a guy who wants to make a ton of money. It's a guy who wants to be passionate about it and then there are guys who want to make money and those guys are like dude i'm just making spoons all day long spoon 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 and it's like cool you're not an artist you're a fucking production guy all you want to do is make a little spoon because you know you can do this cost you 75 cents you can sell it for 25 bucks you're making money great i'm glad you know that's awesome but you get another guy over here who's like works for two weeks three weeks on a piece breaks it ah, you know and it tries and he tries oh dude i want like 1500 bucks and you're like dude that's crazy man I could get one from and it's like fuck, you don't understand like that is like but but there's always one guy within it who'll trade that guy a pound of weed and then that guy is smart and he'll flip the that and get to you know get 2500 instead of 1500 and now everybody's you know that's the cool part about weed is it's very innovative makes us all think makes us all work around the system as much as possible you know what i mean yeah and that's why the business part makes it all wrong because mm. that means you have to do it like the way they say to do it and it's like that's why no one makes money because it's like it's the system has always been designed to fucking keep you down at any way mm. shape or form the only guy who makes money is one guy at the top maybe and all the people under him might be like so all the government regulators yeah and, and the city officials oh, they're, they're, and they're all making the electric money. company making big money how much money does the electric company make off of weed it's like nuts dude nuts you know what i mean yeah. like they'll let you pay your bill if you're living in a little house and you have a nine thousand dollar bill they'll They'll let you get paid for it. They'll be like, fuck, this guy's giving us the money. We'll just let it go. You know what I mean? Like, they don't question it because it's for them. That's the, you know, occasionally there's work with the police or whatever. But for the most part, I've seen people, as long as they pay your bill and you're on point, you know, you're, that's, that, that's what they, you know. In Holland, nobody did it. Everyone stole it, you know? Mm. And so that's where it gets, turns into, so it's like. That's where it started, though. Amsterdam is definitely the pioneer. And, yeah. They started, what, in the 90s? Oh, no. They started in the 70s. 70s. They started in the 70s officially, like, with small shops. And what, the way they used to do it was, it was all by diversion. Right. So the idea would be, like, you'd come into a bar, and you'd be like, oh, I, smell, I smell weed, you know? And the guy would be like, oh, talk to that guy over there. And there'd be, like, a guy in the corner with a fucking sombrero on or something, <laughs> too. You know what I mean? And he'd be like, Whoosh. Or they'd even go more covert and they'd be like, they leave a jacket hanging with the weed in the pocket and you pay the one guy over here and you go, go to the pocket and the jacket and you go to the pocket of the jacket and you get the weed out. So it was always like a diversion in case the cops came. You'd be like, you know, like they could at least fucking, they could tell, they give them a one, one moment there, you know what I mean? And, and it was like the, the then, then they opened up real, when I moved there in 89, it was already like established. Like they had probably a couple hundred shops at that point in Amsterdam. And then at the height of it all, there was like, fuck, there was like mm, a couple thousand in the country. It was like, but then you go to like a place like Oklahoma and there's like 3,000 spots. You know what I mean? Like, so there's, there was always like a grouped up mostly in the cities, a little bit less. And when you go to the country, it was like some places were just like, huh? You know, in other places they had the fucking fire just because some guy was there growing killer weed. The city was a lot of this like, oh, what do you want? Oh, Northern Lights. And the next guy would be like, Hayes? <laughs> like, dude, the guy just gave him the same weed. Like, he didn't even care. Didn't even blink an eye because the Dutch are just like, give me the monies. You know what I mean? Give me yeah. the, they're very money driven. So, and they all smoke tobacco, so they don't know the difference, you know? But, uh, so, basically... But in the 90s is when it was thriving. That's, like, when all the Americans were, like, loving it and bring coming through and 
Neville's stuff was popping off right. really hard, and he was Barney's farm. Yeah, Barney's came in later, and all those guys. Bulldog was. Bulldog was a long time. Bulldog was from, I think, like 70s something. Right. Yeah, yeah. Bulldog the original a, OGs right there. But they never really, they were more about drinking. They were like kind of like the Dutch, like, hey, yeah, should be here, and, you know, spliff in a beer. And they'd just be like, they'd be happy with that. Whereas later in the 90s, but you know, Gray Area was like the, one of the first ones. Um, and that was my friend's shop that we helped start kind of together. And we were like just small, but, you know, really focused on American weed. And then now that's all they care about. Like when you go there now, they have it says from Cali on the menu. And you're just like, really? Like from (laughs) Cali on the fucking menu? Like Tyson has a a, uh, dispensary over there. So Mike Tyson has his own dispensary and all the weed is from Cali. You're just like, this is nuts. And then, (laughs) you know what I mean? So Cali's already like rinsed itself out by being, I mean, if, if in a perfect world, not in a perfect world for us because we're growers, but in the perfect sort of like way that it should actually work is, I mean, the Central Valley could just grow all the weed that you would ever need for the whole country. Like that's all you would need They, for, for the most part. And then, right. and then the people in the little craft ones would be able to do their thing. But the average Keystone light guy with the weed, you know, they doesn't give a fuck. They'd be like, dude, I get an ounce of weed for 30 bucks. It's like, yeah, because it comes from the valley and it just comes on train and they just bring it, you know, that's how they'd efficiently be able to just distribute it all over the place, right? Like just take all the shamrock fucking trucks and all the other distribution companies and they drive to the fucking place and the train would unload and they'd bring it to the, you know what I mean? That's where we, you know, where I started uh, in Sacramento back in 2001. Sack down. And it was funny because- Sack, he was in the sack. I had my- He's he's a sacker, (laughs) he's a sacker. I had my friend- he, he told me he, like, uh, had this bicycle route, and he would deliver weed all over the city with his crew. And this was in the 80s. That's, a good, that's, that's, that's the move you want to do. Start young. Start young. Right, yeah. Because yeah. if paper route, you know that you're doing that when you're, like, 16, 17, right? right? So there's no... He no, told no. me that, and then I was like, well, shit, Jeez. why don't we bring this out here in Cali, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know I was one of the first ones to start. I was just like, bam, I'm just going boom. You know, in 2001, we launched at one of the first Milli Marijuana marches mm. with, and it was really awesome. Eddie Lepp came in with his limo and his whole entourage the first time I met him, and I bought a plot on his farm. Oh, right. Off then, of the, what was that, off the five or something? Like yeah, that? yeah. I, I don't, and I always was like, dude, you should have just put the farm, like, way back. Because yeah, you see it from the highway. Like, even the, co- <laughs> even the <laughs> cops and everybody was cool, but they couldn't do too much because you could see it from the highway, I like, know. and it was getting bigger, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Thir- yeah. Yeah, how many acres was it? Like, 30,000 or something? Or- oh, no, plants, it was 30,000. Yeah. Yeah, it was about 30,000 yeah. plants or something. Yeah, it was crazy. It, it was like Eddie would come out to Amsterdam and sort of same thing, entourage, the whole nine yards. Oh, and, and, uh, I've never seen someone with a bigger entourage than Eddie Lett, man. I mean... It, yeah, it was, it was always pretty funny, and... and uh, he was a real rock star he had oh yeah and there was a lot of uh <laughs> i mean i've got some stories but no. it's like one of those yeah, i'll leave you know, this I'll you know what he ones. did is uh-huh. we were at his house uh-huh. and he went into his closet and he pulled out a six foot long stock bud and he like threw it at me and i'm like oh and i caught it and i'm like wow this is like the biggest stock bud i've ever seen in my life yeah he, he was uh definitely putting out some huge plants and, and and you know when he came to amsterdam you could tell he was uh he was a proper a proper uh you know do do what you say kind of guy he actually was, was released he was here in colorado uh when he was serving and got released uh oh really uh, yes yeah, this is like Colorado's it's like California too, right? No, well, he was in Colorado. Colorado's like fucking prison, prison state. It's crazy. So he it's, went from Col- California, uh, but then he was in prison, in Colorado. Yeah, they put him in like the, the whatever. You know, the thing is, you don't want him. You don't want him to be close to home because then people can come visit him. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta make it, you know, make it harder for everybody. That's that's the way they like to do it. But, but yeah, Colorado's like crazy there's like region like limon there's one and there's all areas that you just go by and you're like another one and buena vista has got a big fucking and you could right from the highway and you're just like damn i always feel bad for everybody it's like, it's like as i drive by i always feel extra i want to talk about the mary jane cup yeah sure what, what date is that what date is you that? want to tell them about the mary jane cup and he's going to be one of the honorable judges so uh, honorable jeez, i don't know 
<laughs> we may have to test that testing on our ability. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we uh, gave him the Midas touch because we feel he's definitely an honorable man and he has made more impact in activism as, a, as one person in Colorado with his activism than probably we've seen in anybody. Well, you know what's funny is uh, I think when you first came on the show, it was all kind of, I was like, kind of like, I was thinking, didn't you? I thought you were like, I was like, I thought it was a whole like, like it almost felt like a like a, a, a division of people more than just one person. You know what I mean? I was kind of like, damn, you put out a lot of content for one guy. You know what I mean? It was like a lot of action, which is well, I think what, what you need because a lot of people, there's a lot of non-action going on in the, in the, in the whole, in, you know, in the system or in the industry. And well, I think you know, it's it's good. You know, the the people that came from the industry were in the industry. We've had. A long history we have to basically you know inform the younger generation that is coming into the industry about you know the best practices and and what we've learned over you know 20 30 40 years and it's stuff. yeah I mean the, the, the weird part now is is like when I moved, like, I was always 20 years ahead, but now it's all kind of catching up because now everyone here is like, oh, you know, it's the 20-year mark is already happening, which is crazy because before it was still always so fresh just by proxy. It was like you couldn't get around. You can't change time, right? Time, right. Is, time is the only well, the one thing we cannot at the moment <laughs> seem to change. But, but in general, it's like the, you know, uh, I always tell everybody in, in the cannabis world, it is like NASCAR, right? Like yeah. If you're on like, like lap 500, right, and someone yeah. else is just getting on their first lap, and they're like, dude, this is fucking amazing, and they're smoking their they're smoking their pens, and you know what I mean? They don't know, they don't even know. Like you're like, and then they give it to you, and you're like, dude, what is this fucking pina colada bullshit like <laughs> pen you got here? And he's like, dude, it's this fucking Delta Eight. And you're like, oh my god, like what are you doing? Like you know what I mean? Like they just don't know. They have they haven't had the exposure yet, right? And mm. so, whereas the opposite for us is like, you know. We've we've started in the trenches, you know. All, you know, smoked some of the best weed probably at the time, sm- smoked some of the worst weed at the time. You know what I mean? Like all of the above, uh, you know. Have there's always been somebody above you? There always will be. You know what I mean? There's always somebody oh, I know who's, all about that. Who's, who's like on lap seven hundred and fucking fifty or a thousand? You know what I mean? Like yeah. how do you meet them? And that was the cool part about Amsterdam was I was always get to meet these people. Like, like Eddie Lab and like all these other people like they'd all come there like a pilgrimage wow. to our spot and who so, are others some of the other big legends that were oh I mean every everybody who with Eddie and and, stuff. everybody who like like is pretty much now rinsed as far as like you know the the, the Jack Harris and the fucking the you know Ed and like what was really cool for me was I was a lot of authors that were there right so mm. I had I had like um, Rob Clark lived there, right? And so I had Rob, like, just hanging out all the time. And that was cooler than just meeting people. Because, like, when I met when I met Jack was actually, and we've told the story a bunch of times, because uh, my co-host was on dead tour and just happened to stay an extra week in Amsterdam and saw a sign, handwritten sign, that said, like, famous uh, activist Jack Herrer speaking at the Homegrown Fantasy. Oh. And I got to meet him on that day, and I was working at Sensi at the time. And they were like, hey, can you take Jack over to Homegrown? And I'm like, sure. You know, and I was like 24 or something, 23. Mm. So I was like, and I had given him, the only thing I, that, that bummed me out about that day is I'd given him some bubble gum and I hadn't cured it out properly. And in Holland, everything's really wet. So it's like the opposite of here. Like you constantly fucking have too wet a weed. And he, I gave him a bud and he, 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 did, he didn't roll good joints anyway. And if you can't roll, like this was the kind of weed you had to like sit there and break it up break, and they make sure sticky. make sure that it, you didn't you know keep enough air in there it was like one of those like you had to be an expert roller right and i didn't think about it as much i was more like just oh my god he's here right so i gave him this bud and he tried to roll it tried, ah, this fucking, ah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like i saw i was all sad i was like no oh, don't meet your man don't meet the guy you love so much but uh i mean we got to meet i mean we got to meet uh like okay so like uh, had, at one point i had mel frank Ed, Ro- Ed, uh, Ed Rosenthal and Jack Herr oh my gosh, and Rob Clark sorry not Jack Herr and Rob Clark it's all taking photos of my weed but I, I had them all come over at the same time thinking that was going to be like good but then I didn't realize they all hated each other like in some they all had issues because they were all authors and they all uh, he, Mel and 
Ed hadn't talked in years because when they did the book together, blah, blah, blah happened, right? And then Rob didn't like Ed, you know what I mean? And I was just like, what is this going on here? It was not even that he didn't like him. It was just like they hadn't, like, at that point, everybody was still young and sort of like, you know, the machismo was still mm. there. Now everyone's like, hey, I haven't seen you. Like, but anyway, but, you know, like, uh, what was really funny was we had, like, um, you know, like Steve D'Angelo, when he was still, nice. like, he was still running um, his, uh, what was the name of his company? The uh, his, no, he, before that he had his hemp company, right? So he, and so he was coming over to Amsterdam, and I had my hemp store, and we had all this space at our place, and so he would come in and, like, store stuff at some of our rooms and pay us rent or whatever, and then, like, it was just funny because uh, Ecolution, Ecolution was the name of his company, right? So he had his Ecolution line, and then we had our, we started our line, and then uh, over the years it was like, like he started around the same exact time. Everyone started in ninety ninety three was like the magic year. It was like, yeah. hey, let's do a hemp thing. You know, <laughs> I just happened to start my hemp store over there, and then we attracted just all these new. The, the cool part was is it was so fresh, and so new, and we we kind of got to see a lot of things actually happen that we were talking about like i was walking around with a swatch of, or a pack of swatches of different hemp material that i got from there's a company up here called hemp traders okay right so they were around they were they've been around forever so they gave me a big thing of swatches when they came into town and i was just like amazed like Look, this is herringbone and this one is like a double this one's like a, a loose like summer weave and like i had all these different kind of types and it got all grimy and horrible after a while. So I was like, I need a new swatch, man. I've like shown thousands of people this. But every day it was like educating everything. And I was, so that's why we opened up our store was because we were like, well, everybody comes into the Hash Museum. I was working at the Hash Museum when I was there and it became the Hash and Hemp Museum. You know Chris Conrad? Yes. Okay, so Chris and Mickey, you know Mickey, mm-hmm. his wife. Okay, so Chris and Con- Chris uh, and Mickey moved above the Hash Museum. They had like an apartment. So the guys from the Hash Museum, who are Ben Drunkers, who was my boss, gave them the apartment upstairs. And then their job was to renovate the, the Hash Museum and turn it into the ha- to the hemp and marijuana museum instead oh, of the okay. Hash Museum because the Hash Museum was that what it was known as. Right. It was kind of like you walked in. And I, when I first went there, I was like, this is the biggest ripoff ever, dude. You walk in, there's like a couple of smuggling ideas that people did, a plant growing in the corner, some couple of things. And then so he came in and like made it proper, like a real museum, you know, different features. And, you know, he, he made it proper. So it was like one of those, uh, yeah, those time periods, because that was in 92. And then in 93, we did the cup. And then that cup was like kind of the first real cup that was made sense. Yeah. And so we were like, we were... 24 years old me and my partner and this other guy Dion and we just like did what we thought was the smart thing to do we're like well I guess you should have like a you know a book and then a map and then you go to shops and then the, the people vote for the shops and then we'll have celebrities vote for the for the seed companies because they can't sell directly to the public and had it all mapped out did it it was very cool it was a couple hundred people it was just about the right amount of number it wasn't like too big it wasn't too small uh, big enough that everybody came back the next year, mm. plus 600 more people came, you know what I mean? Yeah, Amsterdam, they started, like, you know, uh, holding back the events, right? For oh, it got, it, got, it, got, it got all crazy. Well, the thing is, is that we were living there, right? And, when, and so High Times would come into town, do the event, leave town right mm. kind of leave some open ends here and there oh, you're gonna, it'll, I'm promising you know like not pay bills and there's uh-huh. all sorts of bullshit going down oh, okay. and there was weed missing or there was this or there was that you know it was like there was like every year was another layer of bullshit kind of coming on top but when mm. we did it so the year we did it, it was just 93 we walked around asking all the coffee shops to get involved and a lot of them like had already dealt with high times before and other things and were like oh that guy still owes me from the two years ago because it started in 87 so when i got mm. there it was, when we did it it was already five years before four, before so okay. ours, was, ours was the sixth annual okay but what's crazy this is the funniest fucking part high times has always hated us right because we we just can't we, a we handed them a fucking like golden goose but they still hated us because because we made it it's like if somebody tells you the most obvious thing you get more mad at them than <laughs> than 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 help than be like thanks man that's obvious <laughs> like dude maybe you should do this like less and you're like duh you know like you don't want to hear nobody wants to hear the truth half the time right so it was kind of that situation where we just handed them this cup and 
they were like, holy fuck, this t- turned out, because they had 50 people they brought, right, mm. from America. That was their idea of a cup. Oh, it's the biggest thing ever. 50 people, we're going to do this. And we had 200 people there waiting for those 50 people, you know, maybe 150 or something, waiting for those people. So when they got there, they were like, oh, shit, this is a real, like, you guys, oh, you know. That's how I roll it. Like, you know, they were ready to just be like, here you go, and we're done, and let's get the fuck out of here. And I was like, no, you're going to have... And we're having a band and we're having you know so i was like hiring a band and then we rented a space and we did all this stuff. so we spent about 10 grand and it wasn't money from any sponsors we didn't ask nobody for hardly asked for anything we didn't know what we we're doing we're like oh like 50 bucks you know give me 50 bucks and we had like, like <laughs> so we ended up with like 500 bucks but we spent ten thousand bucks so it was like not a win-win in any way shape or form but in our minds high times had two hundred dollars per ticket from those 50 people so we just thought we had 10 grand to spend like we thought that was our money because we didn't know how life worked right we didn't we weren't business guys Uh bunch of stoners were like we got 10 grand so i'm just like bringing in all the cash from other sales and stuff and you know we were actually making good money at the time because we were selling seeds so it was 10 grand i was like ah fuck it we can spend that 10 grand boom i mean it wasn't Nothing. What were your staples? What were the seeds that you had? Well, at the time, it was I so said I wasn't even doing my own seeds in '93. I was just selling other people's seeds. So I had worked at Sensi, so I was selling all their line. I had Sensi, I had Dutch Passion, I had Nirvana, I had um, what's uh, basically Flying Dutchman. Okay. Um, I had Positronics. I had like the biggest seed collection in the world at the time. I was like before Mark Emery, so I was all really? like, "I'm the greatest thing in the." I was. <laughs> didn't even know i just didn't realize we had it like later i was like they have like 135 strains on the menu guys and then they were like i think we're the biggest you know what i mean it was just like i think we're because like how you were you wake up in the morning you do something first guy ever to do that you thought you were at least you know right. maybe maybe you weren't but you, in my world it felt like we were everything we did was like nobody was doing hemp right no, nobody knew about nothing like we were like we're the first hemp store. We're the first hemp store in Europe. First, you know, everything was the first. It was like, guess we're the first. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, we just wake up in the morning, yeah. rolled out of bed, first guy to sell, you know, that particular... Because I was just doing, like, crazy numbers of seeds at the time. Like I said, I didn't realize this is in 93, so it was already just starting to happen. Yeah. But by 95, I was just cranking. Like, people were just coming through yeah. on a regular. I had a big space. I'd have, like, people waiting, like, four or five deep, you know what I mean? Each of them spending three, four or five grand at a time, and I'd be like, ah, calculator breaking, you know what I mean? It was like, it was a great moment in time, you know? And then, uh, you know, everybody saw the formula. I had, like, Arian walk in one day from Greenhouse and go, like, (laughs) <laughs> yes, you might as well close shop because uh, I'm going to sell sheets cheaper than anybody. <laughs> I'm like, great. Just what I want to like, okay, everybody close shop. Arian's coming into town. You know what I mean? He basically just picked up all my catalogs and just walked out and like started a seed company the next week. You know, I was like, oh, magically you have a seed company. Over. You know what we really, uh, what inspired us for the Mary Jane Cup about the High Times Cup is that they fostered a lot of camaraderie mm-hmm. within the cannabis community. And we felt like they were the biggest proponents of camaraderie so you know with the mary jane cup that is our mission is to bring back you know camaraderie to the industry high integrity and honor which are the most valued things that we need in our industry you know and uh you know thank you adam and cannabis connoisseur for all your activism with the community we got there. What was that one? Mmm. Remember, it was the, uh, take a look at the nugget. Oh, yeah. From yesterday. Okay. So that, oh, wedding cake? To be honest one? with you, that smells like pure gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> wedding cake. Yeah, literally, it's we just we just it. had... We just, on the thing. We just did a judging session for the Mary Jane Cup the other day. Me and Cannabis Connoisseur, we had like 10 entries and from all over Colorado. And literally, uh, all the, we, sm- we started with the sativas, then we did the hybrids, and then we did the indicas. And each one, we rolled a, a big, long joint back to back. I hadn't been that high in like five years. It was ridiculous. I was showing, I was, show, I was thinking about you the other day on the show because I was... Uh I was uh, when when fucking Puff Daddy fucking thing fell. Down. I was like, oh shit! I was like, dude, I rolled a 
hundred and fucking twenty gram joint for Snoop one time in Rotterdam and Puffy wouldn't even like take a hit off of it. He's a little bitch. And so I go, pull that video up, right? And he pulls it up and it's like actually a pretty long video too. It was funny. It was like it was like you see I was kind of, and I was like I was watching it going like I hope I'm right I hope he didn't take a hit and then he does a, like he does this thing where he's lighting it and he's taking forever and it's kind of a little bit too big and it's hanging a little bit and I'm on the crowd all like oh shit like it's gonna oh, do because I was like give him a fucking torch lighter or something do, you don't and he's up there with a little shitty lighter he's <laughs> he's doing it and then he like Snoop gets the hit going. And he hands it to Puffy, and Puffy goes like it turns his back to the crowd and kind of <laughs> like, hands it off stage, and I was like, that fucker, he didn't even fucking take a hit. Look at that bitch. Damn. So there you go, because they were like, you don't like Puff Daddy? I was like, no, dude, he didn't even take a hit off my giant joint that I rolled. I was like, first I was like, oh, at least we're gonna get him both. That year was ridiculous though, because I was dealing with both camps, and I was telling on the show the other day, I was like, Snoop had like fucking Uncle Junebug fucking cooking chicken in his fucking in his hotel room above this fucking pizza hut right that's where he would stay and then i'd go over to where puff daddy's staying at the amstel which is like the nicest hotel yeah and he had like four layers of security and i finally get there and it was like the lamest like he he asked me the dumbest shit ever and i was just kind of like what is like, like i was just like i walked out of there like scratching my head going that's the car that guy's an funny. idiot that guy's an idiot like you know what oh, i mean yeah. like every, <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't even say <laughs> oh, it. I'll t- it, was, no, it wasn't. Didn't. It wasn't weed related. Let's put it that way. It was like one of those. Like I get there all happy. Like oh, you want some some weed? And it was like, no, dude, that's not my world at all. Like what are you talking about? Like he was just. He was weird. He was like, so and it was all. Bro. It was a. It was a mountain of gray goose. Like he had a mountain of gray goose and nobody there. And then I go to Snoop's place and it's like playing video games, fucking eating chicken with like 50 people in the room, everybody's <laughs> smoking. It was just like your class. <laughs> he has like a big sound system set up and he's fucking scratching and shit. And it's just like, all right, this is like a total fucking polar opposite thing going on here. Now, of course, Snoop's a little more high end, but at that time he was still pretty, his crew is, I wouldn't say grimy, but pretty grimy for, for you know, they were definitely, uh, loving the fact that they were above a pizza hut i was like all right <laughs> so i was like whatever guys you're in europe you know <laughs> right pizza Hut's the last place actually you found go a video to. found a video recently which is also cool it was an mtv in your travel sort of i'm not travel mtv diaries right it was an old like 90s thing they were doing and it was snoop diaries in europe and it was like a fucking commercial for my hoodlum jackets where he just like he had just come into town when he was arrived so he arrived in amsterdam i gave him a jacket i gave him two jackets i gave him one regular and i gave him one bulletproof right and you gave him bulletproof jacket yeah so he had like the first well that was the first it was like the second one um yeah because i he i was like who, who better of course he ended up giving did it did he know Oh yeah, yeah. No, he, he, that you were he, getting him a bulletproof jacket, oh, no, he and you know. disappeared with it. And you're I like, "Here, brother." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, that, that's the best gift ever. You know, like yeah, it was. I still, just saved your life, brother. It was too heavy, though. He was like, "It's too heavy." Oh. <laughs> he's like, "This thing's too heavy." It weighs a ton. No, it's, he gave it to uh, he gave it to Noah. It was like breaks all the breaks. You know, you try to put on a regular hanger. It's like, oh. it was like it was pretty. It was pretty hardcore, but uh, you know, it was like one of those. I want to want to make want to make a statement, right? <laughs> but but. Uh, yeah, it was funny because he his his whole thing was like his crew was was voracious. Like they would come into town and just fucking plow through weed because mm. they're in Amsterdam, of course. Right. And then they'd be on the road and they'd be calling from everywhere, and it's just like it, it turned into a, it literally turned into a full time job at one point where I was just like, dude, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me now? Like you guys could find your own weed there, please, at least. You know what I mean? Like, oh, dude, you got to help us out. Like, oh, all right. <laughs> Let's see what I can do, you know what I mean? So it was constantly on this thing. But and it, the funny thing about it too is that everybody would think it was the awesomest thing ever. They'd be like, dude, Snoop Dogg, that's going to be great. I'd be like, well, first of all, you probably don't even get to see the show. You might get to see the show. You'll probably be waiting around on the side somewhere forever because it takes forever because there's so many things going on. Yeah. And, and like, you know, or you're lucky once in a while. I only have like one one really good moment where it was just like me and him and my mom and we were chilling and we were just in the right place. And I started rolling a joint, and I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome, you know what I mean? Like, because normally we're always rushed and like, oh, yeah, right, right. I was like, 
this is like and he said oh what's up moms and oh you grow with it oh, like he, she was getting the picture finally like oh this is your mom and you guys grow weed together and this is in Amsterdam of course and at the same hotel I was just telling you about with the fucking pizza and everything and it was like the moment and I was just about to, I was like just rolling the joint and I was just like breaking it up and as I break and then some guy comes in this guy Kevin who's like pretty famous this big dude who's on the shows with him like blonde guy he comes in goes everybody out everybody out and I was no, dude. Like we didn't even get to. Didn't. I was just about to finish rolling the joint. He was chilling with my mom, and then he's like, "Go, oh, we guys. Guess we got to go do so." I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "It was like that was that was the moment." Because I, I've, I've always every other time it's like it's been a little too crazy, you know. It's like mm. always it's always backstage or you know at some fucking shoot or something like that. So, yeah. but it was funny. It was those those were good times. So he would hang out like at the gray area. Was this is also the same time. The gray area was like maybe this is like twice as big as where we're sitting right now it's like the place is tiny so you know again you know it's like well can't really get to over there because you know it's but yeah it was up. oh man it was crazy that's it's uh, that's the one thing that's the one thing that's one thing i think america does have if, if they can get their shit together and figure out how to do a social club that works i mean it's like we're all in the same industry together we all have thrown parties we all know that there's like certain elements that you just need to do right it's not that hard yeah it's like barcelona had it done yeah i mean in general it that bad. in general it's like probably the easiest audience in the world you know what i mean like, yeah like the least pushback you're gonna get is from a bunch of stars right like, right it's like hey man could you guys move over so i could just put this thing it's not like fuck you bro it's like you know what I mean? everyone's like well yeah whatever it's like oh yeah hey good here's some fruit guys oh my god you're the most amazing people in the world. it's like compared to like you know everything pay for pay for, here's some water can you give me some money i was like the thing about cannabis is like it has to be like the first time as long as you take care of the first person yeah they know to reciprocate to the next person and it just kind of just goes around like all that goes around real quickly and then at a certain point you have a good little thing going it's not that hard it's like the me and Vinny have done a million parties with what's that I'll grab Summer in a little bit okay perfect you found her nice um, but yeah we've, we've thrown a bunch of parties and we've had the cops come and just know that we're doing a good thing and they've just been like you know like we had one party but we had uh, DJ Premier and Raekwon oh nice in our backyard at our spot here in Denver right at, at our, and, and it was about 12 o'clock it was like it was like way past 10 o'clock right 10 o'clock's like cut off time but we had already gone to like 12 and I was pretty I was this is back when I was drinking a lot so I was pretty stroppy and they're like dude the cops are outside and I'm like wow I, I go out there and I had already gone out there before okay so when I went out there earlier uh, they were oh yeah so I go out there all stroppy and shit and then the guys are like whoa what's going on you guys like we've been out here already twice what's going on I said dude I told it's it's Raekwon and fucking DJ from here. Just give us like 15 more minutes, and then the one cop goes, "The chef? <laughs> you got the chef back there?" <laughs> I'm like, he, I'm like, yes. He goes, "Come on!" I was like, they come back there and they're like, "Holy fuck!" We had about 600 people in the back, and it was just like, they were like, "All right, 15 more minutes." You know what I mean? I was like, "Yeah, we got it." So it's like if you have the, I mean, if it was a bunch, I mean, I was actually pretty stroppy and drunk too, and it was surprising that because they were like. At, at one point, then then they came back later, and it was like ah, hold hold me back type thing. But up until that point, it was just like, you know, they already know if you're taking care of your people around you, and you're just taking, you're not fucking trashing up the place, what, which which is not the case. You know, we're all pretty fucking. Um, what do you feel the this is the best way we can progress the cannabis industry and how legalization is progressing? And you know because we um, see California and the different states. Uh, here, I mean, here the same problem. I mean, here that hasn't figured it out. That's what I'm saying. The social club is the easiest. It's like literally the gel between everything. It's like social club. It, it's the only way. And the, the thing is, way. it's it's like how wow. every fucking place operates. That's the only reason that Amsterdam. Works. Yeah, because like you know, it sucks that you can't. You go into the dispensary, but you can't chill and smoke and hang out. I mean, that's. And I mean, it doesn't have to be at every dispensary, but it could just right. be like somewhere communal that makes sense. Like, you go, like, oh, hey, every fucking, so many coffee shops should have, like, I mean, even if they were affiliates, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you know what? 
we're all within this like 10 mile range. Why don't we became like an affiliate program where everybody can bring their weed, they show their weed at the thing, they can smoke it inside. If you want to like come in, you got to be a member or, you know what I mean? Like that way it's like, it's a free membership when you buy some weed because you get to go to this club. Because now right. the club is recognized, has a date on it and everything. Oh, cool. The guy just bought it. Welcome to our spot. If you want to join permanently, it's fucking 25 bucks a month or whatever, you know, you come up with a plan. As long as you can deliver and a person's there enough that it makes sense, and everybody's so into loyalty anyway, and it's, everything's digital and easy. Right. And you just fuck it. Like, it was funny. I was thinking about all this years ago when it was all complicated, right? And that was mm. all easy. It still hasn't happened. It's like, dude, I was like already ready when it was like the first RFID bracelets at a festival that I saw. I was like, fucking coffee shop style like go in and don't think about it as a stoner you'd be like oh I'll give me three of those and two of these and bloop 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 and you're like all right on the way out you're like oh I guess we spent $94 but I did, but I got a bunch of shit you know what I mean and as long as it's taken care of and it's smart right and you got a bunch of freebies and, and like you're working with a bunch of like you could literally have like a little permanent fucking thing like this going on with fresh companies and give them all free booths and just be like as long as you're there every day you give you a free booth and you know to give us 100 bucks a month and if i can let you set up in our little corner and we'll have a like never-ending products because they're always around you know what i mean yeah. you just give showcases to people and you, you do nights and comedy nights and whatever and just, it's so sto weed stuff is so easy because stoners are like the easiest people to please all you have to do is give them like like something relaxed and don't put them under too much pressure and they're like oh, and don't make it like a money grab but more of like right. a, like like okay you know you do have to spend money that's the hardest part because I had places that were like so comfortable and cool but then my friends were like they think of everything is free and I'd be like dude I know you're only drinking soda but it still adds up you know what I mean like throw two bucks in the fucking pot once in a while and it was like I had to like run around and like police everybody and the more comfortable you made people the more comfortable they became and the less they want to pay you that's just the way it is it's like you're like if you're a DJ and your friends are all want you to play for free mm -hmm. it's like dude I get paid to do this I, I'll do it but don't fucking think I'm gonna go and go over the top you know what I mean like I, I might just I might hold back a little bit but then when you get there and you'll just go crazy because you're a friend but at the same time that's it's like people take everybody for granted and in cannabis it's hard because it's like half a party and half you know what I mean like right. and that's the social club because it's even harder because now you're trying to be a social guy and party and everyone's like okay and now the monies you know what I mean and then they're like oh you, you gotta make me pay and it's like yeah dude everybody pays but luckily now the way the system works it makes more sense like dude just sign up with your freaking phone click the button it'll automatically go into our account every month it's only eight bucks or something dumb you know what I mean like it's like a fucking renting it's like doing any kind of Patreon or anything else it's like you you if you appreciate the artist you should pay him because it's the way life is you know what I mean like a lot of us are don't <laughs> most people don't have money you know a lot of us especially like it's not like the sh doing pod like people think podcast like I, I listen I, I see other podcasts are like you're making twenty thousand dollars a podcast or you're making a million you know a hundred million like you look at all these it's like crazy because they're on this sort of they're not talking about weed they, you know, they don't swear it's like well there you go that that sucks I couldn't do, I couldn't do that you know what I mean those are like two things I don't want to do so this is a non monetizable sort of stream at this point maybe down the road there's something smarter but YouTube or anywhere else forget about it like you know you're better off just you, like we just have really cool sponsors that we deal with direct and that makes life easier because it's stuff that we would actually want to sell whereas if you let them put a commercial on your podcast it's going to be like it probably doesn't make sense and could be somebody you hate you know what I mean and that would yeah. piss me off more than and our show would be cut into these little snippets automatically with these lame commercials and that would be shitty so when you do these long format shows you're pretty much at the mercy of, of working out of your own way you know what I mean yeah, yeah. And, and I just wanted to say because uh, I was talking about the Art of Mary Jane we did the last print but recently last year we should, you should do like one a year or something like that well we're doing six issues now so we just okay. relaunched last year mm -hmm. and we're doing a high tech digital magazine with videos animated mm -hmm. gifts voice mm -hmm. activated articles so now it's moving into the future mm -hmm. and we might be setting up similar platforms like Leafly bringing it to the New York markets right. and Colorado markets and because we feel like there's not enough third party marketing platforms mm -hmm. for the industry you know there's only like two or three and it's kind of too consolidated how is the um, I mean because the whole magazine industry kind of collapsed in my opinion once 
you know, once we really all became so fucking digital, like everyone's got an right. iPad now, right? So it's like, <laughs> I mean, you got to move with the times. Well, I mean, I don't know. I get a magazine and I'll be like this. I'll be doing one of these on the magazine. I'll be like, oh yeah, it's a magazine. Fuck, you know. I'm like, like I'm so used to being able to zoom in on weed and check it out or whatever because that's yeah. how. Like those are the benefits, but the key, like I was saying before, you definitely should print at least one or two a year, but if you do six, like whenever, you do doing like one every other month, basically. Uh, bi-monthly, yeah, yeah. so, but it's like, it's working very I mean, well. it's, it's kind of, I would say even quarterly works too, just because the reality is that the when you deliver something too consistently, like, and that was also the same when I was doing parties, I was, okay. doing, I was doing monthly parties, and yeah. you kind of saw where people would like get comfortable with you after a while because right. you're like, oh, you're going to be here every month, you know what I mean? And I'm like, how do you know? Like, maybe we'll just not be here next month, and there's right. a time when you won't be there, and then they're like, well, it, you know, didn't pay attention, but it's like, so if you're like, I think quarterly is really cool too, just because it, the, the seasons, cannabis, and the fashion and everything is quarter like really quarterly you know what i mean like and every other month is, is is almost a burnout as bad as every month just because you get all back on your heels on the first month like yeah we got two months man we'll right, whip right. it together don't worry it's a weed <laughs> magazine and you then you end up not delivering the product that you want to deliver which is mm. you know really the whole problem with printing shit is it's permanent right like yeah. it's really like you made that that's a real thing yes so Every other month, I would be already. I, I'm already overwhelmed on yeah. fucking every week. Every week doing a podcast is like too much, right? Because the weeks, but it makes our weeks go by fast. Like me and Vinny will both call each other on Thursday, and he'll go, "It's Thursday already," and I'll be like, "Yep, guess I should start making a fucking promo for it." So I don't even do my promo till the night before, literally at midnight, because I'm just like things change so rapidly in the cannabis industry, and people are so flaky. Mm. That if you plan people too far ahead, like okay, March fifteenth. Oh, sorry, March fifteenth. I'm having you, and, and this day, you will not show up. You Ever. will change. It's never happened. I've, every single time, the guys are like, "Oh, God, can I change it to next week?" And I'll be like, "Dude, dude, I made the flyer. I just made the flyer, and I put it out, and I have a hundred likes already. Chronicles. And if I take yeah. the hundred likes and get rid of them, I get zero likes, and now I look like an idiot because you're, or I misspell something, or I do this, or fucking, can you change that? Can you add this? Can, can you add one of those? And I'm, I'm like, feeling I can, fucking I've already, zooted. I've designed it. I've designed it the way I like it." And now you want me to throw what on there? You know what I mean? Like yeah. this logo and that name. And I'm like, oh, man. Now I got to go through. And, and I don't do anything. I do it all myself and easy and hack. It's like hack, hack, hack programs you should never use together. Like, totally. come, do not mix these two together. Fuck it. Mix them together. I'm just doing it layers. Like, I'll be like, <laughs> like, just, and it's, it's, you know, I know that it's so small Where's that no one's going to ever see it. Whereas when you print shit, it's the opposite. Where's like, the truck? all of a sudden you're like, whoa, that looks like shit. You're like, oh, well, I filmed it on my phone. You're like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> you're like, oh, I thought it would be fine. And it's like, no, we're talking about printing shit. I need vector files. I need this. So you explain these to people who don't understand it. There we go. Yeah. And Tate's they're like, the you know, you've dealt with it. How many people How many people have you had to explain vector files to? Got Tommy oh, Chong. there he is. I had no idea. I saw you follow me a second ago, and I was talking. Hey, where's the truck? I walked around looking for you. Sorry. Where is it? I need the All the way on the back. All the way on the back. Just straight out the door and just go. Straight Summer's back. eating. She should walk in on a little bit. All right, cool. And then I'll have Tate after real quick. There you go. So you can jump on in a sec. I got Summer coming in a minute. Tate in up, the y'all? house. What's up? What's up? I, I already heard you when I first walked in the door, so I was like, I know I got him. Uh, <laughs> That's why I called you. So, uh, but yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, there you go. So right here, this is Tommy. Uh, exclusive interview photo shoot. Tommy's the man. We did with Tommy Chong. That's awesome. This is what launched the magazine next to High Times in 10 plus countries, Weed World and Skunk. That's great. I saw when he was you ever, when he was on the skunk cover, right? It was funny because I was they had me on the cover. Not sorry, not skunk. Um, dope. Okay. Right? So he was on the cover of Dope, and I was on the cover of Dope, and we were at the same show together. We both had our magazines, and we were walking around, and I, I and they took a picture of me, and I don't know whether I I never got that picture. Like that's the one I want. Is like, oh, we got our cover shots, and I had the same beard, and we had the same vibe, and it was kind of <laughs> funny because I was like, oh no, am I the next fucking? Uh, that was that was part of the whole reason I shaved too, because it was like starting to look like Jack Hair slash fucking. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, oh no, that's not a good look. But you, you know, it's uh. Basically, the life term of most companies, I'd say, you know, 60, 70, 80% is three years. Generally, two to three years. 
if you're not ahead of the curve and you're not reinventing yourself and getting in with the times, yeah. then you're basically staying like a dead dinosaur. But well, Tommy's lucky. Yeah. He was the perfect, like, he just, like, had to wait long enough for us to catch up to him. And then, I mean, he had to go through all the things he had to go through, yeah. which made him even more real, you know what I mean, for everybody else. Because you're like, oh, that's that guy that had that. And so... He, 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 he basically didn't realize that he was setting himself up for fucking the perfect sort of landing right. compared to like a lot of other people who have a high, like it's loving it in the 80s, but nobody gives a fuck now, you know what I mean? Like, well, when he was on High Times, I think that's really what catapulted him uh, in the eye of the industry. You know, even though he was doing the movies and stuff, hmm. when we... Well, I mean, magazines used to, like I said, magazines were the shit. Like I, it's so funny, when I was flying last time, yeah. I was with my kid, and he's 10, uh, or 11 now, or be 11. Um, it was just like, I was, because my wife was like, if you want to grab a magazine, to him, and he's like, what? <laughs> like, you know, I just like, didn't even like, nah, like, right. wasn't even thinking about it. And yeah. I remembered like, before every flight, like, fucking clockwork, I had to go to that store, and I would spend way too much money on magazines like I always had like at least four to six magazines to get on that flight because I knew I had a fucking six seven hour flight right or whatever stupid you know and I'd be like all right I'm gonna have this this and I'll grab one of those and one of these and it was just like if you were really into something whatever you were into and obviously you couldn't buy high times ever at the airport now you can there's like places I've actually seen it we were at the airport and train stations nationwide and I was just like oh shit so that's yeah so now that kind of stuff doesn't phase you as much but there was like that time where you know I'd be like smuggling my own magazines on and buy some other ones and stick them in those ones just because it's like can't be writing this on the fucking plane you know what I mean so well, it, and I would have to say you know if it wasn't for High Times magazine we wouldn't be where we are with cannabis legalization especially with well, normal well, and they, they definitely were the the main the main like signal for everybody but yeah. again they kind of lost their way through the years with, with a couple different things right? they kind of like Lot, there was a point in time so when Tom Forsato owned the magazine which yeah. was like a long okay. in, the, in the beginning of first aid maybe I don't, I'm not 100% sure Se- technically 70s had. yeah he started so he started it and he was a smuggler and he was fucking the, the shit like he was properly like alright this guy he was a lady left of his time right right yeah like got chased you know crashed a plane full of weed got chased by the man you Legendary know like, like did all the fucking crazy shit you could do but yeah. he had placed it, but he also knew that like he, he wanted to create this magazine and he didn't give a fuck like he was like the thing is that that time period if you look at those 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 ads are the best because you're like all yeah. right these guys are using like double fucking nostril snorters and fl- you know things and all sorts <laughs> of like other paraphernalia and it was like a combo of cannabis and <laughs> coke and a lot of <laughs> throw some speed in there like they didn't give a fuck you know what i mean it was like all drugs and it was so it was kind of like rolling tray and and then they then they changed a bit then they got more cannabis related and i was there when they changed i saw there was a moment in time where they really fucked up which was around mm. 99 99 maybe something like that what did they do well they they completely oh they sold uh part of their they basically sold out 100% to this guy well not 100% but like they sold out enough majority that he he pretty much changed the direction and wanted to take all the fucking like no cover shots anymore he wanted people yeah he wanted to make it more of a like a magazine about like things and people and then he wanted a lot less weed and I was just like dude this is a formula for disaster and the worst part about it was that he was a friend of a friend of mine and and I was like sitting in on conversations where I was like dude, I think High Times is going to be, like, destroyed. Like, and I told people, and then I think they had maybe two issues. Yeah. Three, possibly. And then it got right back to where it needed to be because everybody mm. was like, this is not a good idea. Like, right. they, they had, like, two or three. And, that, and so it was the exact opposite effect, like, where they put people on there instead of cannabis in a cannabis-related magazine. Right. And it was like, nah, that ain't working at all, you know. Um, actually, what's interesting is that uh, we were possibly going to, I don't know if he's going to come today. Yeah. But um, the uh, High Times photographer... Uh, now my mind is blanking. Uh, our German friend uh, is uh, moved here to Colorado, and uh, it's like back in the day when 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 I had all those artists, when I had all those guys in my place, is because I had you know nobody had a, a really good camera at the time. It was like 
to have a high high quality camera and know how to take pictures of weed really hard like it was almost impossible like anybody who thought they were a photographer you'd say like take a picture of weed it'd be like overexposed and look like shit you know what I mean? we used the hassle back oh yeah well, 50,000 for that bad boy you are you are and those those, select those are, those are next level shots those <laughs> are like huge it's like having the biggest chip now on your shit where you're just like whatever bro take a picture of the moon right now I'll see you in a minute you know right. but, uh, but uh, no in general the the uh the, the ability to have good photos back in the day was really hard so I was always eager to have anybody take quality pictures and when I was harvesting sage and I had Rob and all those guys over it was like I, I think I still use Rob shot in our original catalog nice. um, even though it's like nothing compared to now it's like I've got 500 megapixels, you know, whatever. Everybody's like, crazy. it's all about photography now, you know, Instagram and everything. It's, you know, it's 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 actually part of the ruining of weed is the fact that we now have all these awesome visuals of weed. Like, so now everybody understands what we always understood, which is like, if you look under a microscope before, you'd just be like, holy fuck, dude, this is amazing, right? I remember like taking my nails and like smashing buds under the microscope and like pulling them apart and seeing how far I could stretch it and being like, holy fuck, dude, I think that's like a hundred times. X, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. stretching it across. So you were seeing these things, but it was also like now I would never waste my time looking through a thing. I just put it to a video and get even better quality. And you get Zoom Gardens and people like that online on Instagram putting these fucking crazy shots together where you're just like, all right, fucking throw it in the sh-. like th- Like we have Exotic uh, Tech, which is uh, if you go to Exotic Tech and check them out, they have. Uh, 3D, they do 30,000 shots of one bud, stitch it all together and you can zoom through the bud, like you get inside the calyx, like you're in the middle of the bud, looking outside of the bud and you're like, oh fuck, and they've got these on those giant 3D screens, you know, those big big ones Mm. like they use now in those places and then we can have somebody inside, same same bud and you can manipulate them by hand, like fucking minority report and they make them smaller, make them bigger, go inside, go around them. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's it's we're getting to that point where we're so fucking. But it's deep, uh, so deep in with the highest quality visuals. Too much pictures, not enough uh, information. Because I well, think people well, are don't well, like no smells. I mean, right. cannabis is a smell tactile thing. The first thing you do when you get weed is you smell it. You don't like. I mean, you can touch it too if you have to. If you have to, but for the most part, it's the smell that's the the first indicator. I'm sure there'll be an app out for that soon. And and so when you, oh, there will be, but it, it it's it'll take you could actually smell it. It'll your take phone. years to perf- smell a vision. It'll take years oh. to perfect because they're the problem is that you'll get people who will rely on other it's the data points that they're going to have are going to be bullshit by the time it gets to them because mm. if it's gone from you to me to them, like out of the gate you've lost half of the shit because they just don't have tests for it right so like you got the top 128 terpenes and flavonoids or whatever that's about as where we're going to be maybe 300 maybe whatever you know they might but there's thousands of in between ones that are just like we don't know you know what I mean yeah. like that affects that this we got this oh you forgot about the dark matter in between that creates the, there's shit that we just don't understand because it's and it's changing on a daily right like it's like as we speak you know if it's like even if it's oil it's still changing you know things are changing flowers changing oil's changing the best you're going to do is leave it as trikes in the cold that's the most stable shit ain't going Shut too far you know what I mean if you go from you turn that into rosin and you're fucked you know what I mean anything you've, you've pressed you better just smoke it right like you're not sitting on rosin for five years but maybe I haven't seen anybody do it yet but everybody's but you can sit on hash for fucking 20 years you know what I mean like and if it's pressed hash it will be okay but the outside will be fucked it'll be that center core what's that's the best cure time for hash years a years. real hash yeah years like, like you, to make it the finest the best yeah because it won't change for the first couple years you know what I mean like that's that's the thing is like you you time is of the essence on that shit like if you really want to have like take some dry like the problem is that if it's water you're going to have a problem yeah so you take water hash and age it 
might be okay, but it's very hit and miss. If you have dry sieve that you age, way better because it's basically just little tiny oil droplets that are surrounded in little membranes yeah. that are all sitting in a little bag together. You know what I mean? And you keep it there. Yeah. Keep it cold. When it comes out, it should just like, you know, break off and you hardly change any color for a while. But if it sits for, but if it sits for a couple of years and it's like squeezed really tight and put somewhere t- at the right temperature, you come back, it'll be just like gooey all of a sudden. You're yeah. like, whoa, what the fuck happened here? Mm-hmm. And now you take that, you roll it in your hands, boom, you got a temple ball, nice and dark. And you're like, you hit that with a lighter, it bubbles like fucking. And you're like, okay, there we go. And I've taken like shitty hash, left it, and come back, and it's like pretty good. It's like not the greatest, but it looks way better than it did when it went what in about there. about rosin? The Rosin shouldn't age very long, I don't think. I mean, the thing is, if you put heat to something, you've already sort of kind of activated it. You've got it going, you know what I mean? Now you flow, to make that oil flow, you had to heat it up enough to get that flow out there, which killed all the Best membranes. Best cure time for that, you say? Pretty much right away. <laughs> like, that's like, right away. that's like a smoke now thing. There's really? no cure really required. Cure just makes it, like, shrivel up a little bit and get darker, and mm. then the taste is not as... All those tar- all those light terps that you would have got like anything that's a, like a low like an 85 degree terp thing where it's probably gone past that point and if it didn't it just disappeared anyway. So it within like a month or two. Yeah, a couple of- months. I mean, you could you can get away if you keep it in the fridge. It'll last longer. You know what I mean? That's one of those things where you don't want to have like out here. Shit, you just got to be really like fucking smoke that stuff pretty much. But if you have a cold cure, like cold cure sits better. Mm. And then you know the, you'll have just the oilier shit. If it's, it depends. Sometimes it's encased in oil and it sits perfect. Other times it's got not enough oil in it, just like half of that much. Right. That starts to dry out because it starts to pull back into wherever it's in there. Yeah. And then you come back later and you're like, oh, it's a little chalkier. And then it's like, that isn't getting any better. It's like when it gets, but that's why like when you put it under the sort of like you seal it up tighter, stick it away. You're, there's no oxidation on the outside right. the whole thing about it normally is oxidation because there's air around like if you have a half half a jar of weed it's not going to last nearly as long as a full jar of weed obviously because there's less weed but right. just if you like let it sit around and come back to it and check it like a week later or two weeks later it, it, and unless you are really controlling your atmosphere the the, the the half a jar will probably have oxidized more because there's a lot of headroom in there and that headroom is like got more action going whereas this one is just full of weed mm. and there's a lot less air so that means there's less air to work with yeah so you're you know you want to keep your that's why you roll your shit up when you have your bag you don't leave a big empty bag and if you leave a big empty bag it's going to dry out if you hey. roll that bag up it's govs govs the govs is here oh is he sitting on the bike bro oh shit you might have to nice. get what's his name where's, where's Elliot he's sitting right next to him Elliot's with him yeah oh well then tell him come on oh. alright you might have to move over for the yeah. gov <laughs> we, <can laughs> let go. we might have to get the gov the gov in there Nice. That's, that's some big moves, Jerry. Yeah. Big moves. Big, gotta, gotta have yeah, I'll let you. But uh, no, yeah. super cool talking. That was a good, good Thank talk. You, I think you might, we might have a show here. And then, we, uh, do we just kind of hang around. Normally, it's like we smoke so much weed, we get <laughs> half as much information. Can I tell about the Mary Jane Cup? Or? Yeah, one more time. Yeah, for sure. Give yeah, yeah. So uh, we got the Mary Jane just Cup. Give him, just give him a little. Cannabis connoisseurs and honorable judge. We're going to be doing the... Mary Jane Cup Smoke Out and Growers Ball, April 25th in New York City at Work and Roll. Mm-hmm. So hit us up on the DM, The Art of Mary Jane, or The Mary Jane Cup. And then we're do- it's a two-part series. So we're Dose. doing the second series on June 22nd. That's the official awards and ceremonies and mega after party. Mega. 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 So, That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So we're How gonna- many have you had now? Do you know? Yeah, this is our third annual Mary Jane Cup. We've mm-hmm. done 20 plus events, yeah, but we're just really making no, moves. I know you guys this. have been doing more than just the three of the three things that for sure. So that's good to hear that it's rolling along. It's one of those, you know, uh, we have. It's like we have to keep rolling. We have to yes. keep pushing. We can't like give in and be all like, you know what? Someone else will take care of it because they won't. Like that's the biggest problem about doing stuff like that is that you, as fun as it is, it's a lot of work and. You pretty much, the only way you're successful is if you're like working on the, whatever you're working on, it's the next one. It's not yeah. like, it's not, I mean, you, you're doing magazine, you don't understand it more than anything. I was doing fashion, fashion, same thing. It's six months mm-hmm. ahead. Like if you're, you're doing what's now, you're fucked. You gotta be 
with the right people doing what's coming because that's the ones that make the money you know, mm-hmm. or, or they just at least get the get the initial sort of thing going because after that it's just a bunch of knockoffs anyway so you know, I mean, you know our goal is to create the you know best venue and you know the more people that can contribute we can create a better venue for everybody and you know our mission is just to bring everybody back together bring camaraderie mm-hmm. honor and integrity back to the industry as a whole and raise the vibration. Uh, 160 of people is the is the perfect tribe size. So right, so if you keep them in these little About like 150, yeah, 140 yeah. to 160, like that's it. Your brain can't well, handle anymore. Anything, really? Yeah, anything above that, you're just like making up stories and connecting dots and both, you know, putting some, you know, putting knocking out some of these ones to get that one. And right. 160 is like our tribal sort of thing. Like that's yes. where we're thriving the most. Yeah. We're really like we know everybody, they know us. Yes. We can communicate. We haven't left. Nobody, nobody's left behind. Right. You know what I mean? Once you get into the thousands, it's like it's, then you start. That's why you need fucking government. You know, <laughs> you know it's like bullshit. <laughs> you know, it all turns stupid. So yeah, like bucks. Not that you should do parties that small, but those are. I think those are the ones that are always the, like, yeah, it was fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. Because it feels bigger than it is. It's like 150 people. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. in general, whenever I'm doing podcasts, I'm always like, oh, there's only a couple hundred people in the chat. I was like that's. That means there'll be thousands of people later if there's 150 there right. that are just like right now hanging yes. out. 100, 150, that's a lot. That's always like a good number of people and that's like a chat gang. You know what I mean? That's like yeah. our chat gang is about 100 people. It's like There's like 50, it's weird, 54 comes up all the time where it's like, that's like our core. Like there's 54 core people that would like probably do anything to, for the show. You know what I mean? Like they're here no matter what. We're like, I, And I'll say it to them jokingly, like what is there, 54 people in the chat? Like, How do you know? I was like, because this is like one of those shows where this is like our core people right now. You yeah. know what I mean? And then anything above that, that's because it's something really cool and they want to check it out. You know what I mean? But I, always, I can see it like every time where I'm just like, oh, the 54. Yeah. One of the <laughs> biggest things that we feel is like the legacy growers that came before everybody else, they pretty much need precedence than all these newbies that are coming into the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, these legacy growers that have well, they, been 20, they, 30, they 40 years into the game. They just need to, they just need to not think that, 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 I mean, just like we all do. We all think we know way more than we know when we're 20, in our 20s, right? We're like, I mean, everybody, <laughs> everybody thinks they know everything. They, we right? know it. And, and with weed, it's even worse because they're like, dude, I've been smoking since I'm 50. I was like, dude, I've been smoking since I was 11 and I'm 50. It's because you're a smoker, like, doesn't mean <laughs> But, you know, there's right. been, I've learned a whole time. I never, you know, I've, I, I probably, you know, I came up with some pretty in, innovative things along the way that were pretty unique. I don't know. I'm sure I'm not the only guy. There's plenty of done it. But at the same time, at that moment, in that time, in that space, you were like the one. Like, hey, dude, it's for, you're doing it now with your records. Tell us about that real quick. Uh, uh, if you want to set or break a record, I'm the guy because uh, Guinness Book of World Records, they don't take any records. Nothing with cannabis. Yeah, I mean, you can't be like. Cause I did the and they're, they're owned by Guinness Beer. Oh my God! Really? Go so I did. The, I did the world's biggest joint back in That's the day. Funny. I attempted the world's biggest joint. Did you? With a five hundred. How big? Five hundred grams. But five hundred. So that's yeah, about a pound, little over a pound. pound. Okay. And we did it with. Um, we didn't end up. We ended up doing less because it was like we realized like we're not going to do that. We got too much. We got we went a little overkill. It was like two something. But we were way over the like original thing, which was really small. It was like a hundred something grams or something dumb. And I was like, like it wasn't a Guinness Book of World Records. It was just the only thing you could find online. And this yeah. is back in. The only 2000 record. or something like that maybe you know 2000 2001 and it was like the only thing we could find at the time and we're like oh we blew that away okay, nice what is so that, that like a 200 grams that's grams? a pounder. pounder that's a pounder right here sweet so cannabis, so cannabis what, what, connoisseur rolled that bad boy at the last Mary Jane cup nice I was always putting hash in mine and fucking it all up and I'd be like oh, just <laughs> throw some hash in here you know what I mean and I'd be like yeah, flaming up and oh, yeah so yeah I've I've, I've, I've uh you had a few moments, a few close calls. I there think uh, you know what we can do is it, we can start you know it, getting people into the competition. We could do. You oh know, yeah, let's do it. Let's let's make some categories. Let's get some. Yeah, let's get yeah. some things up. Biggest I, joint in the cause world. Because I, I remember doing it like, and I was like, oh, we're gonna do this, and then and then it, it we fucked up though because we had a kid working for us. How long ago? When was that? It's like 2000, I think. Two thousand. No, probably. no, no. Wait, this had to be a little earlier. This mm-hmm. had to be a little earlier. Maybe this was like in ninety. Eight or something like that. 90, 97, 98. Yeah. Because the problem was we had a Dutch kid. It might have been the biggest we, joint. Oh, it was at, at the time. time. It was. We had this Dutch kid working for us, and he was, he was like fresh out of school, and he was like, oh yeah, well let's go to Reuters, and he went to Reuters, and like that fucked us right up. Cops were like honest, like in a heartbeat. They were like, if you do this, we will arrest every single one of you, and that's why we had to move it to the next day and somewhere else and keep it all hidden because we were like, like we were already public because it was during the cup, 
and we were, they were like, how are you going to do this? And I was like, oh, no, everyone's going to come in with 500 people with five grams, and they're going to all put it into a pile, and then we're going to roll a joint. So no one's bringing, we're not bringing in 500 grams. We're just, and he goes, no, the minute it goes together and someone touches it, they're getting arrested. And I was just like, mm. no, come on. And they were, like, so serious about it. We were just like, can't risk this. It's too much, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it was, like, in a real public place, and we were, like, you know, ready to fucking ready and, uh, and like last second you know the classic stoner shit like guess we're moving it you know what I mean yeah. so we ended up doing it a different night different yeah. place and we went a little less because we were like you know fuck it we're gonna have to just do it ourselves. we're not gonna rely on because originally it was like we were basically gonna give everybody five grams to give us back you know what I mean anyway yeah. and so we were like well, let's be avoid I think we did 192 grams that day and it was like alright we knew there was gonna be less people yeah. and it wasn't gonna be as big and big. We, didn't, we couldn't get the record anyway because at the time we were like yeah 98 I think you were probably the first to yeah. be Inducted, right? Uh, we, we, we were, yeah, we were up there back in the day. I mean, we could pull that that video up and pull some clips off of that because that one was a big ass joint too. That was like 120 grams, I think, or something like that. So it was pretty good at the time. And that was, that was like, you know, at the moment, it was it was already at the fucking droopy droopy moment where you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, oh no, like this could be the it, you know what I mean? And yeah. So and, and I remember asking him later, like, whatever happened to that thing? And they're like, oh, they just took it backstage and ripped it up and rolled fifty blunts out of it or a hundred blunts or some <laughs> bullshit. You know? And I was just like, no. You know the governor one? Traffic oh, down. Like this. Probably. I'm, I'm, we're in line. We're, gonna, huh? we're in line. He's not here very long, but yeah. If, the, the, but if she can bring him, yeah. no, yeah. he's not here. Yeah. He's down there. Okay. Summer's gonna be here in yeah. a second, though. Yeah, yeah. Let's we're get the governor on. Go get the good. Yeah, well, you you go go push and go like, man, that was the best interview ever. That <laughs> yeah. was the greatest. Oh, you oh, gotta go get on the oh, other gun show. Go there. Oh, yeah. Show, show, show. Choo, choo, choo. Yeah, I'm a couple gunshots like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand there. Nice, like, nice to see you again. Thank you. Boom, exactly. I Thank think you. everything bagel's got a little too much cream cheese on it. Yeah, what happened to Dave, speaking of which? That's, you know, hey. Is he Make it should happen. Is he making it happen? No, Dave, I don't know where Dave's at. He's oh. posting stuff on the internet. I thought he was coming through to fucking round up the gov. Round up the gov. Round up the gov. Round up the gov. We're in line. I guess they still talk about the flag. Oh, that's all we need to talk about. That's uh, yeah, I, I yeah. said. Hey, yeah. we're the guys that threw the yeah. threw down the hemp flag back yeah. in the day, and she goes, "Yeah." <laughs> she was like, "They still talk about that." Yeah, yeah. So let's do a hemp flag. I know. We're, we're so close. We're so close. We're so close. We're so we're close. So close. Get, right there. We might get the girl yeah. himself. We should be able to because we are the Adam Dunn Show. We have but we have done better. We we, we took. This is a moment in time where we can speak about at least one of our accolades for once that we did. Right. Oh, on, look buddy. at there. Oh, speaking of which, we got a, we got a, we got a filler. You got a filler? We got a seat filler here, right here. Seat filler real quick, dude. We need a seat filler. Seat filler. Seat fillers. The govs, we need to keep the govs seat warm. We got the gov coming through, hopefully. We're trying. Can we smoke? No, no. We can't smoke. I just ever have the governor come through in a second. You're talking about can we smoke? Let's bring over you Tim. Go what fun is this going to be? Oh, jeez. Now this is great. <laughs> I, I, we might get it. He's only here for a little bit. Yeah. No, no, for sure. We're, Let me see what Summer's doing. No, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, Doss is part of it, too. He can get Doss in here. <laughs> Fuck it all up. What's going on? Fucking you, shit up. Yeah, no. I said, I said it. I said the word, and you were there. What? Fuck up? Yeah, don't bang around. Don't be so bangy. This is a tough table. Vinny, Vinny didn't think about the rubber thing. I told him, bring the rubber thing. Watch. I'm going to say it to him, too. Oh, stop it. Oh. 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 So sorry. Sorry for the clanking. I don't even have sound effects because Vinny's not here to uh, cover the clanks. What are you doing now? I'll twist it up. Oh yeah, I just put yeah. I was I do like one of those twisted like, sister. Oh, you're good, I guess. Just, yeah. just so you don't get like a Yankee doodle. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! All right, Mr. Mike, Mike, Mike Attack. What's going on? So we had we've I think we've almost done the whole show. I think all we have to do is you're done. Sweet. I think so. I think all I got to do is call it in now. Good and uh, and uh, we pretty much have a show. Why so early? Because we've been here for a couple hours now. And uh, Vinny's got to drive all the way back and bring like a thing to the show to put it in. Yeah. But, Beautiful drive. But I think I, I think we could do, um, we could just like walk around and just do the intro, me and Dave, and get it over with. There she is. Oh yeah, now we got a real guest. A real even, guest. We don't even need you anymore. <laughs> No, I'm he, out, he, he's dude. out. He's out. He's yeah, out. Yeah, I'm done. He's, he's he's not even. That was Showing it. That time. was it. That was it. That was as far as we get. You can come back. 
Yeah, you, uh, after the real guest is done. Yeah, you can come back. You're our filler. You're the seat filler. What do we got here? <laughs> Stop uh, banging. A pie pound cake. Vinny, you forgot the one thing I told you, the rubber thing. It's like it's bangy. Oh, it's so clangy, big bang. Jenny clangy, big bang. Vinny always forgets the rubber thing. You and your rubber. You forgot your rubbers, dude. Now we're now we're now we're, now, now our table's pregnant, dude. Now you're making babies. <laughs> your table? No, no, you got. It's, it's okay. It's, it's such a delay. No, it doesn't matter about the delay, dude. I'm talking about the banging on the fucking table. He's like, you gotta be, you gotta be super. Like you get a guy like this guy over here. Oh, look, I stole get all up. his hash. Hey, get up. Stop banging it. I'm not even touching shit. You're banging it. We need a mood mat. We need mood mats. It's all right. It's too late now. Mm, Nice. Too bad we can't fucking smoke it. I know. I'm going to go smoke some weed. I I know. It's like the first show. Real people. Huh? Who did? (laughs) Oh, you sent him to the gov? Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. Oh, bangy McBanger. Oh, no, you got it back. Yeah. All right, so that was that was the, the tater himself. <laughs> Not the dictator, but the, just the straight-up tater. Oh, speaking of taters, we have tater, we have the other tate also. Yeah. So, so what we could, I was thinking I could do the intro from here while you drive down there, and I could just keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Perfect. And then you can, because we're already got two hours in now, I think, right? Or close. Close, yeah. We're, we're getting close. Yeah, we're getting close. So we'll get another hour, and we'll have three hours in, then we can do an hour from you going to there, and when you get there, you just click the fucking thing, and then we're dead. Yeah. And then the show's over, and then I hang out. Well, we're going to have Marky Mark start it. Yeah. Start it while I'm driving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can yeah. be on the Zoom, and we're on uh-huh. the Zoom. And then when you get there, you click this in there, and people get to exactly, watch this. Exactly, yes. So you have already got the chance to go I'm, watch this. We are seeing the future. Oh, my God. We're <laughs> I living, can see the future. We're living in the future right now. <laughs> totally. Hey, Summer. <laughs> she made it. Dun, dun, dun. We didn't lie. Dun, dun. We're not liars. We're not liars now. See, we're bringing it. You have to bring Yao over here, too, in a minute from 80,000 80, kicks. I mean, and do you want a Morris? Yeah, if he's around. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. But tell Morris to bring the gov. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the flag. Come on over. Bring right. the gov. Right. Come on. We're going to talk about the flag. Jesus this. Christ. Talk about the flag. This. Flag, 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 flag. Go ahead flag. and jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course. If he comes, you can just hang out. It's okay. so good. Sorry, the table's, the table's bouncy and makes a lot of noise, so you got to be a little, a little selective for our listeners. Of course, he put the thing on his spot. There go. Nice. And uh, so welcome. So I'm just, I'd see, I put you on the flyer without even thinking. I was just like, I'm putting her on. I'm not even going to ask. I'm not even going to see if she's awake. No, I, you don't need to, uh, Adam. Uh, Dad. <laughs> I was like, we got to, we, we know you're there. I already saw your post that you were on your way. So I was like, all right, she's, she's really there. I put Ryan on. I haven't even seen him. Is he here? Laughlin? Yeah. No, he's planting 250 <laughs> oh, acres yeah. of hemp right now. Oh, wow. I knew that could be a possibility. So at least he's doing the, he's doing God's work. Yeah. He got a legacy award along with um, 10 of us last night for the 10th year of NOCO. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. he will. If anybody deserves it, it's Ryan. He, uh, we were there on the planting, right, Vinny? <laughs> yeah, we the first and year. We were there for the harvest. We were there for the planting. We were there for the harvest, and he did all the work in between. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That year was a rough year. That was one of those like, oh, I guess it doesn't always work out the way you think it's going to work oh. out. Like it was a sporadic, it was like a male pattern baldness sort of situation where it was like over here. I was just discussing that. (laughs) Really? We had a little area over here. Oh, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Shush. The hat hat went flying. And he was like, no. (laughs) My hat. Ah. My bald spot. Not my bald spot. Anyway, that was like one of those, like, it was weird because there was like a hemp plant here and a hemp plant there. Here plant, there plant, but it wasn't like a proper field until like a few spots, and then it was like, uh, so we didn't get so, uh, and and then he mm-hmm. broke the machine like right out of the gate. Oh no! Oh, right. Like he yeah. like he tried and it like wrapped up around the fucking cutter thing, and so Aww. it was like a and pretty. Then Kim Sidwell drove her car straight through it. That no. Was... <laughs> <laughs> Kim got some really good shots that year. That was cool. She got some awesome shots. Yeah. And, she uh, does incredible. And then there was like a drone shot that. Uh, Takata put out on one of these things. It was pretty cool. It was like a drone. Somebody had a drone that year, so they had flown a drone mm. around. So it was like, 
and none of us saw it until recently, which was kind of cool because it was like, oh, that was like 10 years ago. Oh, you know? really? So, oh, so cool. That's, that's when things turn cool, like around 10 years. Like, yeah. You go through your boxes or something, and you're like, oh, 10 years. Oh, this is kind of... Like, right? Somehow, magically, they're it's way weird. better. They're way better than when you first put them in. It's weird <laughs> for, I think, like people like us that have been rocking for so long in the same mission. Yeah. You know, and we look back because there's been years, you know, I'm obviously the last 10 years have been pretty awesome to, to watch the growth just go explode, you know, whether brands might kind of go up and down, up and down the industry itself kind of just continue to grow and grow. But like, remember back in the 90s and like 2000s, there were years where I'd be like, man, you know, like this is such a mission to fight for, but like, dang. You know, oh, this no, is so it was, much it was work. A, it, was a, it was a definitely a two steps forward. You need mom step going forward, everywhere. Two steps back. Well, everywhere. but then you'd look back and be like, wow, look at the last five years and how far we've come. Look at the last 10 years. Look at the last 15, 20, 25, 30 now where it's like, damn, you know, we have really made big progress. And look at, you know, all these awesome companies that are out and new innovative products and you know i was just telling a story about how like i had my first swatch from him traders you know like way back in the day when really when the, when the two guys came from there they came over to amsterdam the original guys from him traders like the two dudes from jersey or whatever was oh like, um you mean uh steve logothetis and uh, mm, uh big, robert big guys big dudes i think so Kind of, they I came, think so. Kind of I was came. too young. We'd have to ask mom, and she'd yeah. be like, "Oh, it was these guys." Yeah, they were know? like, they were, I mean, they were the OGs for sure, and they came and they gave us some swatches, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And like, yeah. Like to me, these little, like, tiny little pieces of hemp were like the fucking. No, there was literally like a, a, like a handful uh, of hemp fabrics in the world at that yeah. point. You know, yeah. there was like two out of Europe, like one out of China that Donnie was the first to bring in, and like <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Um, you know, and the then AW. like you know, what a couple from um, Thailand, you know, and that was the little like 12, 14 the inch wide hand ones. loom yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, you couldn't do a whole lot with that. And, and it, they were bag, you know, bag worthy about it. Yeah. Time. Yeah. No, there was definitely a handful and like they were living under Rob's couch and they were under, yeah. under his bed or whatever. And it was like, totally I had our little swatch and we cruised around and yeah. trying to impress people and dream our dreams but, but it also is really cool now now you see the plastics and now you see products where you're just like mm -hmm. oh stuff like look at that right there look at that bucket is that that must be a hemp bucket i'm imagining yeah it that looks totally like, looks like it's uh, a hemp plastic uh, bucket that just went past <laughs> us you guys see. like a full-on five gallon like bucket a nice, a nice looking bucket yeah it's a nice looking bucket you got there you know master. you've been in the hemp scene too, too long mean, when like, you start to appreciate buckets uh, and pallets <laughs> and shit that's <laughs> like no, that was like, dope that was like i was like holy fuck that's a hemp bucket just went by so like I, i'll see a good pallet on the side of the road and oh, he's gonna like, come over and, oh he's about to drop a bike right in front of everybody there you go boom uh but yeah no it's the the, the uh, and i was just thinking about him plastic and then i see the guy roll around it's crazy but yeah the, but hey, like things like that that we talked about are now happening and then even like we got to experience it ourselves just by making finished products and it was like okay look at that we're making stuff that's yeah. We got into Nordstrom's for a minute there, you know what I mean? So we were just like, oh, yeah. shit, we're in Nordstrom's now. Right. So we're, we're, we're there. We, we've succeeded, you know what I mean? But yeah. then it doesn't even make a dent into the reality of, like, of people recognizing because we dro they, they dropped us because we weren't part of their, like, legacy. They had to have, you had to have, like, at least eight years of, like, numbers with them to, like, for them to, because they realized that they had too many items and they were oh. trying to do that. so they said as long as you guys want to drop ship no problem oh. and I'm like hell no I'm not drop shipping wow. for them I mean that'd be the worst company to drop ship for because they have an re re yeah. insane return policy I was so just you'd be like say. okay so I send this to them and it's hemp and any imperfection they can send it back right like, no. you're, forget about it because every single customers. thing has a little tuft yeah. or some bullshit you're going to like oh, I got flaws <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, end users uh, don't understand natural fibers, and like uh, it's impossible this is to find a, a piece of beautiful like, characteristic of working with plants to have some little imperfection. You well, know? We were working on yeah, because we, we were selling rolls of hemp at the time too. We had the Chinese hemp, and so we were like, you know, we had the herringbone, and we had the, mm -hmm. the, the weaves, and, yeah. stuff. and it was some like, yeah, first. you know, and we were like. We fucked up there too. We, every single thing along the way, we fucked up, and it was always monetary, and we never realized it because we just kept rolling because we were like making enough money to not think about it. But it was like we'd buy like a hundred, like a hundred meter roll, mm -hmm. and we'd be selling it, 
and we'd be like, eh, give him a little weird. <laughs> it was like every single thing. And I was doing it like, like, yeah. like I'd run upstairs and pull this roll off the wall and like, uh, like try to like pull it out <laughs> and like counting it and be like, was that 15 or 16? Ah, fuck it, give him two. Ah, you know, like so they'd always be giving everybody an extra meter here and an extra meter there. And right. by the time like it came around, I'd be like, dude, we just lost like so much money on that. Yeah. That was because of waste of time. Ever, but it was, but people loved us because of course they had access to hemp. And we loved it because then they gave us back product that they made. Sometimes mm-hmm. it was crap. Sometimes it was good. Yeah. But it was like this whole like circular thing going. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the quality's gotten better, obviously, but still, it seems it's like it's changing it, again. It, Adam. it seems like people don't give a fuck anymore, which is not good. Cause it's changing. Everybody just wants cheaper and cheaper. When you're talking, you know, good uh, earthly products means it's either poor quality or it's not even what they thought it was you know so when we're looking at the market right now and there's all this hemp rayon hemp viscose now the cottonized hemp and it's like yeah it might have been a little cheaper than like the good stuff but it's still way more than you should be paying for rayon it's still way more than you should be paying for cotton you know it doesn't perform the same it's 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 also not delivering at all the same product in the sense of like it's okay this is not eco in any way shape or form because you know we're (laughs) melted let's melt everything down and then spin it out into some new material and you're like have no idea how nasty it is like viscose is 126 chemicals including formaldehyde and benzenes right you know exactly like you want to put that on your body you want to put that on your baby on your pets on you like this is just what do you you think about the whole forever chemical thing right now Oh, look at that. We got, oh, we got Jump Morris. right in. Jump in there, my friend. Thank you. Awesome. Maybe we'll move up to the mayor or to the governor after this. We'll, we're getting closer. The governor just left. So oh, we, were we wanted to talk the flag. <laughs> Make sure you got your mic on. You got his mic on? We go in there? There, we go. there it is. There it is. We wanted to talk. Fl- we well, we wanted to give give them get our little flag recognition. You know, Do I need to put the headphones on? Because I can't hear yes. anything. Yeah, Sorry. that makes it way better. <laughs> There we go. go. There we go. So welcome, Morris, the man behind the NoCo himself. How's it going? How's the show? Good, looks, Adam. Looks really good, actually, so far. I'm, I've been impressed. This yeah, is only the easy day. This is the mellow day, too. This is the mellow day, and I'm very happy to see where traffic is today. T- yesterday was great as far as the conference goes, and uh, tomorrow we'll have a lot more people in here. But, t- you know, this is a B2B day, and I'm really happy with the energy. It feels to me like pre-pandemic um, energy. Yeah, I know, right? You, you guys got to see how, well, com- combine the pandemic with the, the sort of, you know, the collapse of, cam- of hemp and then the, all the investment that went into it and then, like, the shrinkage of everything and everybody realizing, like, they're not going to be billionaires and billionaires or trillionaires or whatever the fuck they thought they were going to be. They're actually all going to sue each other or who knows, you know, there was like all that had to settle a lot of dust there. Yeah. And then you get like shows like this where it's like, well, I guess neither yeah. party will show up because they don't want to see that. You know what I mean? It's like, there's all that going on. I'm sure, you know, it's sure. a, cause everybody a lot went, of weeding out has happened. I think. Yeah. The and attrition the, definitely the took folks, place. You know, made it yep. and are here and, you know, welcoming all these next great round of people that, you know, we'll, sometimes you never know. We'll mm-hmm. see, like, if they are going to be here in another three, five years from now or not, you know, and it's, it's well, we, hard I to mean, say. You know, definitely, definitely taking bets over here on anybody if you want, if you want to throw anyone up, <laughs> we'll do it. But, but no, it's definitely the industry is, like, bouncing back, which is good. Everybody I talk to that I know, like, my guy's over here at 8,000 Kicks, he was like, dude, first two hours, I mean, I was like mazed already so that's that's killer you know what i mean and that's just b2b day so that means that there's expansion with inside you know what i mean it's not just the because i mean on any time when you're open to the public it can be like you really don't know who you're talking sometimes you're like Mm -hmm. wasting all your energy on somebody who just like should have been talking to that guy over there sure just sitting there like whereas today's like one of those at least you know everybody's either inside or know somebody who's inside so like to see that expansion is good because I mean that's that and we were just like we we're stoked when we saw the bucket roll by we we're like fuck that's a nice looking bucket man I was like that's good to see him being properly you know yeah for like, sure like that's an ex- that's that's what makes us excited right like a bucket makes us excited because we know that that took a lot of fucking 
to get there, yeah. like to get that mold made. Oh my God. Are these, you know? All these bikes are over here. I mean, how killer are these bikes, you guys? Yeah, so you guys get a shot of them. I mean, the good it's Harley part. Davidson, even. Oh. Right. Yeah, so the, there were a lot of press in the last month about the Livewire S2 Mahalan that is the EV brand of Harley. And it's like, I reached out to Thunder Mountain, they didn't have one. And I reached out to Avalanche Harley. And it's like, hey, do you have one of these? And stock and they like yeah it's like hey you should come to noco and went back and forth for a few days and that was like the last 10 by 20 booth and to throw them behind 8,000 kicks it's like yeah. here's just a great anchor for the back of the mm -hmm. the hall well, and then kids. you can go to the pavilion and you can see all the cool building stuff and the right. art and all that but it's like to have the the electric bike that's got you know hemp fenders on it and stuff it's no, awesome yeah it's the great governor liked it oh yeah of course <laughs> he got on the bike got some pictures taken yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's great. I mean, again, like it's that's the cool part about hemp is like it's like you just want to see it keep growing and get expand. And we already, you know, we when it when it proves what it was meant to be or you know used properly. Like same with our jackets. Like our jackets were an evolution from like when we tried to make this, we tried to make that, and it was like no, nah, missed, missed, missed. And then we did the jacket, and it was like oh shit, there's a way we could like somehow squeak this really heavy material in, even though. Like, you can't use it to do anything that's going to fall like something else, you know what I mean? So, like, the, like that was one of those uh, uses where you're like, okay, like, I made a beanbag out of it. It was awesome, but it was, like, too much material. You're like, well, that's a $200 beanbag, you know what right. I mean? So, yeah. like, you could still get a $400 jacket or a $300, mm -hmm. you know, at the time, maybe a $300 jacket. You know, it was like, yeah. okay, we could just get the money. Because that's the whole, the hardest part with hemp has always been the price. It's, like, always mm -hmm. the price. It doesn't matter what you do. Dude, it's thirty, you know, minimum of thirty percent more, more like double. You know what I mean? Like double, give or take. Sometimes, even, like, I've, if you do numbers, you can always obviously make it more realistic. But when you're like trying to do it, you're like, oh, I broke three machines trying to make it. <laughs> yeah. So there goes your, there goes whatever idea of making it cheaper is gone because you just have to upgrade all your shit because it broke everything. And that's the biggest wow. problem with hemp is it's too good and it breaks everything. Well, and <laughs> it depends the, you know, on what you're making. You know, like for you guys going into a jacket market, you know, where you're like, okay, we we can compete with a high-end Yeah, it was hard. It was hard because people don't mind forever. spending $500 on a plastic jacket. Right. But if you give them a hemp jacket, they're like, oh, it's kind of heavy. You're like, dude, now you're just complaining. Right. You're like, you're really like, you want us to make a jacket. We got to right. line the jacket, you know, right. you're going to combine the weights of those two. This guy made it out of a drop of plastic that he just hit into it. Like it's bloomed into like this fluffy thing, but there's no heat retention on those kind of jackets. Like people put on a jacket on they're like, dude, this thing actually keeps you warm. It's like, yeah, it's a real, like it's how, it's how they use like wood, like wood furniture compared to like Ikea furniture. You know what I mean? Like it's a different, it might look the same, but it doesn't have the same resonance or you know, ability to, especially when you start talking about stuff that keep you warm, it's like, it's pretty much like, hey, that'll keep you warm for sure. Whereas if you put on some of those fluffy things, if you're moving around a lot, you'll stay warm. But if yeah. you stop and stand there with a drink in your hand for five minutes, you're like, holy fuck, I'm freezing <laughs> from the top to bottom. And if you're wearing a hoodlum or an old, you know, or fresh hemp or whatever the jacket we're making, it's like, fuck, this is like, people don't want to take them off. Like, it's like June in Colorado. People are still wearing yeah. it. Like, I don't know, dude. It's got kind of cold at I night. I you know some of I mean? my like, jackets forever. Yeah. And that's the cool part, too, is like watching people wear 15-year-old things and come up. Yeah. You're like, all right, we're proving the point that hemp is worth, if you're 15 years on the same jacket compared to two or three max, you know what I mean, with your little other one, it's like, all right, it's looking, yeah. lo looking a little ratty. There's no way to fix it or it almost like there's, ours gets more of a patina, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. got the, the hemp patina going on. But, more science. Uh, so, yeah, any, any um, but, so you got two spots. This is actually way bigger than last time, too. It feels like, like you must have tripped, doubled your number of booths. Or? No, not really. No? I mean, just we, we had to use both buildings just because there's my boys over there my son max oh nice yeah and hey. son trey but uh, hey uh yeah we to use both these buildings um to do the stage and to bring in Give some equipment and yeah, yeah um it feels more like the ranch in loveland it's better mm -hmm. set up for sure it yeah. is a better it, but it's a co it's a cooler setup i think than the ranch and obviously being here tucked in the middle of this valley and the mountains are beautiful we got great weather well i'll say yeah. now you're at least going to noco when you're going to noco you're right not we're not going to, to, SoCo. Well, we're not going to SoCo. i know <laughs> it's that. like it didn't make any sense and you were like 
I mean, for me, I live close to the spring, so I was like, oh, this is easy. And but but it definitely, I felt this is uh, as I came in today. I was like, oh, this is way better. Like nicer. Like felt just felt like it made, made more sense, you know. Well, the energy and the people that are here seem like I mean, it's, it's mostly obviously most of the same people. But there, anybody you bring from the zone here compared to the zone there is going to be more on point for what you're. I got you got Boulder right there, so you got money, and then you got a lot of farming going on so those farming people mm-hmm. are like oh what do you Good check location. this out and that's actually who you really want to sort of you know yeah. Im- impress more or at least get the get them to get the information behind it like i have a group actually out of north carolina that i was sitting there talking to them and uh they 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 were building all these developments and they had all these houses being built like 60 homes all in this one area and they're you know and, and so i explained to them about hempcrete and they're just like they're everything just changed in their mind because like, there's like they're like a bunch of hippies and uh you know they they want to do everything the right way and i was explaining to them about the you know well, what are you guys building this out of you know like why don't you do a hemp, at least a couple hemp creep buildings you know what i mean and then they're like what's hemp creep like, oh jesus let's, <laughs> let's let me pull up some videos you know what i mean by the time i'd left they were like so sold on the idea i was like why don't you get some hemp growing here first because that's going to be the hardest part right you know right. why ship it in that right. makes it completely that null and voids the entire thing like oh i shipped it all from colorado it's like really like you can grow it you know you can grow it. it's like take your time grow it let it sit put it in a warehouse break it down maybe grow a second one so you have enough really have enough and then throw a couple houses out you know what i mean like have your own that lady's grown right there create that like storyline behind it everybody like, oh my god nothing yeah you know grow your like, own home like and then that's how you know, cool is that and it's I mean, like you know it get better. And, and we've already <laughs> figured it out so much like we can really narrow it down to like yeah you know two acres is about a 1400 square foot home mm-hmm. so let's say you grow 10 acres you can build a 35 square foot for you know, oh great you know people start calculating like that it gives them two years to kind of get their shit together grow it in you know grow it change the soil once they're clear cut it's all ready to go they're just like okay let's you know we still have to throw a foundation down and then it's time to build yeah and that's i mean and that's the coolest that's like the the, the real like wake up in the morning like chris conrad's book remember that the, Which uh, one? Lifeline? the lifeline yeah it's yeah, so like you wake up in the lifeline morning the and you got your hemp uh, robe Hell on yes. and then you get out of your hemp <laughs> linen sheets <laughs> yeah. and then you you know then you go down and you drink your hemp drink yep. and then you have your hands have your cough. hemp seed exactly. and your, your <laughs> granola <laughs> and your hemp milk and that was all like super dream put your like hemp t-shirt on and your hemp chonies <laughs> and oh, socks and that. the whole nine right and that was all super <laughs> dream like oh my god this could this could happen man it's like for and now real. it's like you just got to go down to like the store and buy it all it's all here like we have every access to everything and then just find the right guy to help build you a hempcrete house and you can start that whole process x and out what's going on this is a good way to close it out oh wow look at you this is a good way you like this i do this would be a good way to close it out and Uh get on the road and zoom in with him with eight, with eight thousand. Oh, there you go. I can do the old zoom around. Yeah, zoom around. Both of you zoom in. Wow. Oh, double zoom. Double like, zoom. There we go. See. Yeah. Sorry, I had to do a text. To it's no, all right. You're, you're, the, you're, you're the boss, bro. Like, what's this going is your on? Job. Where's the MC at? That's oh right. my God! You're putting out fires. I'm not, I'm not the MC right now. You're putting out fires. I did my job on stage already. Excellent. <laughs> you're the fireman. This is no. your job. <laughs> putting out fires. So it's all, it's um, all good. So eleven is a big year. That's a special number. It's actually funny because my kid's ten this year and he'll be eleven next year. So Aww, we're like right on the same. Oh and he's been at every one. Yeah. Like you've seen him since he's like rolling around yeah. on skateboards and stuff. So yeah. it's like kind of funny. He's like, oh, no co. Like for him, it's like. He's he's stoked. He's coming back home. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean. So so we're at that double generation thing. Yeah. You got your kids here. I got my kid here. There's plenty more, I'm sure. And oh, so yeah. that's like that's what's also cool is that for them, hemp's normal because they grew up around you, around us. You know, it's like hemp. Yeah, we were at the first hemp group. Like that's the funny thing with him is that he was born in 2012. So perfect year in Colorado for sure. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, the year they legalized weed. Your kid was born. Like yeah, yeah of course he was. Yeah. And then you know, and then we went. At, oh, at the first hemp field. Yeah, we were there. He, here he is. Here's a picture of him from. You know, we got the killer pictures from uh, from Kim. So we got like him in the hemp field. You know, what I mean, like here you are in the first hemp field. You know, so he's like got that true little hamster kid. You know, what I mean, so it's fun to see because they don't know how lucky they are because it's like yeah. instead of being like a little toxic like you know whatever kid right. like get to eat all this crap you know he's like yeah. he's like you know already way past all that like he knows you know he'll go to his friend's house and be like come home and be like dude they eat some crap over there like holy <laughs> shit you know what I mean? he's so happy to be home eat some yeah. proper food you know and that's that's where the whole hemp thing is is a combined food 
and then bringing it like cause that's the other thing like Richard Rose you know people like that so far ahead of their game and then now there's still nothing that's really like you know I mean we have uh, we, you know got uh, handful of good stuff yeah, we've got a few not, things not like you would think it would be to at this point after especially like we're going straight to bugs years. it's like well you know we forgot mm-hmm. about hemp we don't need to make bugs like we don't need to go that far right? like no let's just kidding. let's just grow some hemp <laughs> isn't that the same like kind of way yeah. same angle except you don't have to think about like Oh, dude, that's why they haven't eaten bugs for the last fucking 10,000 years. Because they figured out back then that it wasn't good. Like, it's like, why we don't eat human flesh? You know what I mean? Like, right. we figured it's like, so, right. <laughs> it's like, hey, some guy somewhere, went, like, you know, those guys over there that eat it all the time, they kind of get all weird. Like, they get mad cowy vibes. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, it's like, that's the same reason why that all started was because we fed them themselves. It's like, guys, there's certain things you just don't do. You know what I mean? And like, so bugs is like, kind of like, that's very Dutch too. Dutch are like all about that. Like when I was there, they had four or five huge plants, and that they and they put it on the label as so the, the scientific name of the bug. Oh. So you're like, what the so fuck? You don't know Chinese like do it too, don't they? Oh, they, yeah, yeah, they eat all, all kinds, kinds of, of yeah. But that's not the people we follow, and it's like they'll. You know, I mean, they're I've like, eaten oh, bugs they eat, in places. Oh, so they eat they eat the pangolin. We eat pangolin, then I guess you I, know what I mean. I've it's eaten like, some bugs. <laughs> like I've even had things, some you know. good bugs. Yeah, I had these giant ass ants in Colombia that were like super tasty. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I want to like eat bugs. It's a I'm a thousand <laughs> times more. I'd rather eat these amazing well, nutritious. Well, they're not products. also they're not also serving them as like the bug. Like oh, this <laughs> is the bug. It's like let's grind it up and oh, then no. put it into everything and that's right. like yeah. that's where you get like oh no, that's not good because that just becomes filler and we've already mm-hmm. looked at like American versus UK labels and you're like they have seven ingredients we have 47 ingredients like what is going on here so just adding more to like you know, when you place, it never says like what kind of oil it is. It says it could be this, this, some sort of this, vegetable oil, or right. a combination of all of these. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. that is the worst, and that's the actually the thing that's killing people most now is seed oil. Is that everyone's so focused on thinking that seed oil is good, where right. seed oil is bad, right. and hemp is like the only hemp is the only like at the top of the level. When you yeah. start looking down, it goes works its way down. It starts it's like at hemp, hemp and flax, hemp flax exactly, yeah. and primrose oil. Those right. are like the top three, right. and then everything down below that it starts getting worse, and then it starts to get unhealthy. Like first it's super healthy, and then you got avocado oil is good. And then you got virgin, you know, olive oils below that. That's so good. And then everything below that, you start going like, no, nah, not really for you. And then you get to the bottom and it's alcohol. And that's what most people thrive on. That's their most brought in, you know, fat that they bring in is alcohol. And that's why our friends all look like they do. <laughs> say, hey, what's going on there? You know? But like when I, when I quit drinking 20 pounds like that, it was all in my face. You know what I mean? It was like literally, wow. you know, not all, but most of it. And so it's uh, it's definitely like hemp, you know, that's, that's what we're here. Like, so I, but I put on the flyer, I literally said, you know, we are going to save the planet. It's just going to take us a little longer than we thought. It won't mm-hmm. be immediate. It'll just be when we get recognized as like no bugs, grow enough hemp. Here's a bunch of fucking hemp seeds. Whip that up into some shit. Richard, get out of fucking, get out of fucking retirement. Ooh, you know, stop complaining. Stop complaining. Here's a couple million bucks and a motorcycle from those guys there you now go. get the fuck out there and start making some hemp cheese because we need some fucking hemp yeah <laughs> where's the hemp cheese because you know that's <laughs> what, I mean we're missing out on because he was doing such good shit for back in the day in Amsterdam he'd come and I'd fill my whole fridge up with stuff yeah. and it was like I was like oh we're going to be so like you know we should be like light years ahead yeah, of everything like it should just be like oh be that's the most yeah. normal thing ever you know what I mean and then we'd have a reason to grow a couple hundred thousand more acres of for you know every, every <laughs> farmer out there would be like you mean Kellogg's is now making that. Out. You know, it's like they're right. making out of a bunch of crap right now. Right there, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. you know, glyphosate drenched bullshit. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like it's so bad. It's, I was talking about it earlier on the show. It's like you know, this shit's the worst stuff ever, and that's what that's the. Oh, well, and some of this like trans. That's like when I go to when I go to Europe, I'm like, see, the bread, it's real bread, it's bread. They're like, using the four DNA ingredients, five of ingredients. You know, that's it. It's like nothing. You yeah. come back here and you're like, you know. oh, oh no, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's but yet the, the all those are FDA approved ingredients and they're safe. But CBD and cannabinoids, they need a different pathway because they don't fit the safety model. But yet these thousands of other ingredients that are in all the products that and are on the shelves are they're all safe but yet they're not safe because Europe doesn't use them and a lot of countries don't use them and they're, it's, they're not, it's crazy and they're, and they're not even right. safe they're just like haven't been studied they haven't been studied properly enough to find out and there's no time frame because a lot of stuff's just 
byproducts of other products, you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, we have fucking 200 tons of this thing, and then it's like, well, there's nothing against it, so why not throw it in there? Because it's sort of like making designer drugs where you're like, you know, we'll just go one molecule off of that. And it's, like, it's like, oh, this is legal because this is just that, but that, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, they have no rules against that yet. So, But then they find out 10 years later that that byproduct is actually, you know, feeding cancer or some other bullshit. And that's the thing yeah. is like, you know, it's weird because we've been, people have been talking like this for forever and no one listens and then it becomes reality and it's like you get this weird like thing where everybody just like accepts it almost and you're like no this is unacceptable this is not how people you know there's no reason for this i went to greece and greece had like no issues like we have over here none of it and the food was just fucking normal and everybody was normal there was no weirdness going on everything we talked about they were like dude you guys are just out there like you know they were just like yeah. so level I mean, they have a lot of riots but that's because they they like to voice their opinion whereas right. we're just like the opposite we're like right. oh just give Everybody's us more TVs scared. and stuff yeah. and things <laughs> like stuff to look at and, yeah. you know what I mean like they were they were talking about the eclipse of the day they were saying it's probably the first time half those people even looked up you know what I mean because most <laughs> really? of them are like literally yeah. oh, everyone looks down and right. so all of a sudden the whole world's looking up and they're like this is amazing and you're like dude are you ever do do you ever look up? Do you ever pay attention to the realities around you, or are you just looking in your phone all the time? And I think that's the problem: is everybody looks. Yeah. Most people are looking down, and no one ever looks up. And here in Colorado, it's pretty awesome. I mean, where I live, it's, there's no lights. I come home on certain nights, and I'm like, "Fuck, Milky Way!" Just go. like mm-hmm. that, like totally. nothing. And you're like, "This is pretty totally. dope. Like this is awesome." Yeah. And those are the best nights. Yeah. And then my light turns on, night. and I'm all, "Fuck, I can't see it now." And I'm like, when I first pull up turn off the thing and look out it's like yeah. you know it's like <laughs> you, you don't get that everywhere right you know? no. here, here you're like all right this makes a huge difference all right so this is a perfect now this is a perfect moment because morris is getting nervous in the service he's I got to get rolling he's got yeah, so, yeah, he's, he's got so many things on going on here. vinny's nervous in the service i'm nervous in the service too. He's, yeah, i can feel going. the nerve let me get, I'm this, let me get like, a selfie I'm, with us we're, we're flowing we're, we're flowing and we have we have an hour and 30 and 15 minutes Adam, can we all squeeze? There we go. Kind of got the name of the back. Very nice. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Very nice. Uh, I'll very get nice. you one from here, too. Yeah, there we go. Um, awesome. Thank you, Morris. <laughs> thank all you, right, Summer. Ten more years. Yeah, yeah. At least. Ten more years, guys. At least. And then at that point, next, you might be tired. Decade. You're like, yeah. you guys, we'll be able to, you're, in 20, we'll oh, be able to watch kid. the Eclipse. Well, well, hopefully in 10 years, we've got different <laughs> like the, conversations the lunar? going on. That yeah, we've we got, got a full a lunar in 20 years. Hopefully we'll be at least 50% 20 or 10? Hopefully. 25 more years? No, we got to wait 25 more years for the lunar eclipse. Coming right through. So that would be like the 35th annual? It's the 40, what is it, 2046, 2045, something like that. 44. We get a full eclipse here. Oh, Oh, so that's another 21 years? Oh, wow. Okay. So you just got to keep. We can going. make it. Right, we yeah. can make it. Yeah, but you got the kids, so you're perfect. You, exactly. you, you don't. You just roll in. Yeah, and you're exactly. Like, Where's this eclipse thing, kid? There we go. <laughs> hey, nice. thanks, man. Thank you. Thank Glad you you're guys. out here. Yeah. No, Great to see, see you, Summer. Morris. All right. Tell your mom hi. I'm sure you don't yes. mind that we created our own little spot here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Morris will love us. He'll be like, this is even better than better than nothing. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Keep spreading the good Thank word. you guys. That's, that's what we do. And All don't right. forget, everybody, use uh, your brain, support him, go yeah. looking for the good stuff because it's fucking out there and you have no excuse yeah. to not. So we love you. Oh, look at you, <laughs> Fady McFade Fade. Oh my God, he's <laughs> fading over here. We're fading. We're fading. Fading, fading fast. Ah, I want to thank uh, everybody uh, here. Thank, obviously, we had, we had the big heavy hitters. Tate's going to have to take a take a second. Uh, he, he's too busy talking to the other. Oh, look at it. It's the double taters. Double taters. <laughs> we got ta- tater, tater. <laughs> double tater. Ooh, two taters. Two taters, one tot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two girls, one cup, but you're two taters. What? Uh, all right. Quickly jump in. Oh, See you later. Man. All right, get in here quick. Two taters, one tot. Like we're gonna final, you're going to final the show. You guys are finalizing it before Vinny has to go in five minutes. He's just on the cusp. Uh, yeah. No, it's all right. He's going to call in. We're going to be defined. We'll be fine. What's up, bro? How you Two doing? taters, one tot. Yeah. I can't believe it. All right, get in here. Get in here. Otherwise-
Otherwise, you get all fucking. You Am I an know, official you, guest you this time, or you won't know what to no. no, no, you're not. <laughs> okay. oh, no, you hey, are. You're be the, careful with the table. You're, you're <laughs> it's fucking hell is sensitive. <laughs> yeah, no, not with him. Just with just with, just with you. Let's smoke this bitch out. And get yeah, kicked oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's how we finish the show. We should do that. Get the that's alarm to go. Get kicked out. Get the smoke alarm to go. Where's the smoke? Is there one above us? Oh, yeah, know. nice. Oh. Fire thing will come down. Oh, yeah, be there's like, the sprayer heads too. Nice. All right, jump on the mic. Get on the mic. What up, bro? Got Keto Life Tate, and we got fucking Sunscape Tate. Not Tate. Matate. <laughs> Matate. 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 Ta, 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 ta. Oh, what's up with my fucking cords, motherfucker? You got them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. We got cords. We got light. Oh, did you we bring the cords. banners? Yes. Then where are they at? In the trunky thing? Which one? Which banners? The exotics ones? Yeah. Yeah, they're all in, they're in this booth over here. Oh. Why? What are you going to do with it? He was looking for them. Oh, shit. The whole time. <laughs> really? <laughs> No, they're in the booth over there. Bro. Yeah, we, we could have thrown them up. They could have been here the whole time. We fucked up. I've been meaning to hit you up, bro. I got a new podcast studio. Oh, oh shit. shit. I actually got multiple <laughs> sets. Uh-oh. So we got like a single person He's set. Gonna, you're going to pull a James Loud on set. me now? Are you pulling a James let's Loud fucking, on me? Let's fucking, let's collab, You're going to do a James Loud on me and blow me out of the water with <laughs> some like super sick. So, he's got the sick place. He's going, oh my God. Oh yeah, the sick place on 63rd and Federal yeah. in Denver, bro. No, James, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm always, I'm always scrapping. I'm, I'm like the scrappiest. I was saying the other day, I'm like, I think we're, we're, we're like the scrappiest podcast out there. We Fuck make, yeah. We make shit happen. We make shit happen on a, on a, on a shoestring. That's, that's how that. we do. We have, that's how we do. That's how we have to do. We have to roll it and make it work, right? Right, Vinny? Guaranteed. Scrappiest, scrappiest podcast out there. His? Ours. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I've seen worse. Oh, no. They're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're quality scrap. Yeah, we got quality it. Scrap. Quality scrap. Quality scrap. Quality scrap, we call it. It's okay. a new, new word. Quality <laughs> scrap. <laughs> King koala scrap right here. Koala scrap. Yeah, so... Um, you got a studio. Are you actually doing a show yet, or are you just kind of out? The, you started? Yeah. You doing an organic thing? I yeah. So we've been doing the Homestead 101 series. Just Do you know the Riverside? Do you know the Riverside guy? You ever seen him? Huh? Riverside Homestead? Uh, I think YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Riverside. And he, and he always does the same shot. Yeah. He's like, "Do you know what they're doing now at the supermarket? They're oh. putting in PFAS and everything." Bro, you're interesting. You're like, that would actually be something that you should come on, and <laughs> we're gonna talk about the state of food. Ooh, we we're just, not gonna I go. Just did. I just we're did. not gonna go red and blue. No. But we're gonna go with the who, what, when, where, why. No, the no, no red and blue. You can't do that. On right? with the food. No, no red. And blue. Why is it all smoky over there, by Vinny? I know, Vinny. What are you on fire, dude? Did you catch on fire? Well, it definitely is not <laughs> the dirt bikes. Those things are electric. Uh, oh yeah, you can't use those as excuses. My head blew up because I'm late. Vinny just farted oh. a fucking cloud Oh, yeah, we have, to, do, we have to keep this tight. We have to keep this tight. So, okay. So, you got, um, <laughs> you're doing homesteady stuff, which is dope. Yeah. You have a killer garden. So, you're setting it all up now? It's like all ready to rock Ooh. or it's like going? Oh, oh, it's been rocking and rolling. So, I got over 1,500 plants in my house right now. Fuck. I got 100 types of tomatoes, 100 types of peppers. Bro, I'm hook growing. a boy up. Yeah, it's, it's like mohawk crazy. over here, motherfucker. Give me some mohawks. I got like 20 <laughs> types of eggplant. I got hydroponic okra right now growing. Fucking Whoa. easy clone okra into the cocoa blocks on flood and drain. It's fucking hilarious. What if you could smoke them? You doing any towers? <laughs> you doing any towers? I am doing towers. They were here the whole time. You just didn't know. The banners are here. The banners were in the booth the whole time. I had brought them there the whole time. What have you been up to, doggy? Me? Um, just been keeping it rolling. You're out of here now? Or? No, I mean, no. I'm just it, It's too late now. Dave's too late. Dave. Hell. What? what? Dave's not here. Dave's not here. Dave doesn't know. Just look it up. Just look up Estes um, Schwaggle Schwaggle. So you're good to go. <laughs> I'm out. Hi, Estes oh, Schwaggle. Here comes Dave. He's I'm in. plugging right he's, now. A, he's like, Vinny can't wait to get out of here now. He's like, what? He's not here yet? He's coming. Ah, I'm out. So, no, we've been oh. just keeping it rolling. Um, I had to go to, I went to Europe and did the, did the Spanibus and. Uh, nice. Went to Greece and checked out that. I was just talking about the, how the food in Greece is so great because it's oh. just simple, boring, you know, nice, Dude. easy food, great ingredients. Here it's the opposite. It's all like, we got fucking mac and cheese mixed with fucking strawberry shakes over here. We're like, what is going on? You guys are, Seriously. everything's ridiculous. It's like a Sonic burger. Like the whole country's turned into a Sonic burger. Yep. Like, can we, can we put, Idiocracy. let's do like a pancake fucking wrap chicken with fucking 
French fries and dipped in chocolate. Bro. You're like, dude, dude, Jesus, what is bro. going on? Like, I oh, just, that jacket's on fire, bro, dude. I just took my fucking family to Mexico. We were at Tulum area. Yeah. Fucking all inclusive fucking vacation. Everyone doing mushrooms Eat. and stuff. No, I mean, I was down there I with my kids. I know. And my I'm just saying, you're you know. around you. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. But I was eating and drinking as much as I wanted. Yeah. And every day I'd wake up just less swollen, yeah. less puffy, feeling yeah. better. Just better. complete. I was like, wait, hang on. I'm eating and drinking as much as I want, and I feel better yeah. than in the United yeah. States. What the fuck is going there on? There was that drum and bass thing in the, at the uh, Tulum. Yeah. My friend went, and he said the cartel was shooting at them. Honestly, I'm, oh I'm feeling on the, like on the fun. top floor yeah. right Holy now. Holy shit. <laughs> Well, they're trying to listen to some dumb drum and bass. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to listen. Shooting. Why? Because they're too much bass? I guess so. <laughs> they're like, too much bass. Dave's <laughs> not here. Dave's not here. I love that area. There's Mayan runes. There's right? a lot of Americans, yep. though, moving in. I just in went to Chichen Itza. A lot of people fucking yeah. that, place. that place is getting kind of... It used to be just oh, yeah. this tiny little village, and now it's huge. It's like, it's crazy. Oh, it's Americanified, for yeah, sure. big time. Oh, yeah. Big time. So, um, all right. So, I've, I've been doing that. I've been... I got some new Sunscape lights I'm about to put in. Nice. I need to grow some big. I've got stuff. I haven't put any things in yet, but about last year I did a lot of lettuce and tomatoes and things indoors, and I did some daikon uh, radishes in my beds and stuff, and they were dope because it was making bacon out of that and shit. Oh yeah, this fire. Oh, it's bacon. so bomb. Daikon you, bacon is dope. Once you go, once you go homegrown on anything, you ain't going back. Yeah, it's so much. It's 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 so rewarding on so many levels. Plus, it's like you know, at the end of the day, you're like, dude, you got control, and there's no control anymore. So, you're fucked if you don't have like, like it's so easy for them to turn things off, and you're just like, wait, what happened to those? Limitless. They're gone. That's that's exactly why we leaned in. I don't I don't know if I even told you that we created the Backyard Farming Academy. I mean, no, we were talking about it with the kids. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, awesome. well, I've got the Backyard in. Farming channel. <laughs> Oh, I know. All right. You can zoom in. All right. Zoom Vinny, this part Vinny, in. Vinny wants to go. Uh, all right. So we should go. We're going to have Tate on the show soon, and Tate's going to have me on his podcast. Yeah. Very soon. That's dope to hear. Yeah. Mateo's going to do a podcast, right? Uh, no. Come on. <laughs> so everybody <laughs> says no. <laughs> you can do one. <laughs> Come on, do you can do one. Come I on. did a video for <laughs> Jen for YouTube. How to, and it how to was flood your good. reservoir by Mateo. <laughs> yeah. How to flood your fucking. Grow room. I, I, I did it last night. I did it last <laughs> what night. What a what? I did it last night. I was, yeah. trying, I was trying to do too many things at once, and I was like upstairs cooking, and I was like, turn on the tank. Like, I'm, like, I'm like, wait a minute. What was I'm in big fucking before? trouble, man. Like, oh, I'm shit. coming to you. I came down, and what happened was that it filled up, and then the hose flipped, flipped out, out, and now oh. it was on the ground oh. shooting up. And I'm lucky it went under the table, so it was hitting the bottom of the table instead of shooting at the lights. And oh, the my God. Where are we doing oh, the show my from? <laughs> my oh, new says that. Where is he at? My new spot has a floor no, drain, so I came the fuck does. up. <laughs> <laughs> no, up. real talk. Back in we the did day. Just tell him we did it. I'm not even answering. Let's get this packed up, guys. We'll be on live here in just a few. Yes. We're gonna, so if you're here now, that means you have uh, witnessed the fact that we did the pre-show, which is the pre-show is us hanging around at the show with our phones calling into our own show <laughs> to make the free show <laughs> so that Vinny could drive back with this show it's that this we just show. filmed because we just filmed the show. <laughs> so now we're back. Are the we going to, wait a minute. Show. Are we going to the future or back in time? Which is, the, we're going back think, in time. I think they're the same. Back in time. Back in time. We're going I back. So we're going back in time. If you could go back in time and tell yourself oh my anything, God. what would you tell yourself? Because we could make this happen. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> in about 10 minutes, we can make this happen. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, you know what? I think the realest one is in 20, not 2009 buy bitcoin oh, oh we're, we're talking like an hour from now oh, <laughs> like, don't burn the, <laughs> we're talking like don't burn the mac <laughs> <laughs> make sure the turn off the light. reservoir maybe. Yeah, turn off, <laughs> yeah. turn off. <laughs> we, we're talking we've got <laughs> buy bitcoin at yeah. three cents uh, or turn off the reservoir well, imagine, imagine if you left it on for, since 2009 dude. that'd be a you'd have a shitload you'd have a lake that'd be <laughs> Olympic size Lake, swimming Lake pool. Mateo <laughs> <laughs> there it is alright All right. so welcome back to the future or the past or wherever the fuck we are we'll be ending the show right about now in reality oh yeah I'm gonna come in back reality. to reality we're gonna come back to oh wait can we do a dream can we do a dream scene dream scene <laughs> <laughs> can we do one of these like we all go like <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. 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 dream <laughs> sequence <laughs> dream sequence come on come on dream sequence <laughs> 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 Here we go, yeah. and we're back, and we're back, guys. 
we're back. back. Oh, oh, we're back. Oh, no, no, we're, yep. oh, uh, no, we're oh, gone. Oh, we're gone. Oh, we're gone. Oh, All right, guys. See you later. Thanks. And Deuces. I'll be oh, back in five seconds in reality. Yeah. Bye. Warp. In what seconds? There's you. Oh, Did that's me. Oh, I got me. I'm on four. Oh, hey. It's hey. us. Hey, it's us. Look at us. <laughs> Look at us. I was going to play guitar. Um, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I'm going to do this dab, and then I'm going to leave. Okay. Because I got to go. Did you stop? No. We're still going, right? We're still streaming. All right. Let's do a dab. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we're doing a dab. I'm about 30 seconds away from a dab. the time of the show that you'll actually see us. With the sound and the framework going yeah, together, dude. except for earlier. Yeah. So how'd you guys like that video? That was a good little video, wasn't it there? Yeah. Shout out, yeah. Shout out to NoCo, NoCo. NoCo Expo. Hemp Expo. You know Morris? Yeah, I know Morris. Morris, Happy Scratch, put out our first three records when I was in the metal band Ransom. Oh, I know. <laughs> You're smoking reefers? Man, the Nuggets lost in a heartbreaker tonight. That sucked. Some of y'all just need to smoke some weed and see if it don't help the quality of your motherfucking life. You're not smoking weed. I don't know what the fuck you are doing with your life. If you're the police, where are your badges? Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Can't you smell it? <laughs> Hell yeah. We would like to thank everyone that's still in the chat. Anyone that watches the show or listens to the show, thanks. Have yeah, the faithful 44 that stuck through. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that is killer. <laughs> that was cool, man. Yeah, we were here. If you were barbecue, waiting for Patreon, doing dabs. you got your dollar five tonight. Yeah, that was a free Patreon preview, so check it out, www.patreon.com slash Adam Dunjo, and that's how you get all the extra shitty Jamie, chicken beer and vinyl hour, uh, any, if we miss stuff with the grow videos, Adam puts them up there and all that stuff, so. You might get a special weekly treat, we don't know. Yeah, that's right. There might be a weekly Adam coming in we don't know if the video will come in hell yeah you can't od on it that's right dave. yeah dave you got any dave. shout outs dave's not here no thanks for everybody in the chat gang for hanging in there shout out to all of our sponsors hell yeah come down to so high cafe check it out coming on fridays come and check out the show live do it do it so that check me. I guess mini me won't get any. Chocolate. Sweet. 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 Sweet.